Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? It has been a long, long journey to get to this point. This is the complete edition of the Thousand Days series. All 10 episodes crammed into one absolutely massive 7 hour video. I'll have the grand finale stream linked at the end which covers days 1000 through 1004 for you to watch as well. Appreciate all the support you guys have given me in the last 7 months or so since I've been making this series, and for any new viewers, I hope you enjoy this chaos filled mess of a series. Thank you all, and let's get started. Kicking things off on day one, when I spawn in, the first thing I did was check my injuries. Usually, I'll try to stay in the house for the first couple days until the majority of my injuries heal, before roaming out to start getting set up. Unfortunately, the house I spawned in had no food, so that wasn't an option for me. A big goal was to build my main base here at the fire station. Now, this would be difficult for anyone on day one, but given the injuries I was working with, and the lack of weapons, it was damn near impossible. I'd have a better chance saying no to Bill Cosby than I would securing this base right now. Quickly looted the area and then made my way to the only safe place I could think of, the farmhouse. Made it to the farmhouse early on day two and began clearing it out using the old scream into a window and hope they come out method. the house was cleared, I went through and dropped all my shit off and went to bed. Spent the rest of day two cleaning up around the farm and taking inventory and all my gear that I had scooped up. Unfortunately, the recording that held days 3 through 6 was corrupted when I was editing, and I wasn't able to recover any of it. From what I remember, nothing crazy happened, and you didn't really miss anything worth mentioning. I spent the majority of day 7 reading, and gathering planks to secure my base. Didn't want any zombies breaking in through the windows while I was sleeping and ending my run before it even got started. Day 8 was basically the same. I sat in front of the TV and read while listening to Life and Living to capitalize on as many levels as possible. Day 9 was spent foraging. I needed weapons and the easiest thing I could come by was spears, since there was seemingly an infinite amount to make. Also, on day 9, a nice friendly helicopter decided to fly by and say hello, so I did the only logical thing I could think of and sat in the middle of a fenced-in area waiting for the hordes. Luckily it was quiet, not a single zombie. I needed a little bit of everything. Food, water bottles, medical supplies, the whole nine yards. Really, whatever I could get my hands on would be beneficial. I also took the time to clear out a lot of zombies in the surrounding areas since I had the time and it would only help me in the long run. Day 11 was another looting run, this time to the houses above me. Still looking for the same things, but with a lot less of a panic to them. Had some food to last now, and was mainly looking for things of use like a sledgehammer and other weapons.
On day 12, I made my way up to the town north of me. There's a library I wanted to go to for obvious reasons, and a police station with guns and ammo, and a gas station. Hopefully with some gas cans that I could use for my generator and cars. Luck was on my side today, and I managed to find a van with the keys in the glove box, but the horde got to me before I could do anything with it. I tried to get into the police station, but the horde was following me, and it would be a death sentence to go in. I was able to get to the hardware store where I found a couple tactical axes which would come in handy later. And finally the gas station. So, PSA. If you're new to the game, for the love of god, don't follow my footsteps here. I tried way too hard to get a meaningless gas can here and almost died so many times, it really wasn't worth it. Eventually, I gave up and just went back to the police station and was able to get into the storage room to see what I could get my hands on. So after that whole fiasco, day 13 looks like a fucking breeze. I spent the entire day reading books. Um, and when I mean the entire day, I mean from the moment my character woke up until I think it's like 10 p.m., I read books. You know, really high quality content, really exactly what you guys are looking for. Just a book reading montage for all of you PZ lovers out here. All right, day 14. Um, another looting run, but with a mix because I ended up breaking like 30 something spears fighting a bunch of zombies. And uh, I'm going to let you guys watch that because, you know, peak content. But, uh, because you're making me suffer through making this fucking video, uh, everything's gonna be at two times speed, and I'm gonna add that guy that goes, nice, after every single cut, and it's gonna be cut really poorly, because fuck you. Nice. Day 15 was the exciting shit that you guys have all been waiting for. I spent the entire day foraging. I know, it's the most exciting thing in the game. Quick F in the chat for old foraging system. But yeah, I basically spent all of day 15 foraging to replace all of the spears that I broke on day 14. So, here you go. More wholesome content for you. Also, if you hadn't noticed by now, the ticker in the bottom that shows the days keeps changing because I'm an idiot and I kept changing it when I was editing this video. Um, and then I forgot about it for like three days in game. So to cover that up, I put a nice little dancing doge in there for you to enjoy. Um, it's going to drive you fucking nuts over the next couple days while it's down there. But don't worry, it'll go by a lot faster than you think. It On day 16, I drove up to the town above me to hit up the library, gas station and police station. That went about as well as you'd expect, and all I really managed to do was group up a massive horde that followed me anywhere I went. Did get some cool guns out of the police station though. I spent basically all of day 17 reading. Once I wrapped that up, I went out and worked in my garden a little more. I was really hoping to have more seeds by now so that I could better sustain myself, but hey, this is better than nothing. I spent most of day 18 clearing out the hordes around the farm. I had some plans for nearby areas and just didn't want to screw up the run just because I wanted to check my phone real quick. So yeah, I basically just roamed the nearby areas looking for hordes that I could clear out. It also helped me level my maintenance and spear skills as well as gather more watches for my electronic skill. This is basically the day that set up the rest of the series to be honest. I started it off by trying for like the third time to go to the goddamn bookstore. Once in, I was greeted by some friends and decided, for like the third time, to check out the gas station. That went about as well as you're thinking it might go in your head right now, and after spending way too much time trying to round up all the zombies to lead them away, I bitched out and drove home. 
And then it hit me. There's a gas station in Rosewood. I hopped out of my car with the intention of fueling up and getting out, completely forgetting that I just drove a damn UPS truck through a massive horde. After baiting them out of the area, I cleaned up the stragglers and finally got some gas. Only when I was driving back did it hit me. I remembered my original plans to turn the firehouse into the world's coolest base. The police station was unlooted. I wouldn't have to drive for hours just to find a town to loot. It was a perfect idea, and I finally had the gear to pull it off. Sitting on my plan from yesterday, I spent all of day 20 just reading and taking general inventory of my items, as well as reorganizing a lot of my crates. Spent a lot of day 21 just foraging and making spears. Rip to the old foraging system. But I wasn't foraging and crafting, I was working on my garden. Overall a really quiet day. Honestly, literally nothing happened today. I just wandered around the entire day. I killed maybe four zombies and spent the rest of the time just aimlessly walking around the woods like a damn lunatic. Day 23 was another looting run, just trying to clean out some more surrounding houses. It wasn't really needed, but I figured it had been a couple days since the last one and it never hurts to stock up on some extra gear. Day 24 consisted of more foraging. If you're noticing a trend here, fuck you, I like spears. Day 25, I finally got to harvest my crops, basically guaranteeing a full food supply until I was ready to move to my new place. Once that was taken care of, I was finally ready to start my official prep work. I was going to need a shit ton of planks if I wanted to turn the firehouse into a fully operational base, so I got to work. Of course, as soon as I started my prep work, I wake up to a massive thunderstorm. Not wanting to catch a cold, I tried to wait it out by reading, and that lasted a total of like 15 seconds. It's not like I got 974 more days to get my shit together or anything like that. Day 27 was more rain, and a shit ton of gardening. Words aren't really going to do it justice, so here's a mini montage of me planting random vegetables. You guys want to see why I love this game so much? Just imagine some dude sitting in the middle of a farmhouse absolutely demolishing like 20 fucking tomatoes. After reenacting some scenes from Thousand Pound Sisters, I went out for some more exploring. Unfortunately, I got distracted and had to go home before I did something stupid. You know, for as excited as I was about building a base in Rosewood, I kept finding myself distracted by exploration. On days 29 and 30, I found myself walking back to the town up the road to do some more stealth looting. Wasn't bringing a car this time, but I did have a game plan. I wanted to find a potential outpost location that I could build there. Towards the end of my time there, I wasn't having much luck finding a suitable outpost, so I took out my anger on a couple nearby zombies and went back to the farm. Also, if this video doesn't show you how OP dual hit is on weapons, I can't save you. It was finally time. My bags were packed. The car was loaded. The generator was picked up. I was ready for Rosewood. Now, obviously, I had way too much gear to bring over there in one trip, but the mission was simple. Step one, get to the firehouse. Step two, Secure and quickly fortify the base. Step 3. Make several trips back and forth from the farmhouse to get the rest of my gear. And I mean, there were a lot of trips. Step 4. Profit. Right? Well, it should have been, but this game hates me. After popping a tire, I did my best Paul Walker impression, which uh, definitely made things difficult. After walking back to the firehouse, I decided to take the rest of the day to clear out some zombies in the area and fortify the interior of the base a little more.
Day 33 started with a bang. After I cleared out the zombies that had broken in throughout the night, I began making my way back to my car to loot what I had left in it. This is a lot more difficult than it seemed since I had no fitness and hit exertion extremely easily. Now, to be fair, I really didn't need all the planks. I'd be fine with the trees surrounding the firehouse as long as my axes didn't all break first. All I really needed was the gas cans for the generator. After getting back, I spent the rest of the day clearing up more of the zombies that had wandered over, finding a key on one of their bodies and successfully starting the truck outside the base. Day 34 was much of the same. More zombies were practically walking into the base through the broken window and door. Once they were taken care of, I spent the majority of the day just cleaning up around the base. There were 20-ish dead bodies inside the base and the flies were starting to come, so I made a pile to dump them in right outside, slightly away where I was sleeping. Really felt like every time I got the base cleaned up a little, more zombies would show up. Seriously, this happens like three more times. Day 35 was my first run back to the farm with the truck, which somehow had more space in it than the van, because sure, why the hell not? Nothing crazy really happened on this day, just driving back and forth, which you guys probably don't want to see. I spent all of day 36 exploring Rosewood. It sounds dumb, but for as long as I've played PZ, I've typically only been in the main section of Rosewood and not the back areas. It also helped me thin out the zombies around my base for the project that I was going to be starting soon. Once I was back, I spent the remaining time just fortifying the interior a little more. My short term goal was to at least stop them from getting into the firehouse, which for some reason was way more difficult than I thought it'd be. Day 37 was another farmhouse run. Again, nothing too special or crazy here, just same old same old. I spent all of day 38 making some renovations to the firehouse. I wanted to clear out all the glass windows in the interior and replace them with walls. Eventually, I wanted to get rid of that entire office room to prevent ambushes into the hallway, but that's a different project for another time. I took a break by throwing a major house party for my unexpected friends. After they'd all passed out, it was back to work sealing up the side room and re-barricading the window before kicking my friends out. Overall, I had a big feeling of accomplishment, having practically completely fortified the interior of the firehouse given all that had happened over the last week or so. This was one of my last runs to the farmhouse, at least for this video. These farmhouse runs are generally really quiet since that's considered a generally safe base, and all I have to worry about is not popping another tire and spearing a light pole again. I spent day 40 organizing all of my shit that I brought with me, made a bunch of crates in different rooms and split them up with what items I thought would group together best. And guys. I had a fuck ton. I had one for farming, clothes, medical supplies, carpentry, one for guns, one for ammo. I went a little overboard with it, but I mean, I had the space, so why not, right? After getting bored with that, I tried heading over to the police station, and that went about as well as you'd expect it to go. We'll put that on the to-do list for later. On day 41, I woke up to some more unexpected friends at my front door, which meant that they'd already gotten through my defenses downstairs. After clearing out the area, I began my final farmhouse run. I had a bunch of guns and ammo stored up there that I was going to need for Rosewood. On my way back to the base, I stopped by and looted the two warehouses on the main road, which gave me a ton of shotgun shells and some more nails. If you're not catching on to the trend by this point, day 42 consisted of cleaning out all the bodies I'd let sit on my base the last few days, as well as general repairs on all the broken doors and windows. Day 43 saw me going back to the police station to finally loot its weapons room. After I could check that off, I decided I finally had enough gear to kick off my next objective, the battle for Rosewood. You see, my biggest problem here was that there were just too many zombies in my vicinity and could easily break into my base. I had plans to fortify the exterior, but there was no way I'd be able to do that with the amount of zombies roaming around. So I geared up, went to the main strip, and gathered a horde. Once I thought I'd gathered enough, I started blasting. Bah, bah. This went on until zombies stopped coming, which was good enough for me. It's hard to follow up with something nearly as exciting as shooting up an entire town, so I didn't even try. Day 44 was all repairs on the base before I could get to work on my other goals. Day 45 was the beginning of what was about to be the largest project I'd ever tried. 
I needed to fortify the exterior of the firehouse. Zombies were getting in way too easily, and that was putting me in danger literally every time I went to sleep. The plan was pretty simple. I was going to fence, crate, fence the perimeter that wasn't already fenced in. Mainly just the front of the firehouse. The only problem with that is that you need a shit ton of planks, which I didn't have, but I did have a bunch of axes and an endless supply of trees, which would have to do. I spent the next few days just cutting down trees, sawing logs, and bringing them back to the firehouse. On day 47, I started building out the exterior fencing of the far end of the base. I wrapped this up on day 48 and was ready to start gathering material for the crates. I spent days 49 through 52 working on adding the crates to the wall, and then spent day 53, 54, and 55 adding the interior fencing. I knew I was trending in the right direction when I tripped a house alarm on day 56 and no zombies came wandering over, which was a huge relief. I spent all of day 57 catching up on reading since my skills had progressed a shit ton over the last 20 days or so. On day 58, I found a car, and much like some of the days previously, I spent my time trying to lure hordes of zombies away from the gas station so that I could set up a mini outpost here. After a couple minutes, I realized it'd probably just be smarter to drop the generator off, go grab some guns, and clear out the surrounding area, so I did the main- Similar to how I did Main Street, there was only one problem. I couldn't shoot. So story time real quick. Around 5 days after the Main Street shootout, I added some more mods to the game. Nothing that I thought would be game breaking, just the ability to sit on some furniture and some car textures. Well, apparently this completely broke my character's ability to shoot firearms in the game. You'll see, even when I try to rack a shell, I get thousands of errors. Without a doubt, the most disappointing thing that could happen to this playthrough. Hey guys, Preds here again, post-editing for like the second or third time now. Um, looking back on this, when I'm, when I'm reading the transcript of everything, we do know now that it wasn't adding the mods that caused the issue, it was actually the release of build 41. While I was still on the I will back up my save branch, all of my mods had updated to work for build 41, which caused massive errors if you're not on that version especially when you're running a mod like Britta's Weapon Pack. So that's the explanation for it. This is fixed on day 99 when I update to build 41 official. On day 59, I decided to head out and explore the space under my new base. I'd covered a lot of land above me and to the left, but there was still a shit ton of exploring to do. I stumbled upon an outdoor movie theater, which was pretty cool, until the game decided to mock me by sending me zombies with guns strapped to their backs. This was a pretty cool area, and I thought about maybe setting up an outpost here in the future if I got bored of the firehouse. I spent all of day 60 reading and gardening. Nothing crazy, just a quiet day to take a small break from all the excitement. Day 61 was more exploring and looting. I'd cleared out a lot of the zombies in the main road, but I hadn't actually taken the time to go through and loot the buildings. Rosewood's such a small cute little town to make a base in, honestly. It's got so many cool little shops and buildings that just flat out get overlooked by the rest of the map. Seriously, if you guys haven't spent a lot of time in Rosewood outside of the police station, I highly encourage you to go through and check it out in one of your playthroughs. I spent the majority of day 62 just decorating the base a little bit more. When I wasn't doing that, I was watering my crops. I know you can set them up better so that diseases don't transfer, but I just like the look of them all neatly laid out by crop. On day 63, I went out for some more exploring, and figured I'd check out the courthouse. This was another building I'd never been in before, and it was super cool once I was inside. It's got two levels filled with offices, courtrooms, kitchens, really just a little bit of everything. Another good location for an armory or something potentially in the future. I spent day 64 harvesting all my crops, and giving you a sneak peek at all my skill levels. Another quiet day to focus on more boring things. Day 65 brought more exploring. I wanted to check out the church in Rosewood and see if it had anything cool hidden in it. 
despite having a bunch of rooms to explore, there wasn't anything super cool that I found. There were a couple funny moments of zombies throwing themselves through the window at me, but other than that, pretty uneventful. Day 66 brought a new project for me. Despite finding and looting two bookstores, I was still missing the cage trap recipes. Knowing I was going to need some source of meat for the winter, I remembered there's a small pond on the outskirts of Rosewood and about a 30 minute drive from the firehouse. I made my way over on a recon mission to scout out where I could build an outpost. Brought some tools with me to get started, but it would definitely need to be cleared out before I could start building. I decided to build right off the pond so that I could build a platform onto it for fishing. After a couple back and forth runs, I finally had the framing built for the cabin and could start working on boxing myself in. Eventually, it all came together and I finally had a roughly built outpost to start fishing from. I spent day 67 working on the fishing outpost a little more, adding more walls and building a platform that I could fish on that would hopefully keep the zombies away from the walls a little bit better. Day 68 was my first time putting the fishing outpost into action. I spent the majority of the day spear fishing off of the platform that I built. Obviously, fishing at level 1 sucks already. When you add only using a spear, you'd have better luck teaching Helen Keller to see properly than for me to catch anything. On day 69, nice, nice. I finally sacked up and disassembled all of my radios and watches that I collected. It was super satisfying to me and at the same time super depressing watching me get less than 2 levels out of it. spent the rest of the day gardening because for some reason that's the most satisfying thing in the world to me. Day 70 had me once again doing my best Paul Walker impression by slamming into a tree right next to a horde of zombies. If you're counting, first off fuck you, and second, that's three destroyed cars now. Can't tell, I fucking suck at driving in this game for no reason other than I'm just too impatient and want to channel my inner Ricky Bobby. I shot the brightness up so you guys don't have a damn aneurysm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Down to no cards once again, I made my way back to the fishing outpost because at this point, I'm committed to another day of catching nothing. Only thing worth noting on day 71 was that I built out an airlock for the fishing outpost. That would give me a little more safety when I was coming and going until I could build something more sustainable. Since I didn't have a car anymore, it was taking me almost two hours to reach the fishing outpost for my base, which made it not worth the effort considering it was still August and I had three months to figure out a solution. On day 72, I built a small platform on the second story to use as a safe room. Basically, if for some reason the base was overrun, I could escape to this room and climb out the window to get away. I could also use it as an outdoor area where I can read in safety without getting bored. Days 73 and 74 were both spent on a looting run. I did find another popsicle freezer to store for food which was super nice. I do want a couple more just to have another storage going forward and I think it'd be cool to turn the locker room into one giant freezer. On day 75, the zombie gods finally gave me a gift. Car number 4. Let's see how quickly I can fuck this thing up. Good thing I had more than enough gas at the base to fill the tank. I spent all of day 76 just chopping down trees and gathering planks for a future project. Day 77 was just more reading. Since I have the slow reader trait and we're getting up there in skill levels, we're getting to that point where these books take almost an entire day if not more to read. On day 78, I forgot to pause the game when I went to the store and came back to my guy just sitting here like 12 hours later, so yeah, moving on. On day 79, I finished up the safe room and built some more rain collectors. I spent all of day 80 doing some gardening and meal prepping. Gotta say, I'm really loving the ability to place items now. Really gives you the ability to decorate your base in a survival style that just looks so cool to me. Days 81 through 83 were spent just trying to move zombies away from the gas station. I tried to pull all the remaining zombies around the gas station and drive them out into the void. Fortunately, it didn't work at all and I just ended up rounding up a horde in front of the gas station. Went back on day 82 and pulled them out onto the highway before spinning around and finally getting to the gas station again.
The highlight of day 84 was decorating the kitchen. Again, I can't tell you how much I love this feature. Also, I didn't realize how much food I had until I placed a bunch of it all around the kitchen. Like, holy shit. Anyway. On day 85, I decided to build some fences around my gardens. I know it really doesn't add anything of value, but I like the look of it, so I'm going to do it. Days 86 and 87 were more or less the same. I spent a large chunk of the day just chopping down trees to gather planks to finish fencing in different crops. Really nothing crazy. Since we're nearing that 100 day mark, I really tried to just do some more small projects around the base to set myself up for the next 900 days. I spent all of days 88 and 89 reading, which was super boring, but also much needed. Oh, and I had a dance party because this mod is hilarious. Day 90 was a looting run day. There were a couple houses that I hadn't hit yet, and I figured now would be a good time to get off my ass for a day and, and look for cool shit. Spoiler alert, I only found food and books, which I don't think classifies as cool shit. I spent all of day 91 gardening. The only downside of having so many crops is that when there's a drought, you gotta water all of them, which takes way too long. Seriously, if anyone knows an irrigation mod, let me know. 92 was another day of reading. Nothing crazy, and another boring day, but one to check off the list. I spent the next few days just chopping some more wood. I have a pretty long term project that I want to get kicked off for the next episode that will require almost triple the amount of wood that I use to fortify my base. On day 96, I finally took the truck out to start picking up the hundreds of logs that I left out in the woods. On day 97, I got my first major harvest at the firehouse, which was super cool. With this harvest, it basically sets me up for the next 100 days, which is nice. I spent all of day 98 cutting all the logs that I had spent the last day transporting back to the base. On day 99, I had a revelation that is going to change the entire series. Again. So, day 99 was my first day on the full release of Build 41, which includes Louisville. Since it was a full update and I had to fully reload my save file, I figured I'd try something out for shits and giggles. And guys, it fucking worked. Somehow, the full release fixed the gun errors that I was running into. Out of joy, I let out my first desk pop. I did my first desk pop! And started moving my arsenal back into the lounge. After that, I figured it was only fair to turn off multi hit from melee weapons, so I installed a mod to take care of that live and on camera for you all. Well, it's here. We made it. Day 100. It's a bunch of shit I probably could have done differently, done better, made it more entertaining, but we're here and that's all that matters. We have a small farm, security, trucks built Ford tough, we had a stocked kitchen, weapons, and after 40 days, we finally had guns again. Off on the right foot, I figured I'd visit the army camp to my bottom right. Typically, when you go here, you find some pretty cool items, but for some reason, I didn't find a single weapon or anything worth leaving with. Bummer. I spent days 102 and 103 just clearing out the warehouses down the road for me. I spent all of my first day there just clearing out the zombies in the area, which was a nice pickup since I hadn't really had any real gunplay in like 60 days. After I cleared out the area, I just went through each building, grabbing anything useful that I could find. Nothing cool happened on day 104. I spent the majority of it just adding some extra storage to the firehouse. 
On day 105, I started cutting down trees and sawing them into planks in preparation for a project coming in like a week or so. Starting part two off right, I did my best Henry Ruggs impression and totaled my car. I used some of the materials from the previous day to work on securing the fishing outpost a little more, but other than that, nothing exciting happened. I spent basically the entirety of day 107 uh, taking inventory on my weapons and the types of ammo that I had to work with. Remember, it's been about 60 days since I've really gone through all of this. Now that I had guns again, I wanted to try something that usually takes a small team and several days to accomplish. On day 108, I geared up and drove out to the prison. After 250 bullets, I realized that guns that use the 22 LR rounds fucking blow, and I refused to use anything with that ammo type for the rest of the playthrough. Like, absolutely hot garbage. After that, I spent the next two days thinning out the horde just to get inside the prison. At one point, I thought I fucked up big time when I got grabbed by a zombie, but luckily I got away. On day 111, I finally got into the prison. I've never been inside here before, so as a change of pace, I decided to take a stealth approach and work on my short blades a little bit. I spent most of the day just exploring the prison and clearing out some of the rooms. This was a super cool place, and I definitely wanted to come back and explore a little more once I had the better skills. On the morning of day 112, while trying to kill a down zombie, I accidentally fat fingered my gun and scared the absolute shit out of myself. After that, I recovered. Finally located the armory, looted it, and had some really cool guns and ammo. Now, guys, we need to have a little talk. There's been some concern over how easy suppressors would make the playthrough. So, to make it clear, I won't be using a suppressor on any gun for the remainder of the series. I haven't used one yet, and I, this is the first time I found one. But, to make it clear, no suppressors, we're not going that route. Today was a big deal because I was starting the most intensive project that I'd ever tried on PZ. Not the most difficult, but definitely required the most resources. That's right, we're starting it off like this. Buckle up, we're building a highway. Days 114 through 125 were spent literally building the framing for one side of the walkway. You heard it right, just the framing. Now you might be thinking, Prudz, why not just build the highway and then frame it after? And to that I say, that's a good point. I really wish I would have thought of that before wasting 10 days on this shit. I'm sure some of you are dying to hear this for the third time in under 30 days. On day 116, Jesus took the fucking wheel and slammed me into a tree. I wrapped up the framing on one side on day 125. And on day 126, I immediately started working on the actual highway. The thing that sucked the most about this was that I had chose tables. Uh, because it looked pretty. Aww. I didn't think five planks per table sounded like a lot until I spent the next two weeks doing nothing but building f***ing tables. And you might be asking yourself, is any of this even worth it for a fishing hut? Absolutely fucking not. I finished building the tables on day 140. And on day 141, it was time for the first live test. It had worked when I was building it in segments, but now would be the first time doing the full highway. A complete failure. What could have caused this? Was it my fault? Was it a PZ glitch? Was I gonna have to strip to fucking survive? My life was spiraling out of control. Looks like Stan's dad's been hitting the bottle again. It couldn't be that simple, could it? Did you know that in Project Zomboid, when you place a path-blocking object in front of a window, On day 143, I hit up the army camp off the main highway to Dixie. The only big takeaway from this is that there were a ton of zombies in that camp that had birthday party hats on. And I just couldn't for the life of me figure out who the f*** has a birthday party at a goddamn military camp. 
It's been all a day 144 running some errands. I needed the final carpentry book to finish that skill off, so I decided to head over to the library downtown. Found the type of people who lay on the floor to read and did what everyone wishes they could do whenever they walk into a goddamn Barnes and Noble. And then I spent the rest of the day gardening. Only thing worth noting for day 145 was that I went back to the bookstore to look for the final farming book. It was literally the only book they didn't have. So that was cool. Day 146 was raining too much and it was too cold to really do anything without risking catching a cold. So I decided to just catch up on the skill books, even though I really wanted to avoid doing something like this for this part two. On day 147, I realized that my combat skills weren't all that great, so I remembered that coming in, there was a shit ton of zombies on the highway that would eventually work their way into Rosewood and up to my base, so I set out to get rid of them. Over the course of the next two days, I drove out to the end of Rosewood, equipped with a crowbar and a pistol, and set to work thinning out all the hordes in the area. <laughs> After sitting on the highway project for a couple days, I decided to go back to it to figure out what the solution could be. Now guys, I need to give a huge shout out to one of my Discord mods who goes by Super Soldier for helping me figure this whole predicament out. The last couple days of testing, we were able to find out what was causing the break as well as the solution to it. Basically, what it came down to was if there's two entry points on the highway, say one window at each end, completely nullifies the entire highway. So step one was to simply remove the windows. After testing again, we found that there seems to be a limit on how many objects you can climb over in one sitting. By adding breaks every 50 tables or so, you can actually use the full highway at full capacity as long as you hit E every time you guide drops so that you can climb through the next window. So thank you Super Soldier. If you're watching this and you're in my Discord, feel free to shoot him a message because he practically saved the entire build. On day 153, I finally built and placed rabbit traps out in the woods for another meat source. Being the Giga Chad that I am, I was about to enter the most intense workout regimen of my entire life, consisting of nothing but meat, rice, and potatoes for the entire winter months. I mean, guys, it is bulk season after all. I spent day 154 taking a field trip to the community center out in March Ridge. What I completely forgot about this place is how f***ing packed it is with zombies. I spent the majority of my time here just trying to outwit a bunch of zombies in my quest for epic gym bro status. Now, I'm not really sure what's crazier here, uh, the fact that I got out of the community center alive or the fact that I made it there and back without crashing my car a single time. Now, it doesn't mean there weren't some close calls along the way, but like guys, I really think I'm hitting my full character arc with this one. Spent all of day 155 just exploring Rosewood looking for a car to soup up. Found a couple potential hits, but I needed to grind my mechanic skill to unlock hot wiring. Not wasting any time, I just started uninstalling light bulbs from random cards that I passed. Days 156 and 157 were entirely spent working on leveling my mechanic skill. I used to hate the mechanic skill more than the new foraging system, but it's honestly grown on me in the time that I've spent on it throughout this series. After I burned through all my light bulbs, I just started to target my old wrecked cars to completely scrap them. Once I found an old wreck, I decided to decorate it to match the great city of Detroit. It's beautiful! On days 158 and 159, I did some more exploring and actually found two cars. 
or set some decent storage, and I could use it to haul gear to and from bases. The second car was the police cruiser that I actually hopped into back in part one, but I'd completely forgotten about until today. I brought them both back to the base and spent the rest of day 158 working on making the police cruiser as strong as possible. On day 160, I went over to the school in Rosewood to do some more exploring, which um, led to some pretty interesting discoveries. After dipping out from there, I went back to check my rabbit traps and discovered that I was f***ing Jesus. Oh my god. Oh my god, he on X Games mode. I spent all of day 161 cleaning up around the base and clearing out zombies in nearby areas. And on day 162, I dismantled a bunch of my electronics and then spent the rest of the day reading. We've officially hit the boring section of the video, guys, so hang in there. I'm sure it gets spicy at some point. Days 163, 164, and 165 were all spent reading. At this point, I'm working on carpentry mastery and farming mastery, and these books take about one and a half days to complete with the slow reader trait, which is super boring, but at least we could officially check those skills off. Once I wrapped all of that up on day 164, I spent the rest of that day just upgrading the police cruiser some more. You guys remember when I said that I was about to enter the most intense workout regimen of my entire life? That lasted about a day before I got sick on day 167. I probably should have seen this coming considering that it was winter and I was working out in shorts and a t-shirt, but gym bros got a gym bro. Luckily, the cold only lasted a day, which was super fortunate for me. Basically, my goal here was to level fitness, strength, and sprinting by one point each. Sounds easy, but it's practically impossible to do short term since they're meant to be passive skills that are leveled over the course of an entire playthrough, not slammed into like a 20 day sentence. Oh, I also wrapped up my gardening, hauling in over 500 potatoes and 1200 seeds in the final harvest leaving me with like 20 XP until I hit level 10, which was the biggest fuck you I've ever gotten in this game. Spent the next week on my gym grind. I was doing curls for the girls, meal prepping, and even drinking protein shakes. This is calm. On day 176, I finally leveled up my strength and turned my focus to jogging. I believe it's jogging or yogging. It might be a soft J. I also had some new friends try to join the DIY Planet Fitness and had to put a stop to it before they stole the rest of my pre-workout. Days 177 through 180 were spent sprinting literally everywhere. I looked like that kid who fucking Naruto runs to and from class in high school and you're like, what is he doing? But yeah, that was me. I had a routine of sprinting to the prison and back and then doing this loop through the neighborhood above me and that took up a decent chunk each day. And it was really going to be worth it in the end. And on day 180, I finally leveled up my sprinting on a morning run. Committing to finally getting washboard abs for the sick Instagram post I was about to take, I spent the next 10 days doing nothing but sit-ups. Hours and hours of sit-ups. Every day. For like 10 days. Kill me. spent days 191 and 192 gearing up for the long journey ahead. I know what you're thinking. Preds, do you really need two whole days to throw stuff at a car? It's a little more complicated than that. You'll see in a couple days, but there were a lot of decisions when it came to packing up the cars, and I constantly kept replacing stuff and then doubling back to re-add things that, as I found them. Uh, I really don't think I sped up time for like these two days except when I was eating or walking to different rooms for items. I legit probably spent close to one and a half hours just staring at my inventory and the car seats and trunks. Since we're getting close to day 200, I figured we could use some more action, so I grabbed some weapons that I had the most ammo for and went for a shooting spree.
actually turned out to be a great idea since I found a really nice car that had a ton more space than the police cruiser. Left the ship box behind, but it really wouldn't be needed it anymore. Following the events from the previous day, I spent all of day 194 working on fixing up the new car as best I could. I actually even went back to my OG car from part 1 to grab some spare parts, which I thought was kind of funny and, and definitely fitting. On day 195, I decided to do my first official test drive, but for some reason I couldn't get any traction. Thinking it was the weight for both vehicles, I actually started removing non-essential items such as planks, and it took me way too long to realize that the tire that kept falling off had no air in it. So once I figured that out, I just went through and fully inflated all the tires on, on both of the cars. Day 196 was my first successful test drive. I was able to take the caravan around the block and do some on-road and off-road testing to see how it would hold up over the journey. On day 197, I woke up to a broken front door. After living here for more than 150 days, the firehouse had officially been breached. This actually almost ended my run. At around 9am, a zombie snuck up on me and almost bit me. I jumped so hard, I literally threw my mouse across my desk. Good times, guys. Good times. I spent days 198 and 199 cleaning up around the firehouse. Now, we had built a beautiful base, and it really deserved to be left pristine until I could hopefully return to it at some point in the future. You know, winter in this game adds a very dreadful ambiance. And I think it really added to this almost like bittersweet moment of what could possibly be my last day at a place that I called my home for like 200 days. This was my first time securing a place like this, and it certainly was an experience I would never forget. Rosewood had taught me so many cool things about Project Zomboid in my time here, and I'm really going to miss it. But now it's it's on to bigger things, and I, I have just the place I need to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. I left you on sort of a cliffhanger last time, and I've been most excited for part 3 since I finished part 1 of the series. As you can see, it's a bit of a long one, so grab some popcorn, maybe a soda, hell man, throw on some Project Zomboid on another monitor, and let's get into it. Now, it wouldn't be a series entry if something didn't go horribly wrong right off the jump. Uh, when I initially recorded this, I noticed that my first two recording segments covering days 201 through 215 were completely inaccessible. When I went back and tried to watch them, I discovered both files had been corrupted. Um, pretty devastated by this because I honestly believe that days 201 through 216 have more action and drama in them than the entirety of part 2. Uh, so I'll do my best to catch you up on everything that happened, but I just don't think it's the same when you can't really see the chaos that unfolded. Days 201 and 202 were spent driving to my target destination. I had a really long way to go and I really wasn't moving fast at all. Um, there's a couple roadblocks with abandoned cars that I had to work through, which only made it more difficult to navigate and eventually I just decided to carve my own path by hopping out of the car and cutting down a bunch of trees to make the route around the wreckage. Wasn't super exciting stuff, but there were a couple moments when I was leading a horde off into the woods and then I get grabbed a couple times and really thought the run was going to end before I could even get to the good stuff, so luckily, I'm here. On day 203, I finally arrived at Louisville, a destination that I would call home for at least the remainder of this video. Now, I've never been to Louisville before in any playthrough, and I tried my best to avoid all of the content involving Louisville so that I could get the full experience here. So for the majority of this series, you're going to get to see my first experiences with the city. On day 204, while driving to my new potential base, my car was overrun and I had to abandon my caravan, leaving me to aimlessly wander through the streets of Louisville. I wasn't overly concerned about this though, I had something like 30 boxes of 5.56 rounds, 5 boxes of 12 gauge shells, and almost 50 boxes of 9x19 rounds. But it became apparent pretty quickly that I was in way over my head. 
I had this plan where I was going to stroll on in, hit the ground, and start winging off shots until the zombies just stopped coming to me. I mean, I knew Louisville was massive, but like, holy sh**. I was not prepared at all to take on the just the sheer amount of zombies that came to me. Now, this is where not having footage can be a bit of a hindrance here. So, let me let me give you perspective here. There are scenes where I was dipping into alleyways, running through buildings. At one point, I hit a dead end and ran through like 15 zombies before falling and almost getting piled on before narrowly escaping. Easily one of the most intense Project Zomboid experiences I've ever had in this game. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have the footage to show it. Eventually, I ended up dipping out and finding safety in an apartment complex bedroom where I could hear the zombies breaking their way through what sounded like every single door in the building. After waiting almost an entire in-game day in the apartment bedroom, I made my way back to my vehicle where I dispatched a few zombies that had hung around, and after recovering my vehicle, I was able to make my way over to the mall parking lot where I could finally get started on something that would make the prison experience seem like walking into the lobby of a Spiffo's restaurant. Spent the rest of the day just baiting zombies into the parking lot and clearing them out in waves. Again, a really cool action sequence that I'm kicking myself over not having footage for. At the end of the day, I still managed to find a storage room in the back of a shop, across the street from the mall, and barricaded the door with a chair before falling asleep. Days 206 through 209 were spent doing more of the same. I would wake up, eat, and go into the small parking lot or lobby where I'd spend the next 16 hours every day just clearing out the zombies. I got super lucky and found one with a katana lodged in its chest, which made the close quarter engagements much easier, but again, screenshots just don't do it justice. On day 209, it was obvious that I completely underestimated the amount of zombies I'd run into at the mall, as I was running dangerously low on ammo. Down to just a few boxes of 556, I was going to need another solution, but one that also didn't risk just burning down the entire mall with a poorly aimed Molotov. Day 210, needing a break from the mall, I found myself exploring some of the neighboring suburbs below me. Still not fully grasping the size of Louisville, I, I found myself completely exhausted and taking refuge in random garages until the morning. On day 211, back at the mall, I finally settled on a spot for my base and set out with a really sketchy plan on how to get it done. So I ran a poll a couple weeks ago and asked what you guys would like to see more of, and it sounds like you all love the base building aspects of this, so I wanted to try something new. Instead of fortifying a location, I wanted to create a base, using items that you can mainly find throughout the entire map. I didn't want another wooden fortress that I just spent 10-15 days just cutting down logs for. So I decided on the biggest resource that I had available to me, cars, and junk from the mall. On day 212, inside the mall, I found a store selling TVs. And being the dumbass that I am and not realizing that TVs aren't the ultimate zombie defense anymore, I spent the next two days just moving sets of four TVs at a time to build a perimeter for the exterior of my base. I don't want to ruin too much of what it would look like, or my plans for it, so I'll just say the next four days or so were spent either formulating ideas for the base, moving objects, mainly cars, into various positions to see what worked best, and then clearing out different wings of the mall. Finally, we get to day 217, where you guys can see a little bit of what's going on here. So on day 217, I began working on my idea for a new base. Step one was building the stairs, which would lead to the main portion of the base for me. On day 218, I got caught off guard while checking my phone and got to meet an excited reddit mod hanging out by the mall. After teaching him on a shower, I spent the rest of the day just building out the perimeter a little more. I used the same style as the base in Rosewood with the fence crate fence setup, but it, again I really didn't want to rely on just chopping down trees and having that same style. I really wanted to do something different and unique for this base. 219 was much the same as the previous day, more time building out the perimeter. One thing I failed to realize was that it's f***ing cold in January. After sleeping in my car, I woke up with a nasty cold that put me out of commission for a few days. Spent most of 219 and 220 hiding in my van, blasting the heat and trying to get rid of the cold as quickly as possible. On day 221, I decided it was time to clean up a little bit. I went around the vicinity and gathered up most of the corpses that I could find, and then had a book burning party to celebrate my endeavor so far. 
On day 222, I completed the crate portion of the wall and almost completely finished the perimeter, which was a really good feeling. Unfortunately, despite this accomplishment, EZ hates me and I found myself ending the day with another nasty cold. Now, I don't know much about how to get over colds other than to stay well fed and to sleep, so if anyone has any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below so that I can get over this because holy shit was this annoying to deal with. After that, I spent the next two days just trying to get over the cold, which consisted of more sitting in a car with sleeping pills and cereal, basically every college kid's dream. On day 225, I finished the base walls, and all that was left was to build the airlock so that I could get in and out relatively easily. Fortunately for me, I realized after the fact that I locked my van inside the fence and had to squeeze it through the small tunnel that I made. Looking back, I could have easily just disassembled the framing and moved it out so much easier, but I'm dumb. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. On day 227, I officially finished the perimeter and could turn my focus to the main base with complete safety. After that was wrapped up, I spent the rest of the day doing a quick scavenging run in the mall for some more food. Day 228 was another scavenging day. I wanted to do some more exploring now that I had some relative safety and most of the mall had been cleared out. Right off the jump, I found a military surplus store and looted it for basically everything it had. Guns, ammo, knives, clothes, you name it, I took it. And I know I had more important things to do, but I'm a sucker for guns, so I brought everything I could carry back to the limited storage that I had. I also found a barbecue store, which was pretty cool. Uh, I had a bunch of grills with charcoal and propane uh, grills that I could either disassemble or bring back to the base with me. Now, I already had a plan for these once I was a little more set up, but I was still a little bummed at the lack of visor selection for the dads out here struggling. Right next to this store, there's actually a small garden shop with seeds and tools and some rain collectors, which I would be using later on as well. Moving away from the last few episodes, and like I said earlier, I really wanted to try to build my base entirely out of supplies that I could find inside the mall or that you could really find in any building around the map. I'd used a lot of trees around me to build the framing, but that got pretty boring and I wanted to try something new and a little more refreshing. So I spent most of the day just disassembling a bunch of these items around the Spiffo restaurant to gather all these materials for the base. On day 230, I began building out the framing for what would become my new home. I have the creativity of a blind snail, so this was somewhat of a challenge for me. What seemed like a pretty simple thing to think up an idea for, took me way longer than I'd like to admit to figure out how to build a half decent design for how I wanted my base to look. Days 231 through 234 were spent specifically working on the framing for the base. I had an easy concept in mind consisting of a main room which would serve as the kitchen, a second room off of the kitchen that would serve as more of an open area for junk and add other rooms onto, a living room off of the kitchen, which was more of an aesthetic thing than anything else. It really doesn't serve a purpose. Outside of that, I put in a small bedroom off of that open area and a weapons room, which could obviously store weapons. No shit. On day 35, I woke up to a blizzard outside my van. Tried to leave the van, but got hit with a freezing wind chill and not wanting to risk my third cold in 15 days, chose to spend the rest of the day in the van waiting for the blizzard to pass. On day 236, I decided to put some work in on the roof of my home so that I could stop sleeping in my car every night. Pretty cool thing happened too, I hit level 10 in carpentry, which was my first max skill through this playthrough. Spent day 237 continuing work on the base. Only thing to note here is I hit critical damage from carrying way over my weight limit and almost killed Bend Over. Turns out that carrying 20 plus planks at a single time will literally kill you, so don't do that. Or do it, I couldn't care less. On day 238, I almost died again, for a different reason. Uh, this time, I tried to play Jesus and tried to levitate like I was in a fucking Harry Potter movie. But I'm not Jesus. Or Harry Potter. And so I fell through the floor and somehow managed to not break a single bone. Spent the rest of the day cowering in the van trying to heal back up. The only thing that happened on day 239 was that I ran out of nails. Other than that, it was more of the same. Having never been to Louisville before, I thought to myself, what would the best place be to find a bunch of carpentry items like nails, hammers, all of that junk? 
If you thought, well, what about the giant half-built building under the mall with all of the frames on the roof and the hundreds of crates littered on the ground throughout the entire building and all that stuff? Congratulations, dumbass. You're as stupid as me. Uh-oh, retard alert! No. Putting nails and all that next to the construction site makes way too much sense. After looting, trying to clear out the area, and taking a shot to the head, I was forced to retreat and try again another day. And that was on day 241, when I found myself back at the construction site, rearmed with more firepower. I figured, I can't have it, no one can. Not even the zombies. And I set to work committing mass deforestation while also clearing out the remaining zombies in the area. After discovering that I'd been bamboozled by the Indie Stone dev team, I headed back to the mall to disassemble more tables, chairs, and fences to gather the remaining materials that I'd need. Days 243 through 245 were entirely spent window shopping in the mall. My base was finally completed enough for me to move in, but like any other building, it needs to be furnished before I could spend a night there. Picked out some simple stuff, you know, bookshelves, a table, some chairs and appliances, stove, some countertops, and even a bed. It's not to say there weren't challenges along the way here though. Even though I spent several days just clearing out the mall, there were still plenty of hordes left roaming through the massive building or even in the back doors, kind of just waiting for me to walk through a hallway. Not willing to risk it anymore, I decided to dedicate an entire day to just clear out more of the zombies in the mall. I think it really speaks volumes to the amount of zombies here, as I've spent almost 50 days now at the mall, and I'm still finding myself easily overrun by the hordes that keep popping up. This building is a work of art by the Indie Stone team, and even though it's got its faults, they deserve all the props for creating this. After thinning out the remaining zombies, I was finally able to sleep in my base for the first time. This is a pretty big milestone for me since it was the first time since coming to Louisville that I got to experience relative safety and sleep in a bed. Day 247 brought more window shopping. I really liked how my base was coming together, but I felt like it needed a little bit more. I added a sink and a china cabinet to my kitchen. Over the next three days, I slowly but surely moved all of the shit out of my cars and into the base. We're talking something like a weight of 400 plus between three vehicles, not including any of the stuff that I'd found in the mall and wanted to keep. It became pretty obvious that I was going to need a much bigger space for storage if I wanted to keep a bunch of this stuff. Day 251 was the last day I dedicated to furnishing my base. After I'd wrapped that up, I went ahead and added a small garden section onto the rooftop. Alright, now we get into the good shit. The military camp. Now this was a two day process that saw me clearing out as many zombies in the surrounding area as I could. Once I was able to thin out the horde enough, I went through tent by tent and cleared the entire area, looting every object I came into contact with. And when I say tent by tent, I mean I literally went through each and every individual tent or trailer or any place that housed any item with potential to loot. Some of the cool finds included things like an M249 LMG, almost 30 5.56 mags, two M16s, something like 120 boxes of 5.56 ammo, and a bunch of military clothes including tactical vests. Overall, an awesome haul and well worth this whole two day endeavor. On day 254, I began the drive back to my base and spent the remainder of the day just bringing gear up to storage. 
On day 255, I woke up to a blizzard and decided that I would spend this time prepping for a couple big events coming. Nothing really to note here, I just went around and cleaned up the room a little bit as well as lo loaded all my magazines and picked out which guns I'd be using. Alright, a quick note here. These next few days are going to feature several clips that I'll let play out for the most part so that you can see the magnitude of what took place. Due to popular request, I've added some background music for you to enjoy while you watch the show. Day 256 kicked off my master plan, Operation Liberate Louisville. Over the next five days, I chose specific sectors near me to clear out in order to drastically reduce the amount of zombies in the area. It had hundreds of boxes of ammo, a ton of guns, and the will of a pissed off redneck. At this point, words aren't going to do it justice, so I'll just let some clips play sped up so that you can see the amount of zombies I burnt through.
After spending the last five days just violating the Geneva Convention, I figured it was time to relax a little bit. I spent most of 261 just organizing my house a little bit more. Once I finished up with that, I went ahead and planted a small potato garden. On day 262, I did another looting run in the mall to start gathering some items that I was going to need moving forward. Things like metal sheets, tools, all the fun things. Once I got back, I was finally ready to begin work on my storage room. Base was getting too cramped and I had too much junk that needed the proper place to get crammed into. I spent days 263 and 264 just gathering planks from the surrounding area and building out the storage room. I wanted it to be big enough to fit multiple shelves, but small enough to still look like a normal room in the base. Basically, I didn't want this room to be as big as the rest of the base combined, which it really had the potential to be. I spent the next five days going into the mall and gathering shelving for the storage room. I would basically go into the back rooms of stores, take apart the metal shelving units, and then carry them all the way back to the base. When I wasn't doing that, I went back to the military store and grabbed a few gun racks so that I could finally store all the weapons and ammo properly. Side note here, um, even with all the gun racks, it still wasn't enough to store all of the ammo. After I grabbed as much shelving as I could make fit, I spent the remaining time just organizing it into neat rows. On day 270, I had an epiphany. Hey. What's an epiphany? How cool would it be to go through and max out all my skills? Now, obviously, it'd be a difficult task and very time consuming to accomplish, considering I had like 26 skills to work through. I'd only maxed one of them after almost 300 days. It was definitely something that I could do if I planned it out right. Now, a lot of these skills would just level in time, like fitness, strength, sneaking, all of that stuff. The only ones I'd really need to work on were the crafting skills like electronics and metalworking. Feeling inspired by the new goal, I spent the rest of the day beating the living shit out of the remaining zombies inside the mall. On day 271, I figured I should probably go find a popsicle freezer for my crops, similar to how I used them in Rosewood. I spent a pretty large portion of the days just driving around Louisville looking for gas stations so that I could steal their freezers. But after like 8 hours, I'd only found one and so I decided to take in some of the views by the water before heading back. Now I hadn't put a lot of effort into foraging since the official release of Build 41, but decided to take a shot at it since the area was relatively clear, and I found something out. Apparently the game hates foraging as much as I do because uh, you can't fucking use it in this vicinity. Not sure how I can walk through a forest and not populate a single item, but alrighty then. Giving up on foraging, I decided to do something that I enjoy a lot in Project Zomboid and greatly expanded the size of the rooftop garden. On day 273, in homage to Hank Hill, <laughs> I stole all of the propane tanks from that shop I had found way back at the beginning. After checking out the surrounding area, I found a shelving unit that I had initially taken apart but had forgotten to bring back to the base, so I took that back and added it to the storage room as well. After hoarding all of the propane in Louisville, I decided to get to work. All of those chairs in the cafeteria right next to my base could be disassembled for metalworking XP, so I took advantage of that until I hit level 2, in which case I went back to the base and pounded out the second metalworking book. By this point, I didn't have the books that I had in Rosewood, as I only brought the next book needed for each skill in order to save some space for more items, so I headed over to the bookstore to retrieve the entire metalworking series as well as some of the other books that I need in the future. Knowledge. After retrieving those books, I spent the rest of the day just disassembling random stuff around Spiffos to hit metalworking level 3. On day 276, I realized that, while I'd been in Louisville, I hadn't really explored any of the POIs in the area. Determined to change that, I hit up one of the churches in the area, as well as the roller rink. Oh, I also Dale Earnhardt in my car. Watch out, watch out, watch out! You know, it really wouldn't be a series entry if I didn't wreck at least one vehicle, right? While exploring on day 277, I found the distillery and decided to check it out. <laughs> 
After reaching the rooftop, I took some time to reflect on life and watch the waves crash into the shoreline. Day 278, dance party. So, in between days 278 and 279, I watched Dawn of the Dead. It's a great movie. Go check it out. Seriously, one of my favorites. You remember the scene where they're on the rooftop and the dude is just popping heads off? Yeah, I wanted to do that. So I went back to the distillery, set up camp on the rooftop, and after doing a quick looting run of the surrounding area, brought a chair back up and got to work. For like a day. You see, I'm kind of retarded. I completely forgot that zombies can just break down doors. So while I was doing my best impression of that dude on the rooftop, I completely neglected the zombies that were grouping up inside the distillery. Only after several zombies made it to the rooftop did I realize the situation. I worked my way back down to the lower levels trying to repel the horde, but there was a problem. A bolt action rifle can only put in so much work. I switched to the Magnum Rick Grimes style, but ran out of bullets relatively quickly. You see, I only brought the Magnum along to clear out the occasional zombie, but I wasn't prepared to clear out an overrun building. Coming to terms with the severity of the situation, I decided that this building wasn't worth dying for, and I escaped back to my car. Almost outdoing myself, I came very close to flipping the truck when I took a turn way too sharply. On day 281, I figured it was time to repair my clothing. I spent most of the morning tailoring and patching all of the holes I had acquired over the last month or so, and after that, I cleared out some zombies that had found their way over to the base. Feeling unsatisfied with Operation Liberate Louisville, I decided to throw some destruction into the mix. Walking out to the void, I was able to build up a rather large horde. Once I gathered enough, I jogged ahead, lit a Molotov, and let it fly. Again, me talking about it won't do it justice, so here's some footage of the event.
after spending the majority of the day creating mass destruction, I realized that the longer I was out here, the more dangerous it became. Multiple buildings were up in flames, zombies were everywhere, and I was exhausted and could barely run. Luckily, I was able to evade a huge horde of zombies and make my way back to the base. When I hit the mall parking lot, I had a brief moment of appreciation for the work that I was able to accomplish in the area. Sure, there were some small groupings nearby, and I doubt the mall would ever be 100% cleared, but I think it's worth appreciating the fact that this is one of, if not the biggest building in the game, and it's practically a ghost town now. On day 283, I took a car out to inspect the damage from the previous day. Or at least that's what I thought I was going to do. Apparently the zombies took some lessons from the goddamn Vietnamese because they came out of the trees. Oh, and a bunch of them were still on fire, which was cool. So I did what any sane person would do. I ran to the church and begged for forgiveness. Except that didn't work and I lit the church on fire. Alright, maybe I went a little too crazy with the fire this time. Feels like I'm playing a game of RimWorld with a pyromaniac colonist right now. Giving it a day to burn itself out, I went through and fully organized my weapons room. Completely loaded all the mags to free up some more space, and then it happened. Somehow, an uninvited guest had broken into my house. Cleared them out and assessed the damage, and the only thing I could think of that happened was a few stragglers must have seen or heard my car come back and followed me, breaking down both exterior doors and then following the noise up to the base before breaking a wall. Luckily it was just a few of them and I was able to pass the doors and the wall using some leftover planks from Spiffos. Spent the next day cleaning up the zombies and then dumping them outside the base. After that I went up to the rooftop and harvested some of my potatoes, which brought me to level 10 gardening. Two down, 25 more to go. <laughs> and I bet you thought I was going to go a whole episode without gardening. On day 286, I went back to the mall to hoard more items for my skills and ended up spending the entire day just disassembling computers and TVs at the electronics store. I'm sure the electrical skill was super cool when it first came out and it's probably pretty fun in PZ multiplayer where there's no discord allowed and stuff like that but there's really no use for it for me once I unlocked the ability to hotwire cars. It's also super cool to me that I've spent almost an entire episode living here and I'm still finding places in the mall that aren't looted yet. I spent all of day 287 disassembling the electronic junk at my base that I'd been saving all episode. Then I realized I'm an idiot and left all of those parts back at the mall that I could have used to craft makeshift radios. Nothing really happened on day 288, I just spent all day reading the next electronic skilling book. Now. If you were paying attention earlier in the video, there may be a thought on the back of your head. Preds, what about all of those cabbages that were ready for harvest and you were waiting to get seeds for? Well, I completely fucking forgot about them. You see, I was too distracted playing with radios like a nerd. NERD! I spent the rest of the day disassembling all of those makeshift radios. Once I finished that up, I went for a jog around the surrounding area. You know, there's some really nice trails and I figured if you can't forage, you might as well get some progress into fitness and sprinting, right? On day 290, I did another looting run through the mall and gathered some more metal sheets and nails and all that fun stuff that I need for scaling. 
I also did some more exploring and actually found the helipad. Um, had I known how to get here 90 days ago, I probably would have set my base up here, which would have been a lot cooler, but maybe next time. I woke up on day 291 to a thunderstorm and a massive wind chill, so still recovering from my PTSD towards colds earlier in the video, I decided to spend the day in the mall working on my stealth and short blade game. Oh, and I started collecting paint. I uh, didn't have a use for it yet, or even a paintbrush, but I figured it'd become of use someday, so it's in the base now. On day 292, I channeled my inner Chris Kyle and got to work clearing out a small horde that I gathered on the back end of the mall. Once they got too close, I had a sudden flashback to the distillery and ran down to finish the in a spectacle that even John Wick would be proud of. Spent all of day 293 just focusing on metalworking some more by disassembling a bunch of chairs and kitchen appliances nearby. On day 294, I read through Metalworking Volume 3 and spent the rest of the remaining time looting all of the sticks in the area so that I could finally craft some spears. This was a weird day. I spent a lot of time in the crafting menu learning how to make bows and arrows. I had some parts to make a bow and then some more parts that I could make for arrows, but I think there's a quote somewhere that's like, anything worth doing is worth overdoing or some dumb shit like that, so... So on day 296, I went back into the mall to do a huge looting run to grab any and every material that could be used to craft arrows with. I don't know why, but it was super fascinating to me to just hang out and make arrows. I spent the rest of the day crafting over 100 of them to mess around with. After like two weeks had passed, I finally felt confident enough to go back and assess the damages from the Molotov party I threw a while back. It was really cool to go back through some of the burnt out buildings and see the results, and I also got my first look at the archery skill, which, if I could pound a couple levels into, had the potential to be very deadly since an arrow to the head is an immediate one shot. I spent the bulk of day 298 working on my electronic skill some more. When I finished up that, I decided to knock out some cooking to prep for the coming days. Day 299 was my final looting run through the mall. I wanted to take in the beauty of this place one more time before moving on to the other points of the city. It had been a really fun 99 days, but I feel like you guys are probably sick of seeing the mall at this point, and to be honest, like, so was I. Well, here we are again. It's the end of another episode. I figured now would probably be a pretty good time to give you all a complete walkthrough of my base, so let's get into it. I had two usable cards at this point. The red one is actually almost completely destroyed and, and unusable now. Um, but here's the, basically the perimeter, the, out, the exterior, the walls surrounding the area. That crate you see right down in the corner over there is all of my mechanical skills tools, so uh, things like an air pump, wrenches, lights, anything I could use to work on my mechanics. I have one generator right here and I actually have another in one of the cars to use as a spare. And we go in and this is my kitchen. As you can see, I finally stocked it. The china cabinet is used for baseball bats. The bookshelf used for books, obviously. In the ice freezer, we have potatoes as normal and pots of soup that I had meal prepped the day prior. Once we get over to the cabinets, I'll give you a quick showing of all my food. Uh, shout out to my stream, the people who watch my streams with the 360 cigarettes. But here are just the shelving units that I have acquired, all of the food that I've been able to acquire over my past 100 days here after moving into the mall. Um, not Nothing too crazy. Aside from the, I think we have something like 60 plus bottles of bourbon, which you'll see on the counters and in the shelving units themselves. I keep pots of water in the stove so that I can refill all of my water bottles some more food here if we go through you can see all of the water bottles in the bottom right that i have listed out i have over 50 water bottles as well 
here is the lounge or the living room as i call it with the tv a computer a nice statue um again nothing really of use here i used to just sit here and read the books as you've obviously seen through the video but moving on this is that open second room i was always referring to and in this section right here in the middle i keep all my medical supplies that chest below is just an extra storage for when i inevitably run out of space here but on the ground i have two speakers and two molotovs next to a spiffo sign Moving on, we get to our weapons room. Now, as I've said before, we don't have enough space to hold everything. So here's a lot of just the extra junk in that storage locker. But over here, I have it very organized. So right here, you're gonna see all of my guns, all of my main guns, I should say. These are weapons that I use on a daily basis or that I have planned for special events. These first two lockers are strictly guns or tools used to repair them or attachments I've taken off of those guns since acquiring them. Section number three, is all ammo as you can see there's boxes and then there's four canisters of ammo in there all of which have about 12 to 20 boxes in them and here i have a high explosive rocket that i'll use inevitably at some point as well as just a bunch more ammo rounds as you can see i have 28 boxes of 308 rounds that i'll use hopefully at some point but you know there we go just a lot more ammo this last storage locker is meant just for the magazines now they're all fully loaded and i can show you here as we go through they're all loaded and ready for use at any point in time. I like to keep them that way just in case I'm in a hurry and I can just grab a gun, the mags that match, and we're good to go. Going onto the floor, I just want to show you quick. There's a lot more ammo in here to be had. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many boxes I have total, but I'm willing to bet it's over 200 rounds or 200 boxes of ammo, which is, I don't know, excessive, I feel like. Here's my bedroom. Super small, obviously I only use it to sleep. I keep my Molotovs in here that I plan to use as well as my M16. And into the storage room, starting off with this cabinet, I have all my tailoring equipment here. I have each storage piece for the most part, except for right here, sorted out by skill. And here I have all my arrows as well as tools used to make them and leftover gear for metalworking that I'd found. These next two shelves are melee weapons as well as stuff for fishing or just general use items like knives that I use to make spears. After that, we have two full shelves dedicated to the electrical skill. You can see uh, we also have a, that leftover shelf as part electronics and then a little bit more metalworking. And then in the back, almost every single shelving unit is put aside for metalworking. Propane tanks take up a huge amount of space, obviously. And so that was a difficulty to work around, but this is all just stuff I've been hoarding over the last hundred days. Um, this last section of here is all crafting material. So garbage bags, nails, screws, sheets, twine, anything like that, that needed a place to go if I didn't really have a place, just kind of all gets crammed here. These last two crates in the corner are all of my clothes and then leftover metalworking stuff that I just, again, ran out of space for. But you can get a quick glimpse here, pause if you want to, to see all of the gear, all of the tactical vests, all of the clothing that I've acquired. Um, but yeah, that's really all that was in my storage unit. Going outside here, we have the garden. As you can see, there's more potatoes already blooming. Um, we'll go take a check on those and, you know, hey, they're at what, four of seven. So we're we're cruising along, but, you know, for the future. And then this chest out here obviously is just gardening tools that I'll be using in the future. And finally, we'll go up to the rooftop where I can show you just the single object that I have up there right now. And that is one of the water or rain collectors from that gardening shop in the beginning of the video. So I actually found that and plumbed it into the sink below. So I have running water down there to use at all times. Um, if you didn't know, that plumbing section actually cleans the water so it's not tainted and you can use it at any point. Starting off on day 301, I wanted to spread out from the mall a little bit, so I found this mechanic shop on the other side of the city and decided to turn that into a makeshift forward operating base. I spent most of the day clearing out the immediate area so that I could set up shop. I also did some quick searching and noticed a car in near perfect condition which was pretty cool. Because I brought almost no gear with me, I spent the rest of the day just loading up the car with everything I need to fortify the forward operating base and get some work done on the mechanic skill there. Preface, you're going to hear me mention forward operating base a bunch of times in this video, so to save myself some hassle, I'm just going to refer to it as the FOB from this point forward. 
Starting off part four in perfect fashion, my car stalled while on the way to the mechanic shop and I was forced to ditch it in the middle of the street. This is almost exactly what happened in the beginning of part three when I got to Louisville, so I thought that was pretty funny to start off both episodes in a similar fashion. I took the opportunity to work on my baseball skills and got to work burning through the hordes that had started to gather near the cars. I'll take a second to go through the map notes now because I can see how it looks a little jumbled and confusing. So safe means generally cleared of zombie groupings. There's still individual zombies potentially in the area, but no real threats are in these zones. I marked the horde zone with question marks around the area that I'd lost my cars in since I knew there was at least one large horde and one smaller horde in the area, but didn't have the full scope of how many pockets were forming or where they would be moving to day to day, so I figured it was just easier for myself to plan this out this way. This was going to be a great opportunity to hit some dingers Hepatitis, see you later. and burn off a couple extra calories since the game felt the need to fat shame me. Are those candy corn Oreos? Over the next few days, a couple small things happened that I'll walk through now. Stopped myself from spending like two hours each day running out to the horde zone and then back to base. Decided to set up a small camp in a zone that I had already cleared out last episode. The only issue was that I was pretty close to the horde zone and could pull back zombies with me if I didn't lose them before retreating. Aside from that, just business as usual. Wake up, eat, go to town on zombies for most of the day, head back to camp when I was tired, rinse and repeat. Well, until day 306 at around 10.50 a.m. when I got ambushed, but at this point, it's nothing new and I've become a little desensitized to it. On day 307, I finally managed to fight my way back to the cars and deliver them to the mechanic shop FOB. I spent the rest of the day clearing out the area and attempting to fence in the shop, which ended up taking way too many resources and I gave up on that pretty quickly. Day 308 was much less exciting. I spent the entire day driving back to the main base to drop off some loot and then spent the rest of the day tailoring and prepping to bring some gear and, and more firepower to the, to the fob. All right, I think subconsciously I wanted to just get this bit out of the way early, but also it wouldn't be an entry if I didn't absolutely annihilate a vehicle. So channeling Paul Walker's inner essence, I totaled my car and had to continue the rest of the journey on foot, which in turn brought a horde to the fob, which I'd need to take care of. spent the majority of 310 fighting my way back to the wreckage and grabbing the gear that I was planning to bring along initially. After that, I took some time to clear out the immediate area so that I could work without risking a jump scare every couple minutes. By that, I mean I was immediately jump scared the next day when a zombie snuck up on me while I was working on my mechanic skill. Best thing about this is it took like 20 minutes to kill because I was too exerted to dish out any real damage. Days 312 and 313 were spent working solely on my mechanic skill. I would go through and remove all the items before reinstalling them. I found myself in the parking lot of the shootout from part 3, working through each car I came across. I also collected something like 50 light bulbs, so I spent time adding and removing those from cars as well. Three fourteen was kind of a wash, nothing crazy really happened. I made it back to base early in the morning and slept for most of the day before driving back out to the fob. 315 was also super boring and kind of a waste of a day. I basically just sat around all day trying to fix my sleep cycle so that I wasn't getting tired at 11am and then waking up at 2am every day. I spent all of day 316 clearing out the buildings to the east of the fob. It was pretty cool since I hadn't really seen any of the shops in the area yet or a lot of the apartment style buildings so it was nice to get to explore a little bit, especially in an environment like the far side of the city a ways away from the mall. Three eighteen was a day for more exploration. I didn't go crazy with it, just visited some sites to the left hand side of the fob, but I did level up my short blunt skill. A lot of today was more for my own sanity of being able to mark the area as safe and not have to worry about a horde grouping up out of nowhere for me. 319 was dedicated to sightseeing around Louisville. As I mentioned a couple times, I haven't really taken the time to explore LV and hit any of its POIs, so today I decided to visit the football field, which wasn't super exciting because we're almost a year in at this point and nature has reclaimed the entire field and much of the surrounding area. 
After leaving the football field, I made my way to a pretty cool mansion and even had thoughts of relocating here for the remainder of the episode, but quickly shot it down after I had a PTSD flashback of what happened just trying to get to the fob, but maybe in another playthrough. On day 320, I decided to finish up the mechanics level I was chipping away at. It took the majority of the day, but was worth it to finally make some progress. The only thing worth noting on 321 was that I drove back to the main base to drop off some loot that I had gathered while at the FOB. Also gave me an excuse to get back and read the next mechanics book, which I spent all of day 322 doing. Day 323 was the birth of one of my dumbest but necessary ideas yet. So while I was exploring the surrounding area and fighting some zombies, I decided to test ways to grind my first aid skill. Now obviously I couldn't just run into zombies and hope I wouldn't get bitten, that'd be literal suicide. Now I could dig furrows with my bare hands and, and scratch them up that way, but that's boring and you can only scratch your hands, which kind of limits your XP and the ability to do anything else. Then it hit me, quite literally in the form of a deep wound. If I happened to shatter a window, then climbed through it naked, I could scrape myself up badly enough just by hitting a key on my keyboard. On day 324, while exploring below the mall, I found an Ox radio station and got to explore it for a little bit before attracting some unwanted visitors. After fighting through a couple clusters, I went back to the radio station and uh, may have went a little overboard with the first aid training. Day 325 was just spent trying to recover from my wounds as fast as possible. Spent stuffing my face and slamming some sleeping pills before crashing on the bed. On day 326, I made my way all the way out to the baseball field to see what the hype was about. I tried clearing out the zombies in the area, which led to me retreating into the stadium, because no one goes to baseball games, and up into the nosebleeds where I was attacked from behind by Seth Rogen. <laughs> After that, I managed to pull off the best juke I think I've ever attempted in PZ. I'll just let it play out real quick for you all. Fortunately for me, I hit excessive exertion and had to walk all the way back to the base, which was a feat in and of itself. Since it took me so long to get back to the base the previous day, I woke up later than I would have liked. By the time I got into the car, it was way too late for me to do anything cool, so I just went back and did some tailoring and worked on some other skills to pass the time. So here's the thing. I can't fucking stand baseball. It is the most boring sport in the world to me. You can already see the comments coming in like, well, you just don't know what a real sport is and it's America's pastime, man. Shut the fuck up. No one likes your stupid ass sport where you can't even start a damn season on time. It's literally the only sport in the world where you can be completely out of shape and still get paid to be a boring piece of shit. You think we want to win? Then we have to keep playing this boring game. Yeah. Uh -huh. You hate this game too? Anyway, I have way too much bourbon to do nothing with and a couple of you can already see where I'm going with this. Needless to say, this is my favorite moment of the episode. Call it karma for burning down the church last episode, or maybe the Indy Stone team just loves baseball, but either way, I walked outside on day 329 to a thunderstorm which basically ruined my plans of burning down the baseball field. I figured if I can't burn down a stadium, I might as well go work on my long blunt some more. Day 330, I found myself back in the baseball field ready to give it another shot. 
One thing I forgot about is that the rain obviously can't put out the fires inside the park. So while the exterior fires were put out, the fires inside the ballpark kept going. Because of this, I was able to use the zombies still in the arena to spread the fire throughout the entire stadium. It's like my plan would work out after all. Day 331 was tailoring focused. After hitting level 2, I spent the majority of the day reading the next book in line. After that, I made a bunch of soup. Good soup. Because I figured it probably wouldn't hurt to put some time into cooking as well. Day 332 saw me clearing out some apartments and an office building downtown. Nothing too crazy, just wanted to explore a little bit more and this gave me the perfect excuse to do that while also leveling my combat skills. On day 333, I tried my best to keep working on my melee skills, but when a horde starts to accumulate, you gotta act quick or risk dying for being an idiot. And after getting fed up with trying to swing a baseball bat into a mass of zombies, I ran home and grabbed the shoddy. Anyway, I started blasting. Bam. I wasn't getting anywhere with the shotgun, which was kind of shocking to me because they are arguably the best type of weapon in the game, but I don't know. Maybe it was because I had too much ammo to know what to do with, or maybe it was because it seemed like a cool idea, but I broke out the LMG to tear through the horde. This is one of those cases where guns just weren't doing the trick for me. Effective, yes. Efficient, eh, not so much. There basically two pathways here. I could hang out around the base and wait for the hordes to move out of the area, take a couple days, but... Who knows? I could take it into my own hands through uh, other methods. I think we all know which option I chose. Now, obviously this ruins all of the loot on all of these bodies and I, and I get that, but I really just don't fucking care. I had more loot than I knew what to do with at this point and after burning down the neighborhood, I couldn't care less. Yeah, I ended up clearing out a smaller horde with a shotgun and discovered the electronics store. So that was pretty cool. Now on day 336, I cleared out some of the stragglers hanging around before spending the rest of the day just disassembling stuff in the electronics store. Kind of a nice little break in between combat sessions for me. Day 337 was another boring day spent doing general maintenance around the base. Things like cleaning up the storage room and reloading all of my mags. Really nothing special. Day 338, I went exploring through some more apartment buildings. One thing to note was I found a window store and took one back to the base with me so I could work on first aid from the safety of a mall rooftop, which was right next to all my medical supplies conveniently. You couldn't tell where this was going. I spent 339 just climbing through the window to work on first aid more. Oh, I also messed around with painting for a little, but was kind of annoyed because all you could really do is paint symbols. I'm sure I'm probably just doing something wrong here, so if you know something that I don't know about painting, uh, leave a comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I was really hoping to paint my entire base a nice bright pink, and uh, you can't do that as far as I know how to. So please let me know if I'm if I'm just messing something up here. Day 340 was more exploring and sightseeing. I went down to the pier and just checked out some of the buildings and admired the view. I fought a couple zombies, but again, nothing really crazy happened. Continuing the expedition to find cool shit, I stumbled upon the COVID house, or toilet paper house, whatever you want to roll with. But seriously, I don't know if it was just a bug with loot spawn, or if it was intentional and a hilarious gimmick, but the house was loaded with toilet paper. Literally every cabinet and drawer had rolls on rolls of toilet paper, and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Definitely not what I was expecting to uncover while strolling through the city. In day 342, I found myself at the movie theater. I did the only logical thing that I could think of and tried to purchase tickets to the SpongeBob movie! <laughs> Apparently the staff didn't like that, and I spent the rest of the day dealing with the bubble blowing double babies that just ran at me screaming. Goofy goofy goober goober yeah! Okay, so gotta explain this real quick. If that didn't wake up some deep, fucked up, repressed memories of that movie for you as a kid, I'm just gonna say it guys. You're a dork who probably never got to have scented markers as a kid. But me and my wife were living our best adult life, you know, going to bed at 7 p.m. and shit like that. But instead of going to sleep this time, we flipped through Paramount Plus. This isn't a sponsor, by the way. Fuck them. Give me your money. And found the OG SpongeBob movie, which I actually have a VHS tape of. And yeah, that's how old I am. That's some hardcore boomer material, guys, I know. But moving on. We found the movie and watched all of it. And I just sat there through the entire movie and thought, I need to put this in the video somehow, and I don't care 
how I get it in here, but I need to fit it in. So yeah, moving on. I think the trend of this episode is waking up late because this is like the third time it's happened so far and I promise it's not the last. But anyway, I woke up late and decided that instead of doing cool things, I'd just hang out around the vicinity and clear out some nearby zombies with the M16. Spent most of day 344 just working on mechanics and souping up another car to drive myself around in. Realized it was time for me to take a break from gardening since all of my crops just kept dying. For some reason, I just couldn't remember when I needed to harvest my crops this episode. So every time I went up, they would just be dead and it really just wasn't worth it to me at this point. Oh, I also finally brought in the popsicle freezer that had been sitting in my trunk for like a hundred days. At 345, I spent the morning just disassembling that giant line of TVs that I had created over a hundred days ago. I spent the rest of the day just trying out fishing with actual gear and not just a spear this time, which was so much nicer since I could actually catch shit. So I know I haven't spent much time fishing since part one, but this is around the time that 41.66 came out and I heard that they were reworking fishing to be more of a mini game. And after watching the destruction of foraging, I really didn't want to go through that again and decided that it was going to pound out as much fishing as I could and hopefully max it before build 42 made my life way more difficult than it needed to be. Anyway, spent all of 345 and 346 fishing. Whenever I ran out of bait, I just grabbed a shovel or a garden hoe and dug furrows to dig up some worms to use. On day 347, I noticed I'd hit fishing level 2, which must have happened on day 346. So I spent the day just reading fishing volume 2 and gathering more worms for bait. Days 348 and 349 were spent fishing. I know, super exciting stuff. Oh, I also started planting a massive garden of potatoes, but hang with me on this one because I have an actual use for them this time. And I know I just said I was done gardening for a while, but we're back. On day 350, I finally had to face the fact that my freezers were full of fish and I had nowhere to put anything else. So I decided to try my hand at cooking. Mmm, so good and tasty. That went about as well as you'd expect, given that I forgot that the oven I was using also had two sides and ended up burning six pots of food. So... Mm -hmm. I think now is a good time to talk about the structure of this episode. With this series, I basically go through and create a storyboard that's organized almost down to the day, full of ideas, building plans, base ideas, all that fun stuff. Well, for part four, I had around 85 days worth of ideas planned out and structured starting with that FOB that I haven't even mentioned in like a month. That's because I realized that the moment I actually followed the storyboard for this episode, the game got incredibly boring, and I basically just scrapped the entire storyboard about 10 days in, which explains why everything feels so random and chaotic, at least to me. Hopefully it doesn't to you, or if it does, hopefully it's still entertaining enough for you to find some joy in, but a lot of what you're watching is just me doing whatever the fuck I most felt like doing at the time, which has brought a lot of enjoyment back to grinding my skills. All right, enough of that. Let's get back into the funny stuff. Day 351 started with a fuel run. I usually don't show these because nothing worth noting ever happens, and it's usually just me running here, fueling up, and dipping back to base, but fuck it, it's here now and it's staying. On my way home, I decided to stop by the movie store to pick up some uh, special VHS tapes. Spent the rest of the day just watching some of the movies I got a hold of. Spent the morning of 352 just watching movies until I realized that I had hit cooking level 6 at some point, in which case I went down to the bookstore to find the final two cooking books. After searching through the entire bookstore, I could only find volume 4, which kinda sucked, but at least I had that. Oh, and I also grabbed the rest of the trapping books as well. I wrapped up volume 4 around 3.30 the next morning. Woke up late, again on day 353, and decided to just spend the rest of the day fishing more. Told you it wasn't the last time. Sorry guys, I gotta get in one of these while I can. Spent the entire day cutting down trees for something that you'll get to see tomorrow, but until then, enjoy this mini montage of me cutting down trees and sawing them into planks. Now, I'm not sure why I chose this time to start it, but fuck it, let's get into it. Building off of the wood I collected yesterday, I built enough traps to feed Ethiopia for a fucking week. The goal was to set enough traps that I could power level my trapping skill within a couple days. Kinda seeing the pieces come together. About 50 traps, a few hundred potatoes, 
we're moving boys now, i'm not sure if trapping works up here similar to how foraging doesn't really work up here yet but i'm giving it a shot kicking off the morning of 356 i drove out to check on the traps i got a couple hits but nothing crazy like all the crates or anything like that realizing i drove all the way out here and forgot potatoes i had to drive back to base grab food and then drive back to the traps to rearm all of them after that, I didn't really have any plans, so I spent the rest of the day just stripping down to my Hooters outfit, throwing myself through a shattered glass window to work on my first aid skill. After scratching myself up, I decided to drown out the pain of being alone by laying in my bed and slamming bourbon until I was utterly shit-faced. On day 357, I woke up hungover and decided to do some tailoring, then checked my wounds. After that, I rearmed the crate traps, but checking the crate traps is kind of becoming the new morning routine, so to save you guys from having to hear about it every day, I'm just not going to mention it anymore unless something cool happens later on. Once I got back to base, I watched the trapping movie to get me to level 4 and then just spent the remainder of the day reading volume 3. Since I wasn't able to finish the book and didn't want to destroy my sleep cycle again, I decided to wrap up volume 3 in the morning of day 358. So I'd actually stepped out to do some laundry, thinking I had time to change the loads real quick and then came back realizing that I'd set my speed to times two instead of normal. So this day was basically a wash as I just spent the majority of the day sitting in bed staring into space. All right, time for some more combat. Day 359, I went looking for some action and found a candy store. After setting foot inside, I triggered an alarm, which was actually the first one I'd triggered since Rosewood. Can you believe that? Almost 200 days in Louisville, and this is my first alarm that I triggered here. It's insane to me. Now, Rosewood spear-wielding Preds would have been terrified and ran back to the base. But this is day 359 Preds, not day 9. So, I was ready to roll. Day 360 was spent roaming around Louisville just clearing out random buildings that I thought looked cool. Found myself near the baseball field and decided to stop in to watch it burn again. That's right, I'm still not over this. On day 361, I did the noble thing and gave a giant fuck you to the Lorax before slamming my car into a tree. If you're keeping track, please tell me how many cars that is because I've lost count by now. Alright. This next stretch includes one of my all-time favorite things to do in PZ. On day 362, I found an ambulance and had what is quite possibly the stupidest idea I've ever come up with. I know I'm not the first one to do this, I've seen thousands of videos on it, I actually used to do it myself in build 39, but I spent the remainder of the day setting up my trap and fell asleep in a neighboring building. On day 363, I finally kicked off the trap. This would be my test run for future endeavors and I wanted to see it on a smaller scale before potentially crashing my game. So. Here's the event sped up and with my old friend making a surprise appearance since you guys liked him so much. I've also received something like 150 plus DMs asking me to put it back in. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my old friend, Dancing Doge.
This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. I hope you enjoyed this masterpiece, and now, back to the episode. Day 364 was a break from the action. I spent most of the day fishing and digging for more worms. And if you want something to be excited about, I hit fishing level 3, so cheers to that. Day 365, I woke up late and just spent the day working on mechanics some more. Nothing crazy, just the same formula from the beginning of the episode. Also, we've officially made it a year, so that's pretty cool. On 366, I spent some time organizing my storage shed and remembered I had a shit ton of arrows, so I decided to spend the next few days burning through my arrow count. Of, of course, I still had a WMD with that ambulance Molotov combo, so I decided I needed to step it up a notch. I had a plan, but it was a little too late in the day to do anything, so I spent the rest of my time just making as many arrows as possible before going to bed. The morning of day 367, I woke up and drove out to the suburbs where I subsequently burnt down the entire neighborhood while also working on my bow skills. I rigged the same setup of blaring the siren and then dipping out behind some buildings, and this was a little easier than before since all of the houses were fenced in, so I could just climb over them as long as I wasn't too exerted. It was a lot of fun, but I realized pretty quickly that archery was going to be a drag to level. Possibly the slowest active skill in the game, if I had to guess. I'm not sure but the benefits you get from leveling, but I'm hoping it's something like better headshot chance and a faster reload speed, Otherwise, we're going to have some problems later on when this is the last skill left for me and I have to figure out a way to grind out 8 levels when you get less than 1 XP per headshot. I had a couple skills that I was close to leveling, so I chose to commit to those. Specifically, long blunt and sprinting. Spent days 368 and 369 doing just that. It wasn't difficult by any means, and it basically followed the same premise of sprinting out to an area, finding a small group of zombies, killing them, resting, and repeating. On day 370, I finally hit mechanics skill 5, and spent the rest of the day just disassembling all of my electronic stuff. After that was finished, I geared up to fight before realizing I was at critical damage from not eating all day. Now if you're looking at this and thinking I'm a dumbass for letting this happen, you're spot on. But also, you gotta realize, I was still overweight, which really messes with your endurance, so I was really trying to starve myself into dropping the pounds, which this fat ass really struggled with apparently. Day 371 was spent harvesting all of my potatoes. Now it's time for me to finally admit, I may have gone a little overboard with the gardening fiasco. For harvesting all of the potatoes, I realized I had no space to put them, so I ran down to the mall and grabbed an industrial fridge to store them in, which still wasn't enough. So if you're thinking of that with some quick math, that's somewhere around 450 potatoes, or two ice freezers and an industrial fridge, and to still have not enough space for them. And to add on top of this, there was still the rooftop garden which had more potatoes in it. I spent 372 working on trapping, which is now basically an all-day event since I don't have a car to take me there. Well, at least not one that I'm willing to risk crashing into 15 trees. When I got back to base, I realized something. I'm starting to run into a non-serious, but kinda serious issue of having way too much food and not enough storage. I have hundreds of potatoes and rabbits and fish, but nowhere to put them right now. And it's driving me nuts because I wanted to lose weight because I'm overweight, but I also didn't want to lose all of the food. I, I don't know. It's stupid, but it's also something that's just super annoying to me for literally no reason of like watching food spoil and wasting that kind of stuff, even though I have an overabundance of it. And that's not even looking at my kitchen to the left of me, which is covered in food still. Someone in my Discord was talking about how the old pushing the tree exploit still worked, but for maintenance, and if you don't know what that is, basically in older builds, you could speed up time and level fitness and strength by pushing a tree, by standing next to a tree and pushing space or clicking with your left mouse button. Um, you could also speed up time during that, and it was a huge exploit since it wouldn't break the tree, but you could grind fitness very quickly with it. Finding out this could still work was pretty big for me, so I grabbed a hammer and tested it out for myself, and it looks like he's right. Now, it's a slow process since you have to basically speed up time in between each hit, which really drags on unless someone knows a workaround or if I'm just not doing it correctly. 
but I'll save that for another time. Just something cool to find out. Aside from that, I had a ton of weapons and I wanted to start burning through them, so I picked my weapon of choice, and for the first time in around 300 days, I started using spears again. I was also able to head back out and retrieve my red van from that parking lot I left in a couple days ago. 374 was a nice throwback day to part 1. I spent the day burning through my massive spear collection. The nice nostalgia kick for me since I haven't used spears in combat in like 350-ish days, and really since moving to Rosewood to be honest. And this time I wasn't just using base spears, I finally had the resources to be able to attach knives on the ends for some added damage. Couple that with the fact that my maintenance skill was above zero and it all added up to a really enjoyable experience. 375 was kind of a weird day. I had some nightmares so my guy was up at 1am and tired by 8am. My time in Louisville was coming to a close and it was now time to start working on my vehicle to take me to the next destination. Decided the ambulance would be that car. I started this process by taking the battery out of the van and then repaired the hood of the ambulance before realizing that all of my tools are sitting at the mechanic shop that I made into a small FOB on the other end of the city. But too tired to risk it, I spent the rest of the day just working through my VHS collection, which leveled up my cooking for me and then harvested the rest of the potatoes on the roof, which, let's be honest, it's mainly for the seeds at this point. On 376, I put the battery back into the van and made my way back down to the mechanic shop, looting it of basically every item that I thought held value to me. When I got back to base, I spent the rest of the day just scavenging all of the parts off the remaining cars in the mall parking lot, looking for anything that I could use to upgrade the ambulance in the slightest. Worst case, I could take the engine parts off any vehicle I passed, since the ambulance's engine was sitting at a whopping 13%. So here's the thing, I don't know how or when this happened. But if you look at the info tab, specifically the survived for section, you can see that it says one year, 18 days, and 21 hours. We'll round this up to one year and 19 days, which equates to 384 days, not 376. I'm not really sure where those days went, since everything is pretty well documented. I keep a running spreadsheet of what I do each day for each 100 day episode. It's like here's a sneak peek of what part four looks like. This is updated at the end of each day while I'm sleeping, so again, not really sure where those days disappeared to, and if I had to guess, I would think it would happen during either part 1 or part 2 while I was working on any larger build projects that took multiple days. I'm just gonna have to be more diligent going forward. Sorry about that. But yeah, this really cuts down on the time that I've left since I just lost about 8 days of prep work, so I guess be prepared for a very action-packed final 15 days or so. 385 was generally the same as 376, or 384 if you want to be a dickhead about it. Just more of me scavenging stuff off of cars and the abandoned parking lot looking up for any useful parts and then taking the engine parts of every car I came across. Did get ambushed by a zombie at around 250. That took way too long to kill. Like, seriously. Way too long. By 5 p.m., the car was about as set as I was going to be able to get it, so I decided to switch gears and focus on loading the car, but that would wait until tomorrow. I spent the morning checking the traps again, which leveled up my trapping, but I decided not to take any of the meat back with me since I had literally no room for it anywhere. I spent the rest of the day just picking out items to move into the car. This wasn't going to be like Rosewood, where I set up a goddamn convoy and drove for like three full days at a whopping five miles an hour. No, no, no. I'm just taking what I can fit in the car. Now I know that's going to piss some people off because it's like, why the hell did you just make this big ass base and spend a bunch of time and add a bunch of this stuff to it if you're not going to hang around and use it all? And that answer is pretty simple. Uh, go fuck yourself. No, I'm just kidding. I was just getting bored of Louisville and I wanted to see some other sites. All of the gear I had here, the, I, you can replace it. I'd be able to find it in other places. So it's, it's not the end of the world. For items off the top of the list, I chose three spiked baseball bats for my melee weapons. Then I went through and grabbed some medical items like sterilized bandages, suture needles, painkillers, all that stuff. Obviously I'm bringing the M16, so I grabbed around 30 boxes of ammo and threw that in the trunk along with 10 fully loaded mags and 4 molotovs. After that I grabbed the spaz 12 and a canister of 12 gauge shells. That's about it for weapons, aside from a pistol and some double stack mags that I could fit on my tack vest. Other items included things like a wood axe, a saw, a sledgehammer, all that fun stuff. Now, obviously, I had a shit ton of stuff here to burn through, so I figured I'd better start now. 
I had three axes between a fire station axe and two hand axes, so I decided to focus on those until they broke. I started collecting sweaters and jackets so that I could burn through my tailoring gear as well. I also found a new dance book, but whenever I tried to read it, zombies kept coming up to me, so I had to take it back to the base and test it out. Day 388 was much of the same, mindlessly roaming the city, searching for zombies, wiping them out, and then going back home. Only thing really worth noting is I leveled up my axe skill, which was pretty cool. But here is where you can start to see the wear and tear of 200 days in a city, even like Louisville, even the size of Louisville, right? After 200 days, if you don't want to risk driving your car out, and I know a lot of you aren't like me and you don't total 20 different cars in 400 days, but when you only have one car left, you're not willing to risk driving that out and getting it lost in a horde. So I was spending a lot of time walking several hours in one direction, fighting for a couple hours, and then being forced to walk all the way back. So it I know it sounds like you have all this time to really fight through hordes of zombies at your will, but in reality, once you clear out the, the initial area, you don't have a lot of stuff to do. So a lot of this is me searching for hordes to find or trying my best to gather up as many zombies as possible before burning through my tools. 389 was a textbook definition of poor time management. Spent the morning doing some tailoring, or at least what I thought would only be the morning, but ended up being most of the day burning through my tailoring resources. By that time, I realized it was a little too late in the day to do any combat, so I dumped all my cooking pots and started meal prepping from scratch again. 390 was also spent cooking, just another grindy day now that we're in the home stretch. After wrapping that up, I started doing suicides by the water to work on my sprinting levels. Started off day 391 with some more sprinting, but realized really quickly that it's super boring and decided to go mess around with weapons again. Spent the rest of 391 and all of 392 just roaming the streets looking for small hordes to burn through. The whole time I was doing this, I started to feel a little overwhelmed with the fact that I had literally four shelves of weapons that I would never get to touch as I realized I was nearing the end of my time in Louisville. You might think, we'll just stay a little while longer and leave in a couple more weeks or so. And that's a fair argument, but I just like to keep everything tight, and I think 200 days here, while maybe not enough to fully experience everything LV has to offer, is more than enough time for me to get a little sick of seeing the same sights every day. So, I thought I only had three axes, but when I was going through the storage shelves, I found five more axes. So I tried to make the most of the time I had left here and went on a mini rampage. A couple hours in, I found a weapons locker in a random building I ducked into and found an RPG in it, and had an immediate realization that I had a rocket back at base that would fit just perfectly with this. Now, wanting to pump in some excitement, I grabbed the RPG, loaded the rocket, decided to see what kind of crazy shit I could do with it. I figured the best course of action would be to round up a small horde, and then bring them into a building to light them up, so I got to work. Around 1040, I'd put the RPG away because my cat was laying in front of my keyboard and I didn't want him to click on my mouse for me and accidentally fire an RPG into a zombie two feet away from me. I know it sounds ridiculous, but he's done it before. So I finally got to fire off the RPG, and it was kind of a buzzkill, to be honest. Like, yeah, the fire was cool, and I got to burn down a building, which is always fun, but I gotta say, like, I was expecting a little bit bigger explosion. So maybe next time, I don't know. On day 395, I decided to dedicate the entire day just to sprinting, so I could check that off the list. I had a pretty good system down where I could click to walk and hold on the far end so that by the time you reach the corner, you could release the click and I'd run all the way back to the other end. And I also moved a chair out there for when I hit exertion so I could rest. Finally leveled up in the late afternoon and then nothing interesting happened after that. So on to the next day. Decided to have one last day of complete chaos. So I grabbed a bunch of Molotovs, a gun with a 50 round mag, turned the sirens on and cruised through the streets of Louisville at a whopping five miles an hour until I gathered a big enough audience. And my favorite thing to do is to kite a horde of zombies that are on fire into buildings and then watch the destruction completely unfold. So I did a couple loops and then routed them as close to the building as possible so that it eventually catch.
Next, I turned my attention to Spiffos. And after hitting the salsa in front of the godly mascot standing in front of me, I burned the building to the ground. Satisfied with my work for the day, I headed back to base and tried to pound out that next fishing level so I could cram in that book before leaving. 397 was spent digging more furrows to get worms. And once I had enough, I went right back to fishing. Nothing crazy, just more grinding until my second pole had lost its line. I didn't want to commit to using all of my fishing line, so I decided to try spear fishing again. And I was hoping that this time it'd be a little bit different since I had a couple levels and was using a spear with a bread knife and it did seem to make a difference since I could actually catch pretty decent sized fish which was a relief. This was one of those things where I was exhausted and if it was any other day I would have just picked it up the next morning but being it was day 398 I wanted to pound it out and give myself as much time as possible to read and gear up for the trip still. So I decided to fish through the night to hit level 4 at around 6am. Coincidentally, I also leveled up my cooking by filleting all of the fish that I was catching, so I decided to spend all of 399 reading as much as I could until I realized that I didn't have either of the books I needed. So back to the library. I couldn't find cooking 5, so I decided to cut my losses and focus on knocking out fishing. Now, looking back, I should have known that I wasn't going to find volume 5 for cooking since I had already looked for it in the same exact spot about 50 days ago. Whoops. I'm sure I'd find it eventually, I mean, we're not even halfway through this series yet and I've, I've got some time. But day 400 was bittersweet, as each 100 days tends to be here. This was one of my favorite bases that I'd ever created in Project Soundwood. And I know it wasn't super complex and it was relatively basic, but I enjoyed my time on top of the mall. Louisville in and of itself was an experience that I'd never forget. The last 200 days were some of the most fun I've ever had in a video game. I'm excited for what the next chapter is going to bring. Before embarking on my next journey, I decided to give the infamous mall the only send off I could think of. Fitting, don't you think? trying to get an early jump on part 5 and I played through the first 8 days or so before realizing that I never hit record in OBS. So I had to recruit the help of one of the OGs in our discord server who goes by Henry's. Who was awesome enough to help me recreate some scenes for you all in pictures he made himself in the best software ever created, Microsoft Paint. So thanks Henry's. Alright, without further ado, let's hop in. So luckily, nothing super important was missed in the first few days here. You basically don't get to see me drive from LV to my next destination, which turned out to be Riverside. So on day 401, I began the journey and made right it to the outskirts of LV, where I stopped on the side of the road and slept till morning. Reading through my notes for this day, uh, apparently I, uh, quote, Tokyo drifted to avoid complete annihilation. So do with that what you will. By this point, I had hit Spiffos and decided to hold up there for the night. Only problem was that Spiffos was loaded with zombies. I spent most of the afternoon and evening just clearing out zombies in the area, which was way more difficult than it should have been because I was completely exhausted. Best thing that happened today was that I leveled up my nimble skill, which, okay, that's exciting I guess. On day 403, I tried to dodge a barrier in the middle of the road and hit a tree, totaling the ambulance. So we made it three days. I marked the location of my totaled car on the map and made my way back to Spiffos to see if there were any usable vehicles there. For reference, here's a screenshot of where the ambulance crashed in comparison to how far away Spiffos was. I was able to make it back and hotwire a car in the parking lot and then use the rest of my gas to fuel it and bring it back. I decided to tow the ambulance instead of just transferring gear and leaving it since I figured it was a valuable resource and I'd probably need to use it in the future. Only problem with that is it slowed down my trip exponentially. Every time my car would shift gears, I'd lose any pull I had and the car would grind to a halt. So I spent the majority of the time just trying to keep the van in first gear. Decided to pull over around 10 p.m. to sleep, and right when I pulled over, I realized I could just siphon fuel from the ambulance to get me to my next destination, which was a huge relief. Around 10.30 on day 404, I tried to get around a simple roadblock, and after about 20 minutes, I took a look at the map, and after seeing how much farther I still had left to go, I made the tough decision to move as much gear as I could into my van, and then cut the rope tied to the ambulance. A really tough decision to make, but it was definitely needed if I didn't want to just spend the next two weeks driving 10 miles an hour and spending hours just to get around a simple roadblock every time I came across one. If this trip taught me anything, it said I really need to start taking better care of my vehicles. 
On day 405, I arrived at Riverside at 640 in the morning. I already had my next base location in mind, and so I equipped the katana and immediately got to work clearing out the zombies in the vicinity. Once I had moved all my items inside the church, I tried to organize them into piles and crates. I had one pile for weapons, one for food, one for tools one and resources, and then one for clothing and medical supplies. After that was all sorted out, I built a small exit pathway out of one of the windows in the second floor that I could use to safely get rid of boredom and could use for possible expansion or escape later on. I spent all of days 406 and 407 destroying the pews to make some more space in the church. Unfortunately, the drawbacks of working on an unsecured base is that you often get some uninvited guests that like to see what you're up to. For destroying the stairs on the second story, I went out and grabbed a comfy chair from a neighboring house so that I had a functional bed for now. After that was set up, I broke down both sets of stairs. On day 408, I added an escape rope down to the lower level of the church. After that was set, I destroyed all the windows in the lower level with a sledgehammer before walling them off to prevent any zombies from breaking in. Started off 409 by doing a looting run through the gated community. Here's around the time that I realized I wasn't recording, so let me give you a quick overview of the base. Luckily, I haven't done much to it yet, so it's still kind of in its shell phase. Fort 10 was pretty cool. I spent the morning cleaning up all the zombie bodies around the base, and after that I took some time to test out leveling the nimble skill. Found that if you toggle left control, you only have to hold a single key to walk in one direction to level. And I realized that I could just move my left movement key, or really any direction key for that matter, the enter key on the bottom right of my keyboard, and then just put an object over it, in this case an Xbox controller, and I could basically spiff my way to nimble level 10 as long as I had enough time. I wasn't about to waste any more time on it now since, again, I have close to 600 days left to get it to a grindable section and I wasn't worried about spending a few days here or there just pounding it out. 411 and 412 were spent building out my base more. I went to the Gigamart and bought some counters, a sink, and an oven to start building out my kitchen. The next day, I went back to the Gigamart to grab some coolers before heading out on a looting run to fill everything up. From there, I went through and grabbed the island and some bar stools to add to the aesthetic. Started the day off by hitting up the hardware store where I found some axes, sights, and a few machetes as well as some metal sheets. I was going to make a gate, but I realized I need three more metalworking levels, so that plan got put on the back burner and I spent the remainder of the day just grabbing some shelving units for the storage room. I know metal crates hold a lot more, but I just really like the look of fully stocked shelving units. On 414, I hit up the Gigamart again to find some resources to use for lamp posts until I realized that the church had lights in them and I had just never turned on my generator. Oh look! An idiot! I also realized the ranger truck was in near perfect condition, so I broke in and took it for a test drive. Drove out to the factory and started clearing out the area before heading home for the day. I'd planned on going back to the factory on day 415, but there were so many clusters of zombies in my area that I decided to just spend the day clearing them out. When I got back, I started building out the new storage room, and on the left end, I was going to build out metal crates for all weapon categories. On the right hand side, I'd have shelving units for my skilling items.
Started off the morning by working on my nimble skill some more. Just to clarify now, I like to start my days in PZ between 5 to 7 a.m. every morning. So in the morning, when I wake up before then, I'm just planning on training my nimble skill. This will help me level it off screen since it's arguably the longest skill to level and definitely the most boring to show. So I'm using the same setup I talked about earlier where I'm swapping keybinds and just putting an Xbox controller on the enter key and I'm walking into a fence or a wall or whatever really is closest to me. I chose these spots since it will prevent my character from getting bored and is the safest spot in my base. After working on that, I went back to the Gigamart again to start disassembling items and grabbed another shelf. When I got back to base, I started to organize how I wanted my storage room to be set up a little more. My next goal regarding the base would be to hit mechanics level 7 so that I could work on a garage for my cars. I decided to drive out to the bar to grab some stuff from my home and triggered an alarm immediately. Now, normally I'd stay in fight and had every intention of doing so, but my bat broke a couple minutes into the fight and I decided to come back the next day. On 4.17, I woke up and immediately drove back out to the bar, expecting maybe 20 or 30 zombies. I knew I was completely fucked when I round the corner and saw what must have been close to 100 plus zombies just idling around the area. Now, I'd only brought about 5 mags and a machete with me, so it was really no use fighting them. I decided to bait them around one of the stores before sneaking to the other side of the fence and clearing out the stragglers. After that, I quickly looted the bar and headed back to base. On day 418, I went to the bookstore to try to grab all of the remaining books that I need and found the 49th edition reloading manual, which allows you to make all different types of bullets, which is huge for me. After that, I checked out the school, but didn't really find anything worth keeping. Still trying to figure out how I want to design the base so I could potentially use some of these lockers for clothes or other items, but I think there's just some better options in the surrounding buildings that I could use. On 419, I went to the clothing store and grabbed some racks to use for a walk-in closet, and I'd spent the rest of the day just building that design out for myself. Day 420. I finished up the closet and started working on a garage section to the base. After that, I smoked a whole marijuana cigarette and OD'd on my couch while watching Barney. Don't drugs do, kids. In 421, after recovering from my crazy marijuana overdose, I built a large door on the side of the church so I could bring my cars into the building. 422 was a quest for scrap metal. I spent the whole day disassembling stuff and hitting up car wrecks so that I could make a couple more metal crates. Leveled up metal working in the afternoon, but other than that, nothing really happened. Spent 423 building out my base. 
I added some more storage and built shelves for medical supplies around the bed. And once that was finished up, I spent the rest of the day just organizing my storage room to how I liked it. In 424, I went back to the factory and looted it for basically everything it had. A ton of metal sheets, tools, melee weapons, and gravel bags. Truly everything I could have asked for. Four twenty five was spent clearing out zombies around the area. I also went to the police station and got ambushed by a shit ton of zombies which were locked in the vault room which was uh, an experience I guess. Nani? Now, a few hundred of you have seen the picture I posted on my community tab the other week, but as I was building out water barrels on my balcony, I accidentally jumped off the ledge instead of through the window and fractured my foot, almost killing myself. Now, me being the dumbass that I am, and panicking, I booked it back to my medical supplies before realizing that I could have just made a splint right where I fell. Nevertheless, I managed to craft and apply a splint with less than a couple seconds to spare. Holy shit. I've broken bones in PZ before, but I've never had such a close call before, and one with so much magnitude to it. Needless to say, I was a little more than panicked and definitely stressed out from the potential run ending fall. I decided to really not take any more unnecessary risks if I could help it, and decided the best course of action was to just lay low until the fracture healed. Until then, I'd be abusing the ammo that I'd accumulated, and would focus generally on fortifying the base better and working on some non-active skills. This is going to be a little different video because of this injury, but we'll continue to push forward. I spent the morning clearing out a couple zombies near the woods before spending the entire day foraging. And thank god they fixed the spawns for this. I'm gonna be honest, I'd still rather let Bill Cosby buy me Arby's than spend another day foraging, but there's not much else I can do right now with a busted foot. Oh, and one thing to note on this. 426 and most of this episode take place prior to the foraging fixes in 41.68, so finding items was still incredibly tedious. Building off of the extremely exciting event that was foraging, I decided to spend the entire day just dicking around with tailoring. Now, I just learned this and maybe I'm just an idiot, but if you didn't know, you can grind out tailoring on one item instead of using a bunch of different clothes. So. You get XP for both patching and padding clothes, as well as removing those patches. So I chose the army coat and all my leather strips, which was a dumb mistake looking back, but basically spent the entire day grinding out my next level for tailoring so that I could spend all of 428 just reading the next book for it. I spent most of 429 walking through the neighborhoods, just kind of exploring the void that is Riverside. One thing to note here is I triggered two alarms, making this three alarms 30 days into this series, which is nutty to me, since I triggered a grand total of one alarm in 200 days at Louisville. Aside from that, I came up with an idea that I thought would be pretty cool to do. I'm going to prevent myself from working on electronics until the end of part 5, so I'm basically going to hoard all of these items and then disassemble them all right at the end of the episode. I know this has like nothing to do with triggering alarms, but I felt the need to add it here, so we're keeping it in. Started the day off for 4.30 with a run to the gas station where I refueled the car and all my gas cans as well as took an ice freezer. After that, I went out to the fishing hut on the far end of the city and looted four more fishing poles and some more fishing gear. All in all, a pretty good haul for two POIs. Spent the day just exploring and looting the gated community. I got a message from one of the OGs on my Discord server, Kettle, around 8.20 in the morning with an important message for you all. But other than that, this is a pretty quiet day. Found some useful items like knives, food, all that fun stuff. And I even came away from it all with a bird bath, which I'd never actually seen before in PZ, so that was pretty cool for me. In 432, I woke up and checked my fracture to see that the foot was fully healed, which was super exciting for me. 
After realizing that, I scouted out an area that I could train some fishing in and spent some time foraging before heading back to my base. Nothing crazy happened today. Spent most of my time just familiarizing myself with Riverside since it's been a while since I've been here. After I wrapped that up, I spent the rest of the day just condensing my thread, which was super boring and, and totally unnecessary, but something that I felt a compulsive need to do. Spent the entire day out at the storage facility on the outskirts of Riverside. I never realized just how many generators there are here. If you're new to PZ or struggle with generators early on, I highly suggest spawning at Riverside, going out to the storage units and turning that into a base. It's a really great location. It's got tons of potential and some nice fencing to keep zombies out in bulk. Seriously though, I must have seen like 20 plus generators there. I also found two gun safes with a ton of cool weapons and ammo. Not wanting to have a massive arsenal for such a small place, I grabbed an AR and a Glock and kept it moving. Also, I've never messed around with concrete or plaster, so I just grabbed all of it that I could find and made plans to mess around with it at a later date. When I got back to the base, it was too late to really do anything else, so I dumped everything on the floor to sort out tomorrow. I woke up late today based on the events from yesterday and ended up spending most of the day just sorting through the hundreds of items that I had thrown into my car from previous expeditions and the storage units. After I wrapped that up, I decided to mess around with plaster for a little bit. After part 4, I got a bunch of comments from you all explaining how painting works, which was super helpful, so thank you. Genuinely appreciate the responses to that kind of stuff, as well as all the little useful tidbits that people add. I think they're all super helpful for the community, and even if I know them, I guarantee you someone watching doesn't, and it'll help them and make their experience better. Spent the entirety of day 435 disassembling various items around Spiffo's, the gas station, and the police station to gather metalworking gear. It was overall a pretty boring day, just grinding out metalworking to gather enough metal pipes to fence in an area. On 436, I headed out to the spot that I had picked out and began working on building a new style of fishing outpost. Over the next few days, I would just mess around with the different types of builds. At first, I built a straight path with what would have been a bunch of metal fencing so that I could see any zombies coming, but realized that I could just build a two-way highway to and from the cube section that would make getting to me near impossible. Once that was all taken care of, I built a campfire out at the outpost so that I could cook the fish after catching any and decided to head back to base for the night. Before absolutely raw dogging the back of a pickup truck parked in the middle of the road. The morning of day 441, I drove out to the small outpost and in an attempt to really challenge myself, I would try to survive for the next 8 days without leaving this platform. I would survive solely off of the food and water that I could prepare for my skills here. I had more than enough resources in the fire pit for the fire to last my time, and in the event that it did go out, I'd be fine to eat raw fish as long as I filleted them beforehand. I did bring out a bunch of tailoring gear and the next books for both tailoring and fishing so that this wouldn't be a complete waste of time, but this is going to be more of a struggle with boredom than an actual mechanic struggle. Day 1 of this mini challenge was about what I expected. I spent the morning fishing the area dry and subsequently cooked all the fish and began boiling water to fill empty bottles. This is going to become incredibly boring if I couldn't think of any other ways to pass the time. My second day out here, I just spent it fishing again. After I finished that, I filleted what I caught and stored it in the fire pit for later. 4.43, my third day here, I spent literally the entire day tailoring. And I don't mean like 8 hours. No, I literally from the moment I woke up until 8pm, I spent all of that time just tailoring. 444 was much the same. I would fish a spot dry and then fillet and cook the food. I caught a massive fish at one point which I think is the biggest I've ever caught in Project Zomboid. And I thought that was pretty cool since the fillet was like 70 hunger which is how much I was making with 4 pieces of meat for a stew with the meat I was getting from other fish. On day 445, 5 days in, I gave up. This was so fucking boring to me. Nowhere to go, nothing to explore, just sitting here doing the same shit over and over again which i realize has been the whole theme of this series i guess in a way but you're just kind of moving from one location to the next and doing the same shit over and over again but this sucked i went back to the base and spent the rest of the day just sorting through all the gear i brought out there which now looking back was a complete waste of time i'm not gonna lie Going from Louisville to Riverside was like going from banging the preppy cheerleader to holding one of the fat tuba girl's hands. 
Just fucking brutal. Spent the next day exploring some of the mansions in the gated community and working on my combat skills. I leveled up my axe skill again and turned my attention to Longblade. Eventually decided I was going to go back through and disassemble everything for more metal pipes and rods, but that could wait until tomorrow. So I spent the rest of the day just trying to clear out as many zombies that I could with my machetes. I went door to door disassembling anything that was related to metalworking on 447 before realizing that what I really should have been doing was tearing down the gates separating the mansions from the hordes of peasants outside. That was going to give me the metal bars that I'd been looking for, not disassembling sinks and stoves. Like, the fuck was I thinking? I decided I was going to dedicate day 448 to rounding off some skills. Most importantly, fitness and long blade. Act out fitness right away in the morning by doing 60 minutes of crunches. I look like a guy who's been hitting the gym. And then proceeded to go on a killing spree through one of the side neighborhoods to take care of long blade level 4. I also figured out an easy way to level my first aid skill passively, which was just to climb through a shattered window whenever I needed to get into a building, and then bandage myself accordingly. At this point, trying to come up with passive but proactive ways to level my skills that will keep this from becoming a grind fest, and so far, even if it makes the game more difficult and a little bit more dangerous, it seems to be working out well. spent the morning of 449 disassembling the metal fencing below me until I leveled up my metalworking skill. After that I spent the remainder of the day cutting down a bunch of trees and gathering over 120 planks for a small test I wanted to conduct. And if you're asking yourself, will we ever get an episode where he doesn't spend a bunch of days cutting down trees? I can answer that pretty easily for you. No. Now in hindsight, maybe I went a little overboard with the planks. Sorry. Set off pretty early in the morning and first built two sets of stairs leading up to the roof of the Gigamart. Once up there, I built an escape rope all the way down to the parking lot and added another to my second story of the platform. I also extended the platform out on one lane. After that was finished, I destroyed the first set of stairs, completing my ghetto ass setup. If you don't know what I'm doing yet, don't worry, I'm gonna explain it. You see, there's a really cheeky method to leveling sneaking where you can gather a horde of zombies and then sit on top of an area while they pile up and can't see you. Once you get enough, you can simply sneak around on the platform until you're satisfied. That's basically what I'm attempting to do with this shitty thing. Now, you may be asking, how the hell are you going to pull a bunch of zombies over here? You cleared the entire area out. There's a police blockade just down the road from me. Only problem is, the cars are beyond trashed. Now, normally, that'd be a problem that I'd spend a lot of time and resources on. But we don't need to drive, we just need the siren to work. Once I brought the car over, I fixed up the engine and repaired the gas tank. All I needed at this point was to charge the battery or find a battery that still had a charge in it. I went out to the mechanic shop by the self storage the next morning and looted it for everything it had, which unfortunately did not include a battery charger. I heard they can also spawn at gas stations, so those became my next targets. Luckily, there was one right down the road, so I hit that up. When I was trying to leave the gas station, I love tap my car in a bush, and apparently that was basically the same as slamming it into a brick wall at 200 miles an hour because the truck stalled and I had to walk all the way back to base on foot, which fucking blew. I spent literally the entire day just looking for a car battery, or a battery charger. At this point in the game, most car batteries are completely fried, but sometimes you'll get lucky and the game will bug out a car with a charge on it, and you can use it. Basically just walked around Riverside searching every car I found by checking both its battery and then the trunk to see if there was a charger in it. Needless to say, I was really regretting leaving that one back in Louisville. Finally, at 2pm, found it. In the trunk of a car wreck. Found a standard battery with a little bit of juice in it. It's so, it's so beautiful. Day 453 was spent entirely driving the police car out near the self-storage, turning on the sirens, and driving at 5 miles an hour all the way back to the Gigamart. This took about 35 minutes in real life of just sitting here staring at the car to make sure I wasn't crashing into anything or getting bogged down. Super boring, but well worth it to see the horde I was able to pull in. Fortunately, 
problem with this is when you go to get down, you bring the entire horde back to your base with you. Spent the morning moving the horde away from the base and assessing the damage done, which was extensive, to say the least. Decided to try out some metalworking and frame the walls before climbing back to safety on the second floor to read the next metalworking book. 455 brought more reading. After wrapping up metalworking, I turned to patching most of the holes in my base. 455 brought more reading. After wrapping up metalworking volume 4, I turned to patching most of the holes in my base. I decided that... While I could probably find a better vehicle in the future, or I could go back and fix up that truck, I couldn't not soup up the police cruiser. I spent the next two days working on it and fixing it up to make it drivable, which involved a bit more work than I thought it would. Basically went around from car to car in the area just looting it for any piece above like a 70% condition and brought all that shit back to the cop car. I spent the entire day working on tailoring, which was basically just a wash. Nothing really happened aside from putting in some more XP. Just needed a little break from pounding out mechanics for the last few days. It's been too long without any unnecessary violence. So on day 459, I woke up, drove the police cruiser to the far end of the city by the factory, and spent the day beating the dog shit out of zombies in the area. Every time the horde grew too much, I'd just hop back in the car and drive down the road a bit. I finally got overwhelmed, I dipped into the far end of the factory and looted this side for most of the metalworking gear that I could carry. On 460, I hit up the building to the right of me and found a library, where I also found four new dances and somehow still couldn't grab cooking volume 5. After that, I moved on to the hotel, which was pretty boring, so I decided to do the only thing more boring than that and forage. And by this point, they've updated foraging several times, and I want you to watch this. For the people that love this system, I'm going to play this out in full so that you can see just how fantastical this fucking system is. No music, no memes, no lube. You're going to watch this shit because I was forced to have to level it.
461 was entirely spent reading the next foraging book. Nothing to really add here, just a guy in search of how to tell if a rock is truly a rock or not. I wanted to just pound out the next section of this video, so I woke up on 462 and knocked out the next tailoring level before spending the rest of the day reading tailoring volume 4. On 463, I went out to the country club to check out the scenery. Burned through a lot of zombies in the area and decided to just hang out around the clubhouse for a day. Held up in the storage room after moving a chair and, and fell asleep there. Now, I gotta come to the defense of golf for a second because it got a lot of flack on part four. Mainly because all the baseball dorks came in and, and bitched about it, but what do you expect, right? Come on, we all know. I don't mind golf. I know what you're saying. Preds, you hate baseball. Baseball's boring. Golf is even more boring to watch. That's true, but you get to smoke cigars and drink all day when you play golf. You don't get to do that with baseball. Baseball sucks, but golf, golf's pretty cool. Even though I suck at golf, golf's cool. Day 464 was a lot of exploring around the country club. Best thing that happened to me was that around 12, 10 p.m., I found a car battery charger, as well as another standard battery, so that was really cool to finally have. If I learned anything from Louisville, it's that chargers are necessities, especially when you're over a year in. Later on in the afternoon, I got another deep wound when I was climbing in through a window, so I decided to walk down to the houses below me to search for either a paperclip or a needle that I could use to stitch it up. Luckily, I found a paperclip when I was scavenging the third house and headed back to the clubhouse to hide out until morning. I spent the next few days dedicated to leveling my short blade skill, which was brutal. Anyone has any tips for leveling short blades, please let me know, because this sucked. It'd be, it'd be fine if machetes counted as short blades, but knives just feel so weak to me. And I don't know of any types of weapons that I could use that deal high amounts of damage that are short blades. Now, I know meat cleavers are pretty popular, and I wouldn't mind using them. They're actually not that bad. I, I enjoy them a little bit. But things like hunting knives just don't do the trick for me. And... I feel like short blades are one of those weapons that don't really have a definitive weapon. It's like melee has baseball bats or crowbars and long blade has machetes and short blade just doesn't really have that. Anyway, I made a poll a couple weeks back about short blade combat and some people actually had some really useful information like leveling it with a combat knife and getting nimble three to take on a bunch of zombies pretty easily. From my understanding, the main appeal of short blade weapons is the fact that they use almost no stamina and knives have a chance to insta kill. Call me crazy for it, but I really believe that people that swear by this, and I wanted to see them at their true potential, so that became my motivation for leveling what many people consider the least appealing combat skill in PZ. Since it was raining, I spent the morning of 468 climbing through a shattered window to work on my first aid skill, and then spent the rest of the day training my nimble skill. Overall, super boring, and I finally hit nimble level 3 at around 6pm. So, I was talking with some of you in our Discord server. If you haven't yet, you should join. We have fun there. But basically, the gist of it was that forging is fixed in 41.68, and that I should spend a day just grinding it out to see how much XP I could grab for it. So, here we go. From 9am to 7pm, I grinded foraging until I hit level 5. And I gotta say, foraging might be legit now. What once took over an hour in-game to find a stone in an abundant area, now takes a couple minutes. They also fixed XP rates since I was able to go from level 4 to 5 in just one day. Now, granted, I was optimizing by aim walking around for the 30% boost, which I'm sure helped, but still. As someone who couldn't stand this change when the official release of build 41, I'm slowly starting to come around on foraging, aside from the fact that I found like 45 fucking pine cones. To do without that, but everything else has been great with the update so far. Alright, I gotta be honest. When I first downloaded the bow and arrow mod, I had really high hopes, but it's just not for me. I don't know if I'm too impatient with it or what, but I just can't get into it. And I know it's on me for downloading it for this series before ever even testing it, but at the same time, I didn't have this goal to max all my skills until around 300 days in. I'm still going to try and max all my default skills, but I don't think maxing my bow skill is something that either party would enjoy. It's just too time consuming for almost no reward. Now let me know if you really want me to go for it, and if enough of you do, then I'll commit to it, but otherwise, it's just a skill that I'm going to toss to the side to focus on things that are much more enjoyable to me. For reference, you get less than 1 XP per headshot with the bow and arrow. 
On day 471, I decided to start burning through my axes, since it seemed to be the most neglected skill so far. By now, Riverside is practically a ghost town, which is pretty weird to experience. If I want to gather any type of horde to fight, I need to basically drive to the outskirts of the city and blast the police siren to pull in anything roaming in the area. So we're running into a problem here. Riverside feels very empty compared to other cities in my opinion, and winter is coming. I can either stay here for another 100 days, in which case I'll be in the middle of winter in a base that is not fit to stand up to that challenge as is, or I could dip the fuck out of here. I've been mulling it over for the past 10 or so days, and I think I have my solution. I'm going to enjoy the time in Riverside for what it is, and part 6 will bring a different challenge. That means I have about 30 days to burn through all my resources here, which shouldn't be too difficult. Now, don't get me wrong, I still plan on keeping the promise of dismantling all the electronic crap at the end, but other than that, I got a ton of stuff to do, and I'm excited to get to work on it. Four seventy two was another combat heavy day. This was really one of the first times that I didn't have a particular skill to be grinding. I just grabbed two spears, a spiked baseball bat, and two axes already on my belt and headed out to find some trouble to mess with. I think I figured out a good way to not be intimidated by hordes in PZ. And I think it's generally pretty common to get discouraged or scared and run away when you have to fight more than let's say 10 zombies at a time. But once you get the hang of it, you kite them up and train them around, the movement aspect isn't so difficult. But a part that I really used to struggle with is the fact that at the start, you don't really kill anything. It's just a lot of damage being dealt out to a bunch of different zombies. But if you look at the horde like one giant boss zombie, it makes it a lot more bearable. It also starts to pay off when you go through a spree of killing like 15 in a row with every swing. But yeah, that's my little off topic tangent for the video. In 473, I really wanted to burn through all the ammo I'd stockpiled, so I went out to the factory in the outskirts of Riverside. There's just one problem. There's like no zombies here anymore. In all, I think I fired maybe 70 rounds, which is nothing compared to the amount of ammo I'm holding on to. Disappointed with this progress, I went ahead and looted the other factory building for metal sheets and all that kind of stuff. Overall, a really disappointing day, and adding insult to injury, as I was leaving the factory, I hit a tree and totaled the police cruiser. Really not my day today. The one positive I came away with was that I did find an antique oven in one of the crates, which is now sitting in the passenger seat of the police cruiser. When I was walking back to my base last night, I had noticed a white truck down the road for me, so I decided to go back and check it out. Luckily, it was in pretty good shape, and now that I had a battery charger, I was ready to roll. Took the battery back to base, and while that was charging, decided that I should go disassemble more fencing to grab some more metal bars, so that's how I spent my entire day. On 475, I put the battery back in the truck and headed out to loot not just the police cruiser, but the other truck as well. While on my way back, I sneezed and pressed down on the keyboard a little too hard and almost went through a tree. Seriously, I'm not sure how this didn't insta-kill me, but I'll take every blessing I can get. Today, I literally went around to every car I could find and took the engine parts from them to repair the truck's engine. Nothing crazy happened and it was just a really boring day of trying to find any cars left that still had something to take from. Started off 477 by working on making a giant wall around my base before realizing that I had nowhere near enough materials to pull that shit off. So instead of that, I decided to load up the truck with enough material to make five metal crates at my next base. Once that was wrapped up, I decided to work on my mechanics skill some more, so I found a set of cars and began the process of uninstalling every item before reinstalling. Just the basic mechanics grind. On day 480, I finally leveled up my mechanics skill and spent the rest of the day working on the mechanics volume 4 book. And if you weren't sure what was coming next, I spent all of day 481 reading. I know, truly exciting. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? 482 was spent working on tailoring. Again, I'm just trying to burn through as many resources here as possible before I head out. At this point, I've run out of thread, but I still have a ton of rip sheets and leather strips left. On day 483, I decided to head back out to my fishing spot and pick up right where I left off, spear fishing for the majority of the day. In 484, I decided I wanted to go explore the trailer park on the outskirts of Riverside, only I never got there, at least not today. 
Found some zombies near the mechanic shop and ended up just spending the majority of the day working through them. Again, at this point, I'm not really focused on leveling any particular combat skills. I'm just grabbing whatever weapons seem to be the most available to me, heading out on them. Now I'm going to let this play out and sped up because this was one of my favorite moments that I spent in Riverside. There's nothing really special about it. I just found myself most enjoying the game at this point, so I wanted to include the majority of the fight for this day. was much the same. I drove back out near the mechanic shop and blared the horn to pull in all the zombies in the vicinity and then worked through them until there was nothing but corpses left. After that was taken care of, I headed over to the trailer park and started clearing out the area before spending the night there to get a jump start on the next day. On my way back to base, it was storming so bad that I could barely see the cone in front of me, so I decided to pull over until the storm let up. After sitting for like three hours, I realized I'd have to get back in this shit. So I started driving slowly down the road, which was a brand new thing for me. Not really sure what the plan was on 487. It was raining again, but I found myself in the gated community working on forging and killing any zombies that I came across. Nothing really important happened today, so let's just keep it moving. In 488, I spent another day out at the fishing spot working through some of the tackle gear and fishing poles that I had stored out there. When I got back, I spent some time sticking glass into myself to work on first aid before ending the day. On 489 and 490, I went around Riverside and explored a bunch of buildings. I tried to target any places that I hadn't explored yet so that I could say I got the full experience, but if we're being honest, there's just not really anything left for me to do here. We're getting to that point where we're in the home stretch, and I'm honestly just not sure what to do at this point. It's not like there's a horde for me to go fight, or somewhere for me to go raid. Riverside is a literal ghost town at this point, and it kinda sucks. Decided just to spend the day doing some tailoring to pass the time. Alright, I think we made it long enough. It's time to disassemble my electronics collection. We're talking 1 ham radio, 28 regular radios, 1 two-way radio, 8 CD players, 17 walkie-talkies, and over 150 watches. Just good stuff all around. After leveling up, I went out in search of electricity volume 4, and after finally finding it, I spent the remainder of the day chunking away at it. Started off 493 by wrapping up volume 4 and disassembling the remaining electronics equipment. Also, I think it's rained more in Riverside these past 100 days than it has in all other areas that I've traveled to combined. Seriously rains every other day here, for days on end. It's ridiculous. In 494, I walked around practically all of Riverside looking for any zombies to kill and could only find patches of 2 or 3 at a time. This is basically how I came to the conclusion that I didn't really want to spend another 100 days here. It's just too empty for me. Now, I realize this is probably starting to drag a little bit, and believe me, I felt it too at this point. To try and take advantage of my surroundings, I decided to spend 495 and 496 disassembling the gates around the gated community, and was able to effectively level my metalworking skill, which would help me at my next destination. I can't believe I'm about to say this. But with nothing really left to do, I turned back to foraging. 
After spending the majority of the day on that, I hit foraging level 6 which was nuts to me considering last build it took me almost a full in game hour to find an abundant item. Following up on 497, I spent all of 498 locating and reading the next foraging book. Sounds like it wouldn't take that long, it took fucking forever dude. On day 499 I burned through what was left of my electronics gear and loaded up the truck for my next journey. Now most of the truck was already loaded by this point so I really focused on weapons and tried to grab my favorites while also grabbing some necessary items for my next endeavor. Things like the antique oven would be coming with me, which meant I needed to clear up extra space to load in a generator. Because of this, I'd be traveling lighter than I would have liked, but we'd have to make do. Well, we made it to the end of the episode. Another one in the books and officially halfway done with the series, which is crazy. Looking back over the last 100 days, Riverside was definitely not the best place to go immediately after leaving LV. I definitely gotten used to the massive amounts of zombies and to go from that to one of the smallest cities in the game was very difficult mentally, but still an enjoyable experience overall. There weren't any crazy combat days in this one, but I'm sure we'll have a ton more going forward as our time in Riverside is coming to a close. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all for watching and as always, thanks for stopping by. Today was my first day on the journey to my next destination. Surprisingly, I didn't completely destroy my truck today and managed to pass the ambulance that I left behind in the beginning of part 5. At I also figured this would be a good time to show you what you missed at the beginning of part 5, so here's the spiffos I stayed at and stole a car from, and here's the little room I slept in. Arrived at Twiggy's that night, and got to work clearing out the immediate area. Twiggy's would be my interim base while I got established in West Point. As I cleared out wave after wave, I decided that the second floor would probably serve as a nice escape from the bodies. Only one problem. After loading up my car, remembering to grab nails, saws, guns, katanas, all that, I forgot a hammer. My second day in West Point was a huge change of pace from the last 100 days. Zombies were everywhere, so I got to work establishing a small foothold around Twiggies. Pushed into the city for a few hours before losing both melee weapons and running back to the bathroom to rearm. On day 503, I found something that makes me so incredibly happy. Because I've never been to West Point, a lot of the assets hadn't spawned in yet, and I was able to find a Mustang surprisingly not in terrible shape and also while checking the area i was able to find diy volume one in the garbage can really starting off part six on a good note here after getting myself into a sticky situation i decided to dip out through a shattered window giving myself a deep wound in my right arm since that basically destroys any ability to use melee weapons effectively I decided to head back to my base and spent the rest of the day just playing pinball Also completely unrelated, but does anyone remember the old pinball game on like Windows XP and like Windows 7 PCs? Like, I used to play that all the time as a kid. 504, I began my expedition to the school. On foot. As of right now, I only had one car. Well, two if you count the Mustang, I guess. But I really didn't want to risk trashing either of them considering I didn't even know what West Point would look like after being abandoned for one and a half years. At around 1pm, I found an even cleaner looking Mustang parked at someone's house. After checking it out, all I needed was a charged battery and I'd be good to go, but it'd have to be a different project for another time. After making it to the school, I decided to scout out the surrounding area. The road here wasn't terrible, a couple hordes roaming around, but I could burn through those pretty easily. Turns out this isn't your everyday school, and hosting furries seems to be right up West Point's alley. After leaving the furry convention, I decided to check out the school, and figured that I'd probably be best to turn the gym into the main section of the base for now. Got enough escapes that I would never be in any real danger, also got some nice mini storage rooms already built in and I could add some doors out the back of each locker room for more escape routes. While searching upstairs, I found a car butchering in a nutshell and backyard smelting for dumb shits, so again, really crushing at these early days. On day 505, I packed up my gear and the generator and drove back out to the school. Once I got there, I cleared out the zombies in the immediate area before spending most of the day just unloading my truck into the small storage room in the gym, throwing some of the more useful gear just all over the gym. In the afternoon, I went through each room of the school and cleared out any stragglers for my own sanity. No sense in risking losing the run right now for being lazy. The morning of 5.06 was spent going through each room of the school and collecting anything that might be of value. Here's the collection I was able to obtain. The rest of the day was spent planning on how I wanted to fortify the school. It's too big to run with just one generator, so I'd have to work with size constraints, but as long as I could do that, it'd be a pretty kick-ass base when it was all completed. 
For the morning of day 507, I cut down trees to gather planks for farming. Still needed a hammer, but this was a chore that needed to get done eventually, so I figured why not knock it out now. After that, I spent the rest of the day reading through all the magazines that I'd found in the school so far to catch up on all those new recipes and dances I hadn't learned. 508, I went to the houses next to school and looted a few of them until I found a hammer. But before I got to any of the looting, I had some friends to take care of. I ended up tripping a house alarm and decided to just hang around to get some action in until I became exerted, in which case I just drove around a little to lose the horde before dipping back to base. I was able to head back out and scoop up the battery for the Mustang, but came back to the door of the gym missing, which means safety is going to be an issue for a little bit. Five oh nine was a day entirely spent putting up framing for a bunch of the walls on the first floor. Wanted to do metal walls, but I forgot a welder's mask, so I need to find another before I could secure the base. A couple of you told me this in the comments from part five that I could use wooden framing but do metal walls, so I wanted to try that out because that would save me a ton of resources going forward if this was the case. Spent five ten hitting up both auto shops looking for a welder mask. Not sure why exactly I felt compelled to go there, but I just figured for some reason that a welder's mask would be hanging out in one of those buildings. With my luck, I managed to find basically everything but what I was looking for. At each stop, groups of zombies had decided they felt like defending the area. Call them blue collar for loving the mechanic shop more than the southern people love the bible, but I had to put an end to it pretty quickly. After clearing out both stores, I decided to head back to base and continue my search to Mon. 511, I walked outside to see it snowing. Moving out to the storage units on the outskirts of town, I found a larger horde hanging out around the area. spending most of the morning fighting through zombies, I managed to lose them and get inside, where I found some hippies. Oh yeah, boy. Here, take a look at this, ma'am. See that? Hippies. <laughs> After dealing with them, I spent some time looting the storage area in the large warehouse next door, with basically the same results as yesterday. Really cool items, but no welder mask. On the way back, I tried to get into the hardware store, but there were too many zombies in the area, so... I burned through some of my ammo and decided it really wasn't worth it at this point, and I'd come back tomorrow. Day 512 was meant to be a looting day. Until I tripped another house alarm when I climbed through a window. There go my plans for the day. Do the montage. Oh boy, here I go killing again.
I got back to base that night, I decided it was probably time to ditch the furry costume in favor of something a little more, uh, my, my style. Decided it was time to bring out some more firepower. In 513, I switched over to the Model 870 that I'd snagged off a zombie cop, grabbed the Glock 17 that I'd found on a dead body, a few boxes of ammo, and set out for the hardware store. After dealing with some friends hanging out outside my base, of course. At 720, I had what has to have been the luckiest moment I've ever had in PZ. There's no other way to describe this other than sheer luck, so I'll just let it play out for you. When I tell you, I almost shit myself. After clearing out the hordes surrounding the hardware store, I looted it for everything that held any value, which unfortunately did not include a welder mask. Not really sure where else I could look for one, though I decided to just start going house to house and hoping to find one in a garage somewhere. By 14, I picked up where I left off on, more door-to-door -door work in search of a welder's mask. Most of the day was pretty monotonous, just bouncing from garage to garage until finally finding one in the garage shelf. By 15 was entirely spent moving items out of lockers and disassembling all of the lockers in the area to gather materials in order to fortify the base a little bit more. By 16, I finally got to work building the metal fencing to better secure the school. It meant cutting off entire wings, but it was a necessity, let's be real here. It's not like I'm running out of space or anything. 517 was basically the same as the previous days. I would go through and disassemble lockers to gather metal sheets to help secure the school. Nothing too crazy, so we can keep it moving. I leveled up metalworking the next morning, which is important to note because that means I can finally make some dope ass gates to make the base look a little bit cooler. After that happened, I decided to head on down to Enigma Books to find the final metalworking book. Naturally, I found things like the tuning magazines for Mustangs and Jeeps, a new dance, and not Metalworking 5. When I got back to the base, I spent the rest of the day reading through the magazines I'd borrowed from the bookstore. On 519, I closed off the cafeteria and set framing to block off the back staircase. This would close off an entry point, but still keep the back stairs available if zombies flooded in for some reason. After that was taken care of, I moved the water catchers to the second floor and moved some lockers into the lounge upstairs, which would serve as a weapon storage room eventually. Another pretty quiet day where a lot of base organization got done, but Nothing really happened outside of that. In 520, I sorted out most of my weapons. My melee weapons would go in the lounge upstairs while my firearms would take up the principal's office. Fitting. I'd still need some more materials to fully secure the base and start decorating, but for now, we were sitting pretty good. 521 was more of me sifting through piles of junk that were sitting in the gym. Finally stored all my guns and melee weapons and even filled out the library a little bit more. After that, I decided I'd turn my bedroom and the room to the right into the kitchen. 522 was a nice break from the base. I went out and set up a generator at the gas station near the center of West Point where I filled up the car and all of my empty gas cans. On the way back, I passed a third Mustang and stopped to check it out, determining that I liked this one a little bit better than my current. I drove back to base to gather some gear and headed back out to grab the new Mustang. After fighting through the zombies in the area, I was finally able to start my new car and tow the red Mustang back to base with me, effectively grabbing another car. Also, if you're asking where my truck went, Don't talk about it. In 523, I destroyed the wall between my bedroom and the room on the right to turn it into a kitchen. After building it out some, I decided to go on a small looting run to the house next door to look for any additional items to use. After getting back to the base, I decided to relocate my bedroom to the bathrooms on the second floor of the school. It was around this time that I noticed I was becoming depressed, which, I mean, checks out because I've been living in a fucking school surrounded by knowledge for like three weeks now, and that's gotta suck. 524 was spent cleaning up the base. I realized at some point that I'd leveled up my strength, so that was sweet. Gonna be the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the apocalypse if I keep this shit up. Anyway, yeah. 
Today I just cleared out zombie bodies, and by that I mean I just threw them in a pile outside. What time I had left, I disassembled all the shit in the bathrooms upstairs to make it feel more like a bedroom and less like an afternoon at the Washington football teams. I mean, Commander's Stadium. 525 had some of everything. I spent a ton of time in the gun room just setting up and decorating before heading out to look for some action. After finding a pretty decent sized horde, I spent a few hours just fighting through it until I became exhausted and had to ditch him. I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite moves to do in PZ. It's pretty dangerous, but as long as the setup is right, it can drop an entire horde off your radar relatively quickly. Five twenty-six. I fully moved all the junk out of the gym and into their own respective rooms. I also moved anything mechanics related out into the open lot outside of the school, which would become my garage whenever I got around to it. Another day of just moving different piles of shit into other piles of shit. On 527, I had an I'm an idiot moment when I destroyed my boots falling over a fence and then gave myself a deep wound in each foot by walking over glass shards twice. So, that was fun. At 528, I destroyed the small fencing around back and built a metal gate for the entrance to my garage. After that, I went ahead and cut down some more trees to make the framing defense in the back as well. 529 was pretty boring. I added framing for the garage to seal that in and then built out the kitchen a bit more. These last few weeks have been a nice break and a new challenge, but I think it's time for some more action. 530 was the looting run day. During the morning, I found a house that must have belonged to a retired military serviceman or a pissed off high school kid. Anyway, I ended up looting a lot of the armor there and brought back both beds to turn one of the rooms into school and do a little med bay. My second run later that day, I took the car out and found another generator and some gear that could be useful for some pretty cool weapons if I could find a drill. When I got back to base that night, I noticed a zombie had broken through the door again, so that need to be addressed. On day 531, I boarded up the front door and the subsequent windows in that area, and then ended up spending the rest of the day just fully securing the interior of the base. 532 was spent in the main section of the city on what was a pretty underwhelming looting run. I actually ended up spending most of the day just fighting zombies in the area and then looting them for leather strips to use for crafting and tailoring. On 533, I spent the morning adding some protection pieces to the Mustang, 
After that wrapped up, I went to the outskirts by the farm and went to town on some zombies in the area. To end the day, I decided to head into the workshop and built out a couple cool weapons to try the following day. On 534, I decided to catch up on reading. Even though I was still missing Metalworking Volume 5, I did have two of the books that I needed, so I spent the entire day reading Volume 3 for first aid, and then spent the next two days reading Cooking Volume 5. When I wrapped up the last cooking book, I went back to my workshop and crafted a metal spear. I actually got to use one of these in one of our hosted community events and they are deadly, so I had to give it a try in this series. 537, I wanted to do some window shopping for the base. By that, I mean I wanted to loot other people's homes for my base. Went through a couple houses early on in the day and found some nice furniture, but eventually I ended up just going to town on some zombies with my new weapons. I really like the stop sign. I just wish I was a little stronger so that I could swing it faster. I feel like it would only really do well in around smaller groups of zombies, and I'd probably die pretty quickly if I used this on a horde. The pipe with scissors, on the other hand, left a lot to be desired. I felt like I barely did any damage with it, but that might have also just been because I was completely exhausted from swinging a fucking stop sign around all day. One cool little tidbit here is that both the stop sign and the pipe with scissors counted towards my axe XP, so do with that information what you will. Day 538 was another combat heavy day. Like I said earlier, I've gotten to try the spear before, so I knew how deadly it could be, but I just wanted to showcase it on this series since a lot more people will watch this over a stream from like a month ago. So here's the scrap spear that looks like some medieval shit you'd see in Game of Thrones. On day 539, I went out and finished fencing in the garage section. This took way longer than I was hoping for, but it was nice to be fully fenced in now. The next day, I took 15 boxes of 9x19 rounds and gathered something like 500 cases of gunpowder. Now I have no idea what the fuck I'm going to do with it, but I'm sure I'll figure something out with it. By the time that wrapped up, it was around 2pm, so I decided to build a staircase up to the second floor and roofed in the garage so I wouldn't have to work in sub-zero temperatures anymore. This actually took way longer than I thought it was going to. I was thinking maybe it'd take a full day and a half, or maybe even two days, but it ended up taking, like, five days. 542 was again spent working on the roof. Towards the end of the day, zombies broke through the front door and it took me way too long to kill two zombies with a hammer. I feel like I've had at least two or three other clips of this exact same scenario playing out, and I, I just love that it takes like 30 minutes of just smacking the shit out of a zombie. After completely securing the front door and walling it off from any other future threats, I spent the next few days working on finishing up the roof for the garage. In 546, a few zombies broke in through the library and took apart some of the walls to get to the garage area. I was able to clear them out pretty quickly, but had to waste more material rebuilding the wall. I wrapped up the roof on day 547 and immediately noticed that zombies had broken down the gate I built at the entrance. Adding insult to injury, I'm also out of propane, so I either need to find a propane tank or another propane torch if I want another metal pole gate. 548 was a looting run for a propane tank. Who'd have guessed? I actually found a half full one pretty early on, but I'm greedy and that's not enough for me, so. I spent the entire day bouncing around from garage to garage looking for anything else and actually ended up leveling my spear skill, so there's that. Nothing really exciting happened after that. I found a cordless drill, which is good for scrap weapons, but 
Other than that, I didn't find anything useful, aside from more crafting materials. On 549, I organized my pile of shit from yesterday into its designated areas, and then spent some time crafting another metal spear. After that, I went out and got to work clearing out the area from some zombies that had won. My favorite things about West Point over Riverside is that you're never really safe. Even when you clear out an area, another small horde is going to come wandering in and it just keeps the combat flowing. In 550, I went out to loot the police station and found a shit ton of ammo and some really cool guns. After killing a few zombies in the area, I decided to head back to base to drop everything off. When I tried to pull a sick ass drift and slammed into a streetlight, totaling the Mustang. F's in the chat for that endeavor, but luckily, I walked away from it with no injuries. Starting off day 551, I headed back to the police station to pick up the police cruiser, only to realize I never brought a screwdriver, a battery, or a gas can to actually leave with the car. So I walked all the way back to base and grabbed said materials before heading out a second time. Really didn't think this would be an all day affair, but here we are. Decided that I wanted to build off 551 and spend today working on the police cruiser. I had three Mustangs in my vicinity, two of which were in the garage. The process was pretty simple. I'd take the best parts of the other two cars and put them on the police cruiser just like I did with the car in Riverside last episode. But unlike Riverside, I was going to try and take care of this car this time. 553 was more working on the police cruiser. I added the chain to the wheel for protection, installed a better battery, and all I needed was a repaired engine, which I took care of by taking engine parts from the other two cars in the area. Really going forward, I just have to grab some whenever I passed another car. What time I had left in the day, I organized my gun room and decorated the kitchen some more to give it a more survivalist feel. Day 554 was pretty combat heavy. I went out to the houses above the school and started working my way through each of them, clearing out a lot of the zombies in the area. Goal at this point is to secure a wide perimeter around the school so that I can really get to skill grinding in part 7. And I know that seems far away, but these days fly by. By 55 was much the same. The only real difference with today was that I grabbed a propane torch and just started disassembling everything I came across to gather more metal sheets so that I could throw some armor on the police cruiser. Other than that, it was more looting and killing the occasional one or two zombies that I'd stumble in. I spent 556 working on thinning out the zombies above me and leveled my axe skill, which I decided I was just going to grind for a while since I keep flipping between combat skills and it's driving me nuts. Day 557, I decided to go find engine parts for my car. Nothing really interesting happened today aside from tripping a house alarm at around 6 in the morning. At least it wasn't snowing though, right? It's going to be a rough 2-3 to three months in the winter, but at least it's not like in Louisville where I was living like I was on a skid row or some shit. Five fifty eight was pretty quiet. Spent a lot of the day building more protection for the police cruiser. Shocker. And after that, just organized the base a little bit more and removed some extra sections that I didn't like looking at. Mainly the stall doors in my bedroom and other shit like that. Five fifty nine, I decided to check out the area to my immediate left. Worst part of my situation is that I'm fat as shit again and get exhausted if I have to swing an axe more than three times an hour. So it basically became, how many zombies can I kill before I have to dive back into a car and drive around for two hours, rinse and repeat. In the afternoon, while looting some of the buildings I'd cleared around, I found an unread dance and finally found Metalworking 5. Favorite thing about this is it probably means nothing to you guys, but this was seriously the highlight of the episode for me. Anyway, I spent the next two days reading Volume 5. In between reading sessions, I walked down to the kitchen and found that a zombie broke through the back door, so that was going to need to be fixed at some point. After wrapping up reading on the second day, I went down and spent the day re-fortifying the garage entrance, rebuilt a metal pole gate, added the door back to the back entrance, and fixed the wall that the zombie had busted through like the goddamn Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. Day 562 was another combat heavy day. Drove around some of the neighborhood areas with the siren on to pull over some pockets of zombies and generally just spent the day working through anything that came over to me. This was actually a really enjoyable day for me. 
I always love these kind of combat days where the goal is to just fight. No tight area to fight in or get stuck in, just a road, escape plan with the running car behind me, and any zombie that I wanted to take a swing at. I spent the morning of 563 working on my electrical skill by disassembling all the shit I'd accumulated so far. After all of that, and crafting a bunch of ham radios and disassembling them, I still didn't even get a level out of it. So, I spent the rest of the day messing around with scrap weapons, working on crafting a gun and a bunch of ammo to test out. I woke up on 564 with a nasty cold. Glad to see we've come full circle from the LV. Decided to move my bed into the kitchen where the antique stove was located and would stay there temporarily until my cold went away. Which luckily I was able to remove the sickness relatively quickly in one day. Decided to keep my bed down here at least for the next month or two to keep myself from freezing, catching another cold while I slept. Stockpiled the oven with close to 70 hours of fuel and could always add more pretty easily by cutting down trees in the surrounding area. In 565, I decided to head out to the edge of West Point, the three houses by the lake, which has become an incredibly popular destination for players to make their bases in both single player and multiplayer. The goal with this was to spend my time up here over the next few days, just assembling the gated fences to reach metalworking level 10. 567, I hit metalworking 9, and on 568, I finished the fencing in the area, and was stupid enough to try to disassemble the fencing around some houses by the docks. Blared the car horn and took care of any zombies in the area before realizing I couldn't disassemble any of the fencing. But at least I got some kills out of this though. I also found a trailer on the way back, so I scooped that up as well before making my way back to the school. On 570, Merry Christmas, I decided to head on back to Twiggy's. Not to hang out there like some poor divorced stepdad, but actually to loot the gun store like some poor divorced stepdad. I figured this would be a good excuse to grind out some maintenance, so I grabbed a metal bar and got to work beating down the door, which took almost the entire day, only for me to be greeted with the metal gates that can't be broken down from this end. I need to break the gates around the windows if I wanted to get in. Or so I thought. And after spending the night in the car, I woke up and got to work, only to realize I wasn't making any progress. So, I decided to head on back to base. When I was passing the city center, I noticed a metal fence section that I could disassemble. So, following the same method as before, I blasted the horn and shouted to pull in all nearby zombies, and after they were taken care of, I got to work. After a few hours, I went to check the neighboring building, only to find it full of metal chairs that I could easily disassemble. As I was speeding through it, I got hit with one of the biggest jump scares I've ever gotten in this game. A humble reminder to not go max speed when in the middle of a fucking city. 
After getting back to my base that night, I realized that I had left the stove on for the last two days and had almost no fuel left in it. Whoops. I spent all of 572 working on stocking the stove full of logs. Basically, what I would do was cut down a shit ton of trees, then grab the trailer and load it up. Once the trailer was full, I'd take all the logs back to base and add them to the antique oven as fuel. In 573, I set back out to go finish my metalworking skill, and only after clearing out more zombies did I realize that I forgot my propane torch back at base. After retrieving the torch, I got to work. Fortunately, by the time I wrapped up the chairs, I was still about 2000 XP short of level 10, and make matters worse, the fucking blizzard outside. Lovely. Obviously, it's damn near impossible to see in these conditions, though the drive back was based almost entirely off of muscle memory and the fact that there were no trees in front of me. It was still an absolute shit show of a blizzard outside on 574, so I decided to do some menial tasks around the base, starting with beating the dog shit out of the doors with a metal bar to work on maintenance some more. I also filled up all my water bottles and set them out around the kitchen. On 575, the snow had finally stopped, at least for now. But it was a nice tropical 17 degrees outside, so I didn't want to risk leaving early anymore. After waiting in the base for a few hours while it warmed up, I headed back out to work on more metalworking. Finally maxed it out at around 6pm that day. Check another one off the list. 576, I decided I was going to round out my next long blade level since it was the closest. That being said, close is a subjective term here. You're about to watch every major combat situation I was in throughout the day that took for me to get to 100 XP into my long blade. Now that that was settled and taken care of, I could focus on other things, like patching a hole in the base that some zombies made. Decided I was going to start airlocking my base since there seemed to be a trend of zombies breaking in at this point. Spent the entire day and the next several days building out various airlocks and passageways around the school. In 580 and 581, I did a ton of prep work for my next mini project. Nothing to really show besides a lot of driving and moving materials around, so we'll just keep it moving. 582, I put in a ton of work at the town hall, removing both sets of stairs, building escape ladders in the second floor. I also began destroying most of the flooring on the second floor with the goal of having one main lane. A lot of you can see where I'm going with this. 
On 583, I finished my build and got to gathering a pretty substantial horde. Probably could have put in some more effort into building out the second floor and removing more junk, but fuck it, this is what we're going with. I didn't want to risk anything yet because it was already late afternoon, and I didn't have a generator or flashlights or anything there, and a fall would kill me, so I decided to head back for the day. I spent the morning of 584 gathering a massive horde before leading them into the first floor of the town hall. and climbing up to the second floor before spending the next several hours walking back and forth to boost sneaking and lightfooted. This is basically a more ghetto version of the setup I had in Riverside last episode. I slept on the second floor using a chair in one of the offices I had access to, and basically just spent days 585 and 586 click walking and holding shift to crouch sneak back and forth across the second floor. In 586, I finally leveled up my lightfooted and sneaking. Once. Each. This sucks. After getting down, I made a quick look around to see that the entire horde had basically spread itself out into the city. I was able to make it back to base, where I decided to just reset my sleep cycle to get back on track for the next day. Next on my list was my electrical skill. I needed a break from the failed shit show, and this was really the escape I needed. Of course, I didn't have enough junk at my base to level up, so I went with the tried and true method of going door to door and disassembling all the TVs and then having watches off dead zombies and finally leveling up at around 2 p.m. All right, it's time to get the car back. I grabbed my three best axes and made my way into the city center, where I started working my way through pockets of zombies. After the entire day, I finally made it back to my police car and headed back to base. Before drifting into a tree and trashing the end. Every time. Every time. I spent the entirety of 589 running around to every car I could find and taking all the engine parts. By the end of the day, I'd gotten around 90 engine parts to completely fix the police car. And on day 590, I went out and fixed the windshield and the hood. Oh, and I also found a better trailer with double the space as my first one. My goal over these last 10 days or so was to wrap up any skills that were close to being leveled up, which basically meant fishing and reloading. I know, such joyous and content heavy skills. Now, being the dumbass that I am, I'd left the sledgehammer on the second floor of the town hall, and the zombies had destroyed my sheet rope to get me up there. Luckily, there were enough planks and debris scattered that I could build up some stairs, only one problem. I didn't have a hammer or nails on So I decided to hit up the hardware store to see if I had missed anything, the initial looting. And after finding nothing of use, I decided to head back down to the warehouses. Needless to say, I was expecting a lot of zombies in the area since I pulled a bunch of them from the outskirts over here and figured a lot would end up getting caught up in the area. Luckily, I was able to find a hammer after moving on from the self-storage area and into the larger warehouse. After looting the rest of the warehouse, I walked out the front door directly into two small hordes, trying to dump as much shit into the trailer as I could before having to dip out. I lost them in the self-storage, was able to circle back to the trailer, drop off my gear, and turn back to take on the hordes.
By around 4.30, I was exhausted and still hadn't even built a set of stairs to reach the sledgehammer. I decided to cut my losses on the day and head back to base. Zombies weren't going anywhere. Well, I mean, technically they are, but fuck off. But I had a hammer now. Planks were there. I could scoop up nails and head back out tomorrow to get my shit. After grabbing the sledgehammer the next morning, I made my way to the gun store. I'm sure there's been a ton of you screaming at the video asking why I haven't gone here yet. But hey, better late than never, right? Anyways, I went through looting in a couple stages. First sweep through, I grabbed any boxes of ammo and mags that I could use, as well as any guns that looked cool to me or that I haven't tried before. Some hidden gems here were things like an M32 grenade launcher. We're gonna have some fun with that. An AK-12, an AK-74N, and an M1 Garand, which I was super excited to try out. If you don't know, just like any other white American male, I'm a huge fan of World War II history. The second phase of looting consisted of me heading up the back room and grabbing any clothing that would be of use or that looked cool. Things like chest rigs, night vision goggles, helmet visors, gas masks, really anything that would get me back up to that 100% protection on my gear. Last sweep through consisted of grabbing every mag from all of the guns I was leaving behind. I found an American 180 LMG with a 100 round mag, which sounds badass, right? Until you realize it holds 22 LR rounds, and you deal more damage from a griddle pan than you would with 10 bullets from this thing. So I decided to take the drum mag and some ammo, but leave the gun since it literally serves no purpose to me. Spent the rest of the day back at base just moving shit from my trailer into the gun room. 593 was pretty quiet. Spent the morning working on the Mustang some more and fixing up the trailer by repairing the trunk lid and replacing the tires and fixing the suspension. This took way longer than I thought it would because I'm an idiot and don't bother to check if something is standard, sport, or heavy duty before lugging it all the way back to the garage to try out. At some point, I just said fuck it and headed back into the city where I spent some time just scrapping any car I could get my hands on for some extra parts. I really didn't expect this to take an entire day, but if that's what it's going to take to get a kitted trailer with an extra 500 storage space, this was beyond worth it. In 594, I decided to head back out into the city to loot the Gigamart to stock up on food. I hadn't been there since grabbing a few items early on in the playthrough, which would still be relatively unlooted, which would save me a ton of time and energy of having to farm and maintain crops again. Even though I do really enjoy farming in this game, it's a pain in the ass to have to manage water in areas where you don't have a well. This is one of the biggest hauls I've ever done mainly because I had a trailer and could afford to carry this much stuff at one time. I also grabbed a ton of cooking and baking materials because I wanted to focus more on creating meals in the game, which isn't something I've ever really done before. Don't get me wrong, I've done a lot of cooking like making soup and stews and all of that, but there's some recipes in the game that require flour, cooking oil, and all that fun stuff that I've always just kind of avoided, but I think would probably be pretty cool to check out. By this point, my base is just a hodgepodge of piles of shit just strewn all over the place. So I spent the next few days just cleaning up around the base and redecorating a lot of the room. Spent all of 595 working on the kitchen. 596 was spent on the armory, specifically my gun room. I took all the ammo off the desk and sorted them by most used and least used. After that, I went through the ammo canisters and emptied them out before destroying them in the garbage cans. Not sure why, but I just really don't like how they look. Nothing wrong with the design or anything, I'm just not a fan of them personally. The finished product wasn't much, and definitely still needed some more work to make it pretty, but I was happy with the results. Days 597 through 599 were spent tackling the garage. This was going to be a pain in the ass, so I tried my best to at least make it passable for now. First thing I did was pile everything up. It was on the ground, it was going into one massive pile for now that I'd sort out later. After that, I moved both trailers and the spare car out into the parking lot so that I had more space to work with. Now that that was taken care of, I went through the pile for any items that shouldn't be in the garage. Things like sticks, radios, axes, anything like that. Moved all of those to the correct locations. Next up was to organize the pile into smaller piles based on type. Made piles for standard, heavy duty, and sport to keep things organized. Then they'd each get their own crate at some point, but I didn't have the materials to make that happen right now. Moved anything related to Ford or Jeep upgrades in the corner by the crate, and then determined how I wanted the layout to be. So I'd keep the police cruiser in the corner to the left of the stairs, then line the standard or heavy cars up on the right side by the stairs. I'd park the trailers up against the boarded up cafeteria and leave the middle space open for accessibility. 599, I built out another crate and three shelving units to keep everything nice and organized. After that wrapped up, I moved the trailers back into the garage, decided to push the spare Mustang to the far end of the parking lot so that it was out of the way, but still relatively nearby in case I needed it for any reason. 
let's be real. There's going to be some reasons. Here we are. Day 600. West Point has been full of excitement so far, and I've been having an absolute blast here. I feel like I've done so much in the 100 days that I've been here, and there's still a ton more to do. There's hordes everywhere that I need to clear out. There's base upgrades I still want to make. There's so many POIs that I still haven't even hit yet. There's some skills I still need to level, but I'm sure we'll get around to all of that in the next 100 days. Until next time, thanks for stopping by. Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? Welcome to part 7 of the 1000 Day Series. I really meant for this to be more of a grinding episode, but as you'll see pretty early on, plans never seem to go as intended. For the sake of keeping this intro around 30 seconds, I'm going to rapid fire some plugs and then we can get the ball rolling. I have a Discord that you should totally join. Once you're there, you can join my PZ server where we have a decent chunk of the community that likes to spend a lot of their time. I'm sure you've seen me there if you've caught any of the streams. I also have a Patreon and YouTube memberships now, so if you like what I do and want to support the channel, that's the best way to do so. Links for all of these are down in the description below, but let's get into the video. Hey you guys, post-editing preds here. I'm sure you've noticed by now, but this video ends on day 701 instead of 700. That's because I actually overlapped my script on day 693, meaning that for the last 7 days or so, I'm actually one day behind on my audio. Basically, I refer to day 701 as day 700 in this episode does nothing for the outcome of the video or the content that actually takes place in the video, but just something worth noting. But anyway, let's keep it moving. Kicking things off, I spent 601 and 602 just working on tailoring. I know, just what you all want to see so early on in the episode, and don't worry, because immediately after that, I spent the next 7 days cycling between sprinting and nimble. Basically, every morning I would wake up and reenact scenes from the Blair Witch Project until around 11 or noon when I'd switch gears and either run sprints in the hallways or outside on the rooftop. Once I was exerted, I'd rest until I recovered, and then I'd do 60 minutes of sit-ups before ending my day doing more nimble training. I did this from days 6.03 to 6.10. Now, I already know some of you are panicking because we're 10 days in, and we're really only a few minutes into the episode. This is going to be a little different episode than I normally do. Now, don't freak out. It's still going to follow the normal format, and there's still going to be action and complaining and long-winded rants about nothing, and... It's going to be a much higher focus on grinding skills, though. That being said, this is probably the most dramatic episode in the entire series, and also features the most amount of traveling out of any other episode, so just hang in there, the cool things are coming. The only thing out of the ordinary in these first 10 days was that on day 605, I heard a banging noise and noticed that a zombie had broken in through the back door. It took a while for me to realize that I had never sealed a window behind the stairs, which was letting zombies in through the garage and into my base. Looking at my skills on 611 and seeing no progress in sprinting or my nimble skill was pretty depressing. But I do see a couple that I think we'll be able to knock out or at least make significant improvements on. Tailoring would be a breeze, maybe a week of grinding away at it or just at the end of every day spend a few hours and then eventually I'd be there. Cooking would be the easiest of the skills since I could either get there passively through making soup or I could actually spend some time making food with all the items I'd collected last episode. Mechanics was another one that, while a little far away, I think I could chunk away at if I found any other cool vehicles to add to the collection with. Moving over to combat, aiming and reloading would without a doubt be the easiest skills. I was already almost level 10 aiming and was over halfway for reloading which should be super quick to wrap up. My big issues were with melee weapons. I'd been way too inconsistent over the last year or so with just grabbing whatever weapons I had available to me and throwing some levels into each, with Long Blunt and Long Blade carrying the majority of the workload. I spent a lot of the last episode working on my axe skills, so it would really be up to choice here. I started off 611 taking inventory of my weapons. I had about 6 axes, 13 Long Blunt, 13 Short Blunt, and around 30 Short Blade. 3 Long Blade, and Spear I really didn't count because no matter what I can always just make more. But for the sake of it, 21 Spears. When looking at it this way, I had most XP in Long Blunt, and about equal, literally within one XP point of each other, would be Short Blunt and Short Blade. Now, here's why numbers aren't super important in any of this. My maintenance skill levels regardless of the weapon type, and Long Blunt, unlike Blades, have no weapons that have 1-2 hit kills. For example, my Katana is a 1-shot kill and Machetes are 2-shot kill unless exerted. Because of that, I decided that I would primarily focus on my Long Blade skilling with the primary weapons being my Machetes and the Katana. Figured today would be a good day to get started on this, so I grabbed my weapons, threw a shotgun on my back, and headed off to the elementary school. Where I subsequently stole the floor mats and their precious artwork. When I was leaving the school, I found a Mustang and was probably the best condition I've ever found one in. I hotwired it and decided to tow the police cruiser behind me. 
When I got back to base, I spent time decorating before ending the day playing Kaboom, the world's greatest arcade game. On 612, I was getting an early start to the day, trying my best to do super simple math when I leveled up my tailoring. So, naturally, I spent 612 reading the final tailoring book. Since it was early enough, I was actually able to just chug away at it and finish around 9pm. So, here's a tip. For people with a slow reader tray, it takes around 17 hours in game to read the mastery books. After spending the first 12 days doing absolutely nothing exciting, I decided to head out to the bridge to pull in some more zombies. The goal wasn't just combat though, I actually wanted to gather enough tailoring materials to pound through the final levels and move on to the next skill. This was a pretty basic setup, I'd turn on the siren and spam Q to gather any zombies in the area, and then whip out the katana and one shot anything in swinging distance. Tried to keep the zombies in piles so that I could go through after and just mass gather ripped sheets and leather strips. I'll let a couple of these scenes play out since I'm sure a lot of you are starving for some action at this point, so here you go. Six fourteen was spent working on reloading. It was snowing out and had a massive wind chill, and I didn't feel like running around in that ship, so I chose to spend it at the base reloading my five five six mags. Six fifteen was a heavy looting day. Basically, what I do was drive down the road, lay on the horn, clear out the zombies, and then go building to building, grabbing anything that I felt like might be useful, which ended up really just being a bunch of canned goods. Got a couple more pieces for the jeep upgrades, but my big issue was that I didn't have a jeep to put any of this shit on. So, it was a little strange to me that I was finding Mustangs, but not Jeeps or motorcycles or anything like that, but it is what it is to be honest. On 616, I decided to test out some nail bombs. They're basically pipe bombs, but without the explosion and fire, but with all the damage. It seemed like they'd be pretty cool to use in a tight situation, and I was chucking them out at Mach 5. At one point, I threw in so hard it phased through a house and disappeared into another dimension, so there's that. Spent the morning of 617 just walking through the side neighborhood to the north. I was looking for a fight, but really didn't find much here, and it turned out to be more of a looting run. By early afternoon, I was over it and decided to just spend the rest of the day doing some more tailoring. 618 was another grind day. The morning was focused on reloading before I realized I wasn't getting anywhere with it, and switched back to tailoring. Finally capped off level 9, and now I can say we're on the home stretch. When I was thinking of what I wanted to do this episode, I found myself stuck on the idea that I had to stay here another 100 days. I think that has been the big trend where I feel the need to stay in a city once I get there, and that's just not the case. I really wanted to branch out and go to a place that a lot of people know about, but t rarely tend to visit. Since it's been almost two years in game, it'd be a difficult trek to get there, so I decided I'd need to hit Nimble level 4 before attempting that, just due to the amount of zombies that would be there and really just the sheer difficulty to get to this location. Alright. I've been sitting here for like two hours now and I'm losing my mind. This is taking forever and I haven't even gone up 100 XP yet. For content's sake, I'm gonna put this on the back burner for now and just say fuck it. I remembered I had some pretty high powered weapons from last episode and figured I would just have to use those if I got in trouble. 621 was absolutely devastating. I've never had this happen to me before. I woke up at 4.30 very confused because I normally sleep in much longer than that. Walked out into the hallway to see the entire school up in flames. I immediately went to, did I leave the oven on? Did I accidentally hit something? Did a zombie that's on fire walk over and enter the school somehow? No, 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 no. The answer was much simpler than that. The only reasoning I could think of was the generator on the second floor must have went up in flames at some point and started the fire that I couldn't contain. Luckily, the airlocks would buy me some time, so I sprung to action, grabbing anything that I could salvage. My workshop was completely gone. All of my resources, materials, metal, nails, various tools, gone. All my magazines and most of my guns, gone. I was able to salvage a decent amount of ammo and a few guns including the grenade launcher, but anything in the cabinets was lost. 
Over 50 magazines belonging to various guns, over 10,000 rounds of ammo either boxed or shelled. I did manage to grab most of my melee weapons and make my way to the kitchen where I could grab a lot of the food, but everything else was gone. And the fire was spreading. I loaded up the trailer and hopped in my car as the fire spread to the right side of the school. This base was completely uninhabitable at this point and I was forced to evacuate into the unknown. Without really having an idea of where to go, I found myself at the spiffos that I had based at on my journey to Riverside back in part 5. Once again, this would be my safe haven for the night. I wasn't really sure where I should go. This was kind of a giant mindfuck to me. This threw off all my plans and objectives that I would wanted to accomplish this episode. But looking at the positives, I was still alive. I had food, water, guns, and a shit ton of ammo with me. Still had a Mustang and a large trailer. I could have stayed in West Point and relocated, but after losing the base, West Point was the last place I really wanted to be. Actually, I decided I'd go the furthest place I could think of from West Point. That would still be viable. At around 9.10 that morning, I hit a zombie and spung out the Mustang, crashing it into a tree. I really just can't catch a break right now. I arrived in March Ridge early in the afternoon and drove out to the northwest side of the city to establish some type of foothold. By evening, I'd cleared out the cell enough that I felt comfortable to set up shop in a house at the end of the road. Tomorrow would be absolute chaos, and I wanted to be fully prepared for it. On the morning of 623, I began by making my way down one of the main roads, screaming for any zombies in the vicinity to wander in front of me before being sliced down. I made it to the community center around 9.30 and decided to switch over to the SCAR. I probably looked like an absolute maniac to the random NPC sitting in his house watching this all unfold, but since there is no random NPC sitting here watching, I figured someone ought to see it, so here you guys go.
Days 624 and 625 were much the same. I got an early start on the day and spent most of my time grouping up larger hordes before taking them on. Had an injured hand, so the katana didn't swing nearly as fast, but it still got the job done for the most part. As always, words probably aren't going to do it justice, so here's some more clips of the carnage that unfolded on my second and third days back in March Ridge. Day 626 was going to be my base building day. As if there was any other rational choice, I decided to base up in the community center. But I had no nails and no saw, so I had a checklist. Time to go shopping. As far as I know, there are no warehouses in March Ridge. I'd honestly be surprised if there were any garages in March Ridge. But I do know there are some warehouses off the highway that I visited back in part two, so that's where I headed. I actually was able to find a saw and a box of nails at one of the trucks in the middle of the road. This was one of the few times in this playthrough that I was actually really picky about what I found at the warehouse. Tried to keep it to only items that I needed at this current point in time. When it was time to leave, I couldn't resist getting out of the car and clearing out a horde that had grouped up on the highway. Fortunately, my katana did break in the process, and it was a really bittersweet moment having to say goodbye to a weapon that I had obtained all the way back in part 3. I knew it was coming eventually, so we just gotta keep it moving. Anyway. Back at the community center, I started laying a framework for choke points similar to how I did in the school in West Point. Base would be primarily on the second floor, but I still wanted to keep the ground floor secure as well. 627 was more framework on the ground floor. The goal was to block off the stairs so that I could move around the second floor relatively safely without zombies breaking in. 628 was a continuation of the previous day, just cutting down more trees and stockpiling planks. Nothing really happened today. It was relatively quiet aside from the occasional zombie that came walking over whenever I was grabbing planks, but other than that, we can keep it moving. On 629, I ran out of nails while building out the walls in the community center. Normally, I'd go back out to the warehouses, but it was already close to 3 p.m. and I was completely exhausted, so I decided to head back to the house that I had based out of when I first got here. On the morning of day 6.30, I went back out to the warehouses to check for any scraps and found a sledgehammer in one of the crates, which was a huge win since mine was lost in the fire. I didn't really find much else there though. Got a couple more boxes of nails and a pack of cabbage seeds, but that was about it. 
Instead of leaving and heading back to base, I decided to once again go to war with the army of zombies hanging out around the highway. When I got back to March Ridge, I spent the rest of the day disassembling doors at various houses around to gather hinges and door handles for the base. 631 was spent on the interior of the base. I brought up and repaired the generator, so I finally had power again, which was nice. After that, I cleared out one of the side classrooms to turn it into a big storage room. It still needed to be built out more, obviously, but not a bad start. At 632, I grabbed a bed from one of the houses and started building out my bedroom in one of the vacant rooms. I also grabbed a sledgehammer and destroyed most of the glass framing that was already broken and then rebuilt the walls. This place was slowly becoming more like home every day. On 633, I took all the inventory out of the trailer and moved it into the new storage room. From there, I started to organize items into crates, and again, this would definitely need to be cleaned up, but a good starting point nonetheless. I spent the next few days setting up and organizing various rooms in my new home. The room across from my bedroom would become my new armory. I had set up a pretty bare bones storage room for my odds and ends, and I already had a kitchen built out, but I wanted to do something with the room section as well. I had a lot of decorating to get done, and as usual, very few creative ideas as how to make the base a spectacle. Cleanup was tedious and really more of a chore than base decoration, but I'd never been much of a decorator to begin with. 636 was a looting run to some of the houses in the southwest for me. I was more so looking for decorative items like flags, maps, anything that stood out to me, along with any useful items like cooking pots and stuff like that. On the morning of 637, I assessed the damage done to my car. The hood was at zero, the windshield was gone, and the engine was completely shot. Not too bad, if I had to say so myself. I had some tuning gear and could disassemble items nearby to gather some protection. Tires were in bad shape, but I've dealt with worse. Suspensions were in good condition and the brakes were fine for the most part. Everything is fixable, is what I'm trying to say. Really just came down to what was a necessity and what could be delayed for now. After messing around with a couple of vehicles in the area, I realized Mustangs may not be the play. There are more heavy duty parts around that I could use and much more accessible variety. So I chose a mail truck as my next primary. It may not be as flashy, but it'd definitely get the job done, at least for now. On 638, I went back out to the warehouses for the third time this episode. This time, however, it was for all the sandbags that were still sitting there. All in all, when I left the warehouse for what I hoped would be the final time, I had around 90 sandbags in my trailer that I would use to decorate the base a little bit more. 639 was spent placing all of those sandbags in the walkway up to the community center, more of a bona fide driveway. Nothing special happened today since this took up so much time, but with time I did have left, I managed to reload my magazines and take inventory on my gear. I spent 640 chopping down more trees to gather planks for some water catchers. The plan would be to start a small garden on the rooftop of the school. Really the entire day was spent gathering planks and then going to nearby shops for garbage bags. I was also overweight again, so if you're wondering why I'm always starving, it's because I belong in that show, my 600 pound life. 641 was the start of adding an expansion out of the base. I built out a ton of the framing on the second floor roof and added a set of stairs leading up to the third story. 642 was much of a continuation from the previous day. While well, cutting some trees down, I came across what must have been a former military pilot. Just thought that was super cool to see him all geared up and still walking around, so I gave him a proper ending with some dignity. 643 was almost entirely spent just moving logs and planks from the trailer back onto the second floor. After that was taken care of, I began building out the walls of the expansion before running out of nails that night. 
Wasn't really sure where to find nails in March Ridge, so I decided to shift focus and began cleaning out the area. In the morning of 644, I geared up and made my way out to the southwestern zone and began clearing zombies door by door. There weren't any large hordes out there like there were on the entrance to March Ridge or my first few days here, though I'm sure I'd run into a couple eventually. This was really pretty easy work though. Zombies really are no match for a fully kitted scar and a 357 Magnum. Here's what the first day looked like. Six forty five and six forty six were more or less the same. Much less fighting than I was expecting, but I did find an ATV and a fuel tanker, which would be great additions if I could fix them up and bring them back. I started using noisemakers to pull zombies in, but even when I used them, only a handful would show up. Either I had cleaned out the majority, or they'd roamed out of the city. I spent 647 out by the entrance to March Ridge just cutting down hordes that I hadn't decided to leave yet. On my way back, I walked back through one of the neighborhoods and did some more exploring. I also found another generator that I could hook up by the gas station as well as two boxes of nails to help me finish off the expansion. All in all, a pretty good day. 648 was spent finishing up the walls for the expansion room. Building out the roof would require more planks and I really just didn't feel like spending more time on that right now. I used the rest of my planks to get a start on it, but I really didn't have a use for the room yet that wouldn't require more planks, so I'm moving on from that for now. On day 649, I went back out to the southwestern section of March Ridge with the goal of grabbing the fuel tanker and the ATV. Fuel tanker was a breeze, but I found out the hard way that you can't tow an ATV, or at least connect it to a heavy duty vehicle, which sucked. Luckily, it only needed gas and a charged battery. Filled the fuel tank and brought the battery back to base with me to charge up before heading back out on foot to retrieve my new favorite toy. At least, that was the plan anyway. By the time I got the battery fully charged, it was too late and I was too tired to do anything. I spent the morning of 6.50 actually retrieving the ATV. After I got it back to base, I spent some time fixing up the mail truck. The hood and trunk were badly damaged and the windshield wasn't much better. Luckily, both the trunk and hood were fixable with two metal sheets, and there were a ton of cars that I could pull the windshields off of. By this point, it had started snowing, which ruined the original plans I had for the day, so I decided to put in some work on tailoring since I had nothing better to do. 
By the time I ran out of thread, I looked to be almost halfway through level 10. Something to keep in the back of my mind whenever I decided to fuck around with another horde. Starting off 651 on a positive note, I leveled up my reloading skill first thing in the morning. Now on a gross, terrible, shitty note, it was snowing outside. Again. Decided to check out the dorms, had another incredibly close call when I turned the corner too fast and walked right into a horde. Luckily, I was able to walk away with only severe trauma and PTSD, so nothing too important. Now by early afternoon, I'd only been on the ground floor, but I had gathered over a hundred units of thread, which has really always been the end goal, hasn't it? When I got back to base, I spent the rest of the day grinding out the rest of tailoring. 652 picked up right where I left off. That was until I ran out of thread again. Decided to head back out and check out the second floor of the dorms where I found an arcade machine and a pinball machine. So pretty big win for the day. 653 was one of the first sunny days we've had in months and I was determined to take advantage of it. The only issue I ran into today was that I had absolutely no idea what I did with my cowboy hat. Regardless of that, I decided to spend the day foraging. I know, I know. Shocking. By the end of the day, I had made some small progress and gathered a solid three chipped stones. Oh, I was also able to gather some more thread from some of the zombies hanging around by the fencing, which I used to wrap up tailoring on 654. After patching all of my current gear with leather strips for that boosted protection, I grabbed the generator, all my gas cans, and the fuel tanker and headed on over to the gas station down the road. This took forever because of how much fuel the tanker can actually hold, but hey, I'm not complaining. It was 100% worth it to have a tanker with enough fuel to fully operate my base and any car I came across. Now all I needed to do was get nimble level 4. This took so damn long. Kept track of all the XP for this and started with 679 at 310 AM and at 5 PM I had gained around 25 XP. It was something that I really wanted to knock out before continuing my mission that I'd planned all the way back in West Point. So I continued on in the morning of 656 until finally leveling up early in the evening. On the morning of 6.57, I hopped in the mail truck and headed west. There was a location out this way that I hadn't been to yet, hidden way off the road deep in the forest. It's a pain in the ass to get here without the overgrowth, but now that nature has started reclaiming the old dirt roads, it would be impossible to proceed by car. The amount of zombies in the highway made me anxious since we were still driving out there and I had already destroyed my windshield. Knew that I was by Rosewood, so zombies could have wandered over, but it still made me uneasy thinking about how bad the woods could be. After turning off the highway, and Make them away downtown. I finally reached the start of the dirt road. Since my engine was already failing, I didn't want to risk being stranded due to a rogue tree popping out of nowhere, so I turned the mail truck around and decided to park it at the end of the trail. I had food and water in the trailer, but I just had to travel light, so I grabbed a couple cans of tuna and a few water bottles before trekking into the forest. I was actually able to travel a few hours undetected until I came across my first group of zombies. From there, it only got more difficult. I encountered a horde a little later on, and after I fired the chambered round of my pistol, I was immediately filled with regret. Zombies came from all directions, and it felt like the more I shot, the more that showed up. By the time the horde was taken care of, I was tired, exerted, and it was getting dark. Still had a ways to go to get to the secret military base, and I knew there'd be way more zombies hanging out there than I had just taken on in the woods. 
encountered my second horde around 8.30 and decided it would be best to fight through it rather than try to go around them. Figured I'd have to go through them eventually since there need to be a return journey and there's only one pathway back out. It was completely dark by this point and I wasn't in a fantastic position. As I continued my journey, I kept finding myself pondering over two important questions. One, was this even going to be worth it? And two, why didn't I just throw a gender reveal party and clear the path the easy way? I was also kicking myself for not bringing a flashlight. It was so fucking difficult to find the pathway in the darkness. Eventually, with a lot of guessing, I was able to find the paved path leading up to the military base. I was bringing some friends with me, so I just had to hope I wouldn't accidentally sandwich myself between two hordes here. I arrived at the base's parking lot around 1am, bringing a pretty sizable horde with me. This would be my best chance to clear out most of the zombies in the area, so I took full advantage of it. By around 5 a.m., I had cleared out most of the horde that had followed me in, and I'd also set up a campfire and fueled it up with rags. I'd snatched some matches off of a body back in the woods and could use that to light a fire, burning down the forest if I needed to, or wanted to, but it was definitely going to be one of those two. I was also able to get into a storage room after entering the base, where I barricaded the door and fell asleep on the ground. It'd be incredibly stupid of me to try and clear out a base while exerted and tired, especially since I was running low on ammo. First thing I noticed while looting was that this place was absolutely loaded with gear to make your own bullets. Primer and projectiles everywhere. If only I'd been able to save all that gunpowder I left in the workshop in West Point, I'd be on top of the world right now. I managed to find an M16, which I traded out my scar for, since it was much nicer condition and it didn't risk any jams. I decided on a more stealthy approach since the last thing I wanted to do was get stuck in a closed corridor after alerting every zombie within a 10 mile radius. Decided to spend the night in the weapons room which had three doors separating me from stragglers that might have spotted me. When I was coming back from securing the immediate area, I scared the shit out of myself when I walked directly into a zombie and tripped over it, scratching myself in the leg. 659 was all about loot. After some exploring, I was forced to shoot my pistol which pulled a ton of nearby zombies.
spent a lot of the day constantly dealing with zombies that would wander on over. As the looting progressed, I'd start making a pile by the entrance so that I could have all my shit in one pile instead of carrying it around with me until I passed out. Get it all together and put it in a backpack. All your shit so it's together. By mid-afternoon, I was tired again and found a hospital wing to hide in while I recovered. When I woke up early the next morning, I decided that it was going to be a death sentence if I tried to walk around in this darkness, and chose to wait in a storage closet until mid-morning, which apparently makes you incredibly depressed. At least I'm safe inside my mind. As shocking as it is to say, nothing too crazy really happened today. I followed the fence path outside the gate, which just looped me back around to the gates. And after that, I did some more exploring and found the second floor room which had two ham radios active and giving me weather updates because apparently even though we're almost two years into the apocalypse, the fucking weatherman is still committed to his job. I was done with the military base by around noon that day but didn't want to risk heading out and hitting nightfall before making it to my car, not including the drive back. Instead, I scavenged some books and magazines to cure my boredom and depression and headed back to the weapons locker to spend the rest of the day there. I woke up around 1 o'clock and noticed I was nauseous. Must have been all the bodies piled up around the room I was in. Didn't really matter though, I was getting out of here. I grabbed my loot pile and made my way outside where I found a small horde waiting around the campfire I just made. I was able to loop them around and eventually start a fire letting them walk over it and catch fire. The return journey started with pretty high stakes. I became excessively exerted relatively quickly and was barely out walking the zombies on fire behind me. Eventually, I was able to lose the majority of them and found a spot in the open field to rest. Once I was no longer exerted, the walk back to the truck was really simple. I made it back to the base that evening and dropped off all the shit I had brought back. It wasn't until next morning on 662 that I realized I had forgotten my scar on the table of the military camp. Not willing to go back for it, I just accepted that I'd have to make do with my M16s, shotguns, and grenade launcher. Anyways, it was pretty gross out, and I wanted to wrap up base here, so I decided to take the trailer out and spend the day gathering over a hundred planks. 663 was spent working on finishing up the rooftop. Thought I had a couple extra boxes of nails, but couldn't find any, and ended up running out that evening. That'd go on the to-do list for tomorrow, where I spent all of 664 going house to house in search of boxes of nails. As far as I'm aware of, the only place they can spawn is in the side closets in the houses, so that's where I checked. By the end of the day, I accumulated a whopping three boxes of nails. 665 was spent working on finishing the roof. I actually ran out of planks and had to go cut down more trees to finish it up, which worked out my favor because I had another use for these planks. On day 666, I made 15 trap crates that I'd be able to use in a couple days. After that, I built two more gardening lanes and planted my cabbages. I'd use these as bait for the traps when they finished growing. I had some time to kill while I waited for the crops to grow, so I decided now would be a pretty good time to grind some foraging out. Took the ATV out for a spin, which seemed like a good idea until I love tapped a tree and my character reacted like he just took a shot from Ray Lewis. Nevertheless, I spent the entire day foraging, and I dare say, I actually enjoyed myself. Not sure if it's because I actually have some levels in foraging now, or if they finally fixed the fucking item spawns, but I was actually able to locate usable items, and eventually leveled up in the early evening. I figured 668 would be a great way to showcase how fantastic leveling your nimble skill can be. I'll just let the clips play out, and if you've seen any of the earlier episodes, try to compare it to something from 200 days ago where I had to keep turning and running away to reposition. Now that I'm level 4, I can stay constant and only have to start repositioning once I become exerted. This is what the end goal has been all along.
days 669 and 670 were spent working on my mechanic skill. There were two heavy duty trucks in the opposite parking lot that I completely scrapped apart, keeping the best pieces for myself. I spent 671 exploring the eastern side of March Ridge. Really didn't do much aside from go to a few houses and kick the shit out of a small horde that had gathered in the area. But yeah, nothing too crazy today. On 672, I decided to work on my medical skills some more. I haven't really done anything with this in a while, but I got quite a few comments telling me to try standing over glass. So doing my best emo impression, I took my socks and boots off and proceeded to cut myself for the next six hours. The idea behind this is genius. If you stand on the glass, you'll immediately get glass lodged in your foot. Doesn't that just sound delightful, by the way? But if you remove the glass, say with tweezers, for example, you'll get XP for it, and another shard will instantly be stuck in you. Something interesting with this that I found is that you can actually queue up removing the glass a seemingly infinite amount of times between each foot. So I did just that and was able to level up my first aid skill twice, which is not what I was expecting. On 673, I checked out the library in the community center and found First Aid Volume 4 really quickly compared to times that it took to find other books, like Metalworking 5, for example. But yeah, I just spent the day reading the next First Aid book and finished pretty late that evening, which was perfect timing for me. On day 674, I went out and grabbed another Mustang that I'd seen when I first arrived in March Ridge. Had a ton of gear to soup it up with and decided that it was finally time to commit to fixing another car. It actually ended up taking most of the day because I couldn't be bothered to unhitch the damn trailer to just tow the car back, and instead wasted a ton of time walking back and forth from the base to the car. I spent the morning of 675 fixing up the new Mustang and installing some tuning pieces onto it before realizing that I needed more metal bars and pipes to add protection. So that became my new goal, and I started by going house to house disassembling anything that I could find for more bars and pipes. The next two days were much the same. I fucked up and accidentally made protection for a Jeep instead of a Mustang, so I had to do more looting and disassembling to remake all those pieces. 678 was a good day. My cabbages were finally ready for harvest in the afternoon, so I grabbed 15 to use as bait for my traps and threw the rest in the freezer to use for cooking later. Placed all 15 traps in the northwestern section close to the fence and marked it on the map. 679 and 680 were basically the same days. I went out and checked my traps in the morning, pulling in about 8 rabbits each day. After resetting the traps and heading back to base, I spent the rest of the day just cooking. Made a shit ton of soups and stir fries and threw them in the freezer for later use. I spent day 681 really just exploring. I didn't have a goal or objective in mind for the day and I really just walked aimlessly through the streets looking for something to do. I found myself looting houses for a chance at finding something cool and just enjoying the game. As a side note, if you haven't noticed, I'm carrying a short blunt and an axe. The mindset with that is that I'm relatively close to leveling my axe, short blunt, and short blade skills, and just wanted to roam out whenever I got the chance. 682 was more exploring, albeit outside of March Ridge. I took the main highway all the way south to the end of the map where I found a motorcycle, but it was in too terrible a condition to bring back with me, so I just have to hope I can find another somewhere. If I'm being honest, a lot of the day was just spent driving around on the highways. I felt like respected slap champion Will Smith and I Am Legend just cruising through an apocalyptic city with a new Mustang. Early in the afternoon, I managed to find a small pocket of zombies and went to town on them with a pipe wrench before heading back to base and ending my day. Oh, and I had a moment that I thought was hilarious, and hopefully you all will too, but when I went to check traps that night, I was eating soup, and while some zombies wandered over, I don't know, just watching bend over slowly backpedal while just hosing down soup while zombies kept pace with them was just so funny to me. 683 was spent working on my short blunt skill. Found a couple patches of zombies roaming through the neighborhoods and decided it was time to break out the hammer to take care of them.
684 had some more combat, but the highlight of the day came when I leveled up cooking to level 9 when I was skinning some rabbits after checking the traps. On 685, I went back to grinding my first aid skill, and I gotta say, I'm a big advocate for the glass shards trick. I was able to level up twice in one day before having to wait for my health to regenerate again. Following the events of 685, I spent 686 and 687 reading the final first aid book. In the morning of 688, I leveled up my trapping skill and then went the rest of the day reading the next trapping book. At this point, I've kind of accepted that maxing all my combat skills will be damn near impossible, but leveling all my crafting and survival skills was definitely still a very real possibility. But don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna try to get as many skills as I can, but I'm just not sure there's a reasonable way to max some of these, like Nimble, for example, without making this completely unwatchable. 689 and 690 were spent wrapping up my first aid skill. If you break it down, I was able to pound out 6 levels in a combined 4 days. So if you're looking for the best way to level your first aid skill, grab some shattered glass and some tweezers and get to work. That's 5 skills we've completed at this point without fast learner or boosted XP gains, just full grind mode. On day 691, I harvested around 150 cabbages, replanted a full garden, and immediately went off to add bait to my traps. After that, I spent the rest of the day grinding cooking by making various stews and soups made using only cabbages. Mm, so good and tasty. The last few days were really spent trying to top off any skills that I was close to leveling. The original purpose of part 7 was to spend most of my time testing out different methods for grinding skills, but obviously some crazy events unfolded and I had to adapt and change course a little bit. That being said, we have just over 300 days left in the series, and while that sounds like a lot of time, when you look at all the skills I still have left to max out, it's going to be an uphill battle. Because of this, I wanted to take advantage of all the time available to me, and spent 692 and 693 working entirely on leveling up my sprinting skill. Also, we're going back to LV with this, but just assume I'm checking traps daily and I'll show if something worth noting happens. But I don't think showing me spending 45 seconds at my traps every morning will add to the video at this point. Next on my list was Short Blunt, so I grabbed a few hammers and headed to the southeast side of the city to group up some more zombies. After leveling up Short Blunt, I set to work on Short Blade using the same technique. Now knives took me a little bit longer than hammers, but that was expected. Still managed to round it off during the day though, so I was happy with that. On day 695, I got to work on my axes, but by the afternoon, I had barely made a dent, so I decided to just hang out around the base, repaired the trailer trunk so that I could hold more, and stockpiled some planks for my next endeavor. 696 and 697 were almost entirely spent loading up my trailer with any items that I found worth taking, mostly guns and ammo, oh, and the grenade launcher. That was an absolute necessity. Other than that, some propane tanks, metal working gear, and, and some non-perishables, most of the weapons that I could fit. Can you believe we made it almost an entire episode without any unnecessary hijinks? Let's change that. Luckily, I had a shit ton of food and my first aid skill was maxed, so all I had to do now was wait for my injuries to heal. Wine also helps. On the morning of 699, I was able to remove the bandages from my feet, but my leg, groin, and neck were still inhibiting me and I'd be an idiot if I tried to leave the base while I couldn't move at more than a snail's pace. Kind of a bummer, but I dug my own grave on this one. Another episode in the books. 
I was still dealing with the burns to my groin and thigh, but all my other wounds were healed, thankfully. This episode was so hectic at times that I think if I was ever going to die, it would have been here. March Ridge has been my interim home for the last 70 days or so, and, and was an incredible journey to get here and to build what we have. There'd be no cabbages to harvest today, no traps to check. I turned the generator off, hopped in the car, and made my way through March Ridge one last time. I wanted to leave my respects for a city that gave me a home, so I did the only logical thing that I could think of. Until next time, my friends. Thanks for stopping by. I arrived at Maldra mid-morning and was able to make it to my base location without destroying my car, so that's a win. I had a pretty ambitious base plan for this city, and I picked a place that had at least some sentimental value to me. This house is where I made my first base in Project Zomboid ever. It sounds stupid, but I wanted to do something that would kind of cement this area for me, and what better way to do it than in the series that caused my channel to explode. I spent a lot of the day just moving all my gear into the house and then fighting all the zombies in the area. started out 703 by moving my building materials outside to better organize myself. After building a flight of stairs, I fell through the roof and found myself in critical condition. What a lovely way to start the day. After building out the platform around the second floor, I spent the rest of the day just setting up the kitchen, organizing my gear into different piles, and just generally cleaning up the vicinity. The morning of 704, I piled up all the bodies in the area and decided to head out in a looting run through the neighborhood. I also laid out the plans for the new base. The idea revolves around using four houses, each set up with their own purposes, such as a workshop for crafting, an armory for all my weapons, and a massive kitchen and garden area. I have some ideas as to how I'm going to tie these all together, but I don't really want to play on my cards yet before even getting started. I spent the rest of the day just cutting down trees, which is just what everyone wants to see so early on. Following the events of 704, day 705 was spent entirely just sawing logs and putting planks into a giant pile. I know it looks like a lot, but we really do have a shit ton of work to accomplish to make this space work. Next on my to-do list was to acquire a ton of nails. Unfortunately for me, there was a thunderstorm today, and I didn't trust myself not to total my car. Decided to spend some time fortifying my base a little bit more, and took the sledge over to the kitchen to clear out most of the interior. On 707, I decided to head out to the warehouses near me to loot it for pretty much anything I could find. After just one building, I ended up with 10 boxes of nails, some more tools, metalworking gear, and a bunch of other shit. Still had one more warehouse to loot, and I took care of that on 708 with basically the same results. Days 709 through 711 were spent getting started on the highway system that would connect all four bases together. Built a platform out from the main base over to the kitchen, and then built out the second floor platform circling the house. On 711, I had an oh shit moment when I was building out around to the highway and just floated out into the void. After reloading, I fell to the ground and got hit with critical damage. The only way I could think to fix that would be to build some walls, but this has happened twice in this series now, and I think it's due to jumping on the highway while time is sped up. On 712, I wrapped up the highway to the kitchen, and also had another instance of becoming Jesus where my character decided to walk off the highway into the sky. After that wrapped up, I decided to get some action in. Having run out of planks on day 712, I spent the next day just cutting down all the trees around me. On 714, I set up a cabbage garden by the kitchen and then went out on a looting run that really just ended up turning into clearing out some zombies in the area. The only real goal I had with the looting run was to grab more garbage bags so that I could make some rain collectors for the garden.
Day 715 was spent out at the self-storage. Wanted to go through and loot the area and then disassemble all the metal for some resources that I could use on the base. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't find a key in any of the bodies, so I had to resort to breaking down the doors of the metal pipe. Not the worst thing in the world since I needed an excuse to put some XP to my maintenance skill, but I wasn't able to break in until after 4 p.m. I think it's rained almost every day that I've been an MD so far. Anyway, I spent the morning of 716 building out a gate on the southern end of the neighborhood and then building out walls to connect it to the fencing that already existed. After that, I got to work building out the next path to what would become the armory. This continued for the next few days as I built out the middle section to connect all four houses together on the second level. This was set to make it so that even if any of the gates were breached, I wouldn't have to worry as I could just travel on the second floor. Around this time, it became obvious that the highway wasn't going to work, so I disassembled all of that and started building out these 3x3 platforms that I could use to just walk across. On 722, I fell off the platform again and hit highly critical damage. Not wanting to risk anything crazy, I spent the rest of the day hanging out around the base and cutting down more trees. Oh, I do have one tip to share with all of you who are moving copious amounts of lumber around. Got a couple of comments saying that you can tie together groups of logs to reduce their weight limit and move much more that way. In my case, I would use two sheet rope to combine four logs. They each count for 12 kilograms towards your weight capacity, so you could, in theory, carry about 24 logs in one load as long as you had the sheet rope to do it. Getting back into things on day 723, I fluctuated between building and sawing logs over the next few days until finally wrapping up the platforms on day 725. Now granted, there's still a ton of work to do to flesh this thing out, but the necessities at least are taken care of. Now that the platforms were built, I could focus on securing the ground floors. Step one to that was taking a sledgehammer to all four buildings to remove any windows and doorways. After that was taken care of, I'd rebuild the frames with wooden walls to fully seal in the interior. Wrap this up on day 727. Seven twenty-eight was a looting run day. I was entirely out of food and needed to change that. As with any looting run, it started out with the surrounding houses until inevitably turning into a melee throwdown with all the zombies that I'd pissed off. At 729, I started out the day by clearing out some more zombies to my southwest. Breaking my spear, I decided to head over to the police station and loot whatever I could find. I actually found a crossbow here, which I thought was pretty funny, just imagining some cop walking around just Daryl Dixoning some random people at traffic stops. 730 was spent harvesting some of my cabbages around the garden. This actually took the majority of the day because I forgot where I put my shovel to dig more furrows and spent like two hours just running back and forth between the main house and the armory. Because I'm a dumbass. On 731, I moved all of my crafting materials into the workshop house and then meal prepped some cabbage meals so that I wouldn't have to worry about food for a while. Next on my list was some freezers, but instead of that I ended up spending the entire day fighting my way through various buildings and looting them for more supplies. Found a couple freezers, but there were still too many zombies in Muldra. I also tried to double back to the gas station, but at that point was too exhausted to risk hanging around and just dip back to base. Wanted to head back out the next day, but it was raining, so I decided to just spend the day tearing apart the interiors of the rest of the houses so that I could start building everything out the way I wanted it to be. After clearing out the area, I did a quick scan and realized that there's no freezers here. So, back to the stores that I was at previously. I was able to grab one of the coolers and bring them back, and then I'd be able to get the second one, but I could only fit three of the four pieces into my car due to forgetting about an extra generator just sitting in another seat. On 735, I spent the entire day cooking. Mm. I had peaked at my skills earlier and realized that I was pretty close to capping out cooking. So I grabbed about 75 cabbages and proceeded to make a shit ton of food. Chuck it onto the floor like Napoleon Dynamite when he's feeding that llama or whatever the fuck it is. And finally hit cooking level 10 in the evening that day. 
736 was another day spent fighting zombies in the area. It was a lot of me just walking around, spamming Q, and then dealing with the consequences. So, here you go. Day 737 saw me creating 22 wooden crate traps and placing those in the forest behind my budding fortress, which I realized on day 238 that I did not put far enough away as none of the traps were activated. This actually took the entire morning since I had to re-add bait to the traps and didn't have enough to refill all of them, so I had to go all the way back to base, grab more cabbages, and then run back out to the new location and then add bait. Anyway, by the time that was wrapped up, it was already late afternoon, so I decided to spend the rest of the day just foraging. On 7.39, I started the day off by checking my traps, and then spent the rest of the day fighting more zombies. I'm trying to put more emphasis on using some axes right now, but I think I'm going to try shifting to another weapon type soon. Whatever I tend to have the most of is what I think I'll end up using for my time here. Over the next few days, I would basically just check traps in the morning, and then proceed to spend the rest of the day clearing out zombies nearby, slowly expanding my perimeter. I also switched primarily to spears for combat, just because they were the most readily available to me at the time. So, here's some highlights of these days. I feel like I have at least one of these in episode, but in this case we're at two. So, I had another oh fuck moment when I started click walking through a patch of trees and ended up falling into a small horde of zombies. Luckily I was able to survive and walk away unscathed. After building a workbench on day 743, I decided to spend the rest of the day foraging. Nothing too exciting here. At 7.44, I went out to grab some stuff for my houses, but realized there were way too many zombies in the highway still, so I decided to cut my losses for the day and return tomorrow to start clearing out the entire highway. Day 7.45 was basically just spent prepping for the craziness that was about to unfold. Spent most of the day making spears and adding knives to them and other various tools. At around 8 o'clock the next morning, I hopped in my car and drove out to the highway, where I proceeded to do a tactic that you've seen me do at least 10 times now. This went on for several days, so I'll show you some of that now, as well as some highlights of what happened. Now keep in mind, you're about to watch about 7 minutes of active combat, spanning through, I think, 6-7 days. So, buckle up, strap in, grab some popcorn, and let's get to it.
Now that I have some breathing room, I began building out the interior of my base. I spent 752 and 753 looting the warehouse to the northwest of MD, finding quite a few useful items like axes, hammers, and a shit ton of crafting materials. After that, I made runs back and forth picking up the metal shelves to use as storage. I know they don't have as much space as metal crates, but I really just like the way they look. Decided to spend 755 working on my crafting house. Cleaned up most of the floor and organized the three shelving units I had while listening to my favorite CD, Raps for Christ. My crew is big and it keeps getting bigger. That's cause Jesus Christ is my name. On 756 and 757, I turned my attention to the weapons room, building out a couple lockers to start sorting through all my junk. Spent a lot of 757 just disassembling more appliances to gather metal pipes to use for more lockers. On day 758, I kicked off the day by organizing my weapons lockers a little bit more before spending some time building and rearming more traps. I was basically out of room for rabbit meat at this point, so I was just hoarding meat and throwing it into random cabinets in nearby houses. I started the day off by killing some more zombies to the north before running out of spears again. Believe it or not, but it actually takes a considerable amount of time to craft new spears. Basically what I'm doing is making 15 to 20 spears at a time, and then attaching all my knives, screwdrivers, and all that shit onto the end to increase damage for them. Nothing crazy, but when you do that 15 times every few days, it starts to drag on. Sorry to disappoint, but the next few days were spent working on fishing. It's been like almost 300 days since I've done anything related to fishing, so it's time to get back into that. After 4 days, I finally leveled up fishing once to hit level 5. I can't wait to see how they fix this because I feel like if you can level up foraging once a day at the same level, it shouldn't take 4 days of fishing to level up once. Since every time I've tried to get a skill grind episode going, it blows up in my face. Did somebody say boom? I wanted to take advantage of the setup that I currently had. I spent day 764 disassembling all of my electronics and then crafting some noisemakers and makeshift radios and then disassembling those. One thing that I was doing was keeping my white light bulbs separate so that I could use them to grind out some mechanic skill later on. Probably save that for next episode, but I figured it was worth mentioning now. Nothing left planned for the day, I just spent the rest of my time foraging. At this point, I'm really confident that I can knock out both foraging and trapping in this episode, so that became my new goal. If I can pull it off, I think this would be the first episode that I was able to max more than two skills. On 765, I spent the day doing a mix of foraging and fighting zombies as I came across them. Struck gold that evening when I found a katana stuck in a zombie. In honor of finding another katana, I decided to head out to McCoy and put it to good use. For the diehard fans who have been waiting on it, I pulled what has become my signature move at this point and slammed my car into the fence when I was coming back that afternoon. 767 was right back to foraging. Like I said, I'm really trying to just pound out trapping and foraging right now. Basically, every morning I'd loot the trap crates and start my day, which consisted of this. To try to expedite the process, I decided to spend the entirety of 768 cutting down trees to make as many traps as possible. By the time I wrapped up for the day, I had just under 50 traps. Which sounds like a metric shit ton of traps, but don't worry, I make more later on. To compensate for the amount of bait I'd need, I'd made a massive garden in the morning and subsequently spent the rest of the day watering it. It wasn't until later that night when the indie stone bent me over by making it rain, after I just spent 10 hours in game watering cabbages. On 770, I woke up to the storm still raging on from yesterday, decided that I'd spend some time crafting, and got quickly distracted by the baseball bat modifications that I could make. The whole time I was looking at the crafting screen, I just kept thinking of Louisville. Call me over the top, or whatever you want, but I had my mind made up before I could really think on it. I spent the rest of the day just gearing up for what would be the return to my favorite place in PZ. Until coming to my senses the next morning. Gotcha, bitch! Without teasing too much, there is a time and place for a return, but I have some things I need to wrap up here first. After leveling up my trapping and foraging, I decided it was time to hit up the bookstore in my area. Following the events of 771, I spent the entire day reading the final foraging book, one step closer to crossing it off the list. 
I wanted to start out 773 with some action, and it did not disappoint. Started off by rounding a small group to take on, and while waiting for more to show up, decided to grab some roses in the motel. Here's the third close call of the episode where I got stuck while trying to climb through a window and ended up on my back. I firmly believe that if I didn't have level 10 tailoring to boost my clothing, I would have been dead here. With that wrapped up, I started making my way back to base before totaling my car on a tiny tree. Pushed it back to base and decided that it looked better as a lawn ornament than a resource for now, and I could deal with fixing it up another time. On day 774, I decided to spend the day foraging. Actually, the next few days would be spent foraging to round off that skill. The only really exciting thing to happen to me was that I found an ambulance buried in the middle of the woods. No idea how it got there, but clearly took a wrong turn somewhere. Over the next few days, I'd wake up, check traps, dump the rabbits, and then start foraging for like 10-12 hours a day. I had a few close calls while in the woods, but otherwise it was pretty smooth. On 776, I leveled up to foraging 9, and on 777, I finally maxed out foraging. Which is crazy to think that just a few months ago, you could search for 4-5 to five hours in-game without finding a single item. And now you can max out the final two levels in just two days. Now I could turn my focus to other things. I was still checking traps during the mornings, but after that I split my day into two things. First, I'd spend about 7-8 hours going around to various cars and stealing engine parts, and really anything else that looked like it'd hold value. In the afternoons and evenings, I'd turn my attention to fishing. I know this is probably a little tedious to watch at this point, but the good stuff's coming. Just hang in there. On day 779, I found a motorcycle in near perfect condition, and decided to add it to the arsenal. For like 15 seconds, until I found a pretty big bug with the motorcycles. Around 12.30, I found myself bleeding when I tried to hop onto the bike. I didn't have any actual injuries, so it didn't make much sense to me. Decided to keep my health panel up and tried climbing back onto the bike and watched myself almost die before I even finished the animation. Cancelled out of it and chose to just avoid bikes for the rest of the playthrough. It's kind of a bummer because I was really excited to try these out, but looks like it'll have to wait for another time. On 780, I basically spent the entire day working on fixing up the Mustang. Nothing really much to see that you haven't already. Alright folks, I told you it was coming. I told you there was a time and a place for it. On the afternoon of day 781, I loaded up the car and set off for what would be a return to the city that gave me some of my favorite experiences in Project Zomboid. Along the way, I decided to stop and take on some of the zombies in the road. Now I don't want it to get overly twisted here. I'm not planning on basing up in Louisville for the remainder of the series or anything like that. I just really wanted to start putting in some work onto my combat skills, and that's just the best place to do it. I'll be back to the base in MD for some more grinding, but right now, there's really only one place I want to be at. I reached the checkpoint late that evening and decided to rest up in the western side of the city on the outskirts until I tripped an alarm. After clearing out the zombies around my car the next morning, I decided to head over to the hospital, which was a POI that I didn't hit up during my time in Louisville, which is crazy to think that it's been around 400 days since my last time setting foot in here. I'll let a decent chunk of this play out because I actually love the location here and I wanted to showcase it a little bit.
Okay, I have an embarrassing funny story about this. So while playing, I was so focused on what was going on that I wasn't blinking, and my left contact lens actually fell out of my eye when I remembered to blink. So I panic paused the game and sprinted to the bathroom to get it back in my eye. That's why there's a pause here. Anyway, back to the action. At this point, we've been going pretty hard for a couple hours now, and I was starting to get exerted. I wasn't done yet by any means, but I needed a place to rest, and the safest spot for that was in my car. After hopping in, I just drove around the parking lot until my exertion went away before heading back in for round two. I didn't hear no bell. Seven eighty three was my second day at the hospital. After spending about eight hours here yesterday, I had managed to get through the main sector of the first floor, but still had multiple floors and a whole other building to explore. The hospital is such a cool location to me, and I don't really know why. Maybe because I'm discovering it for the first time? I don't know. But it was loaded with zombies. I really didn't get to explore all of it, but the main building has at least three floors with different stairwells to explore, and, and a sky deck that walks you over to the second building, which I wasn't really able to check out due to the amount of zombies in the area.
by the end of the day, I had burnt through almost all of my 5.56 ammo that I'd brought along, and had broken my katana. Oh, and I lost my hat. The next day, I decided to hit up the police station, another POI that I missed my first time around. Everything was going great until my car decided to mount a light pole, and I was trying to look at the PZ map on my other monitor. So, guess we're going on foot. After making it to the police station and clearing out the area, I wasn't able to grab a key, so I spent a few hours smashing down the door, which went about as well as you'd expect. By early evening, I needed to find some shelter, but as soon as I opened up a window to a house across the street, I tripped another alarm. Normally, I would have stayed to fight, but I was already tired and it wasn't worth fighting if I wasn't full strength to do it. Headed back into the police station and hid in one of the side rooms where I spent the night. After spending the morning clearing out some zombies in the area, I noticed a truck nearby. I ended up marking it on the map, and then decided to head back to the Mustang to grab some spare parts and some more fuel. Only issue is I need a heavy duty battery, and the one in the truck is dead. Instead of worrying about that, I spent the rest of the day working on getting into the armory in the police station. On the morning of 786, I finally broke in and was able to grab a ton of ammo and two new guns, an AR-15 and an M4A1, as well as a ton of attachments to add to each. I also grabbed over a thousand rounds of 223 ammo and spent a good four to five hours converting them to 556 rounds to use. After that, I went out in search of a car. Luckily, I didn't have to look too hard and found one right around the corner from the police station. So I spent the rest of the day grabbing all my shit from the truck and the Mustang before continuing on my journey. Only thing worth noting for the rest of the day was that I found a Jeep in the parking lot and marked it for later. Not sure if I really have much use for it at this point, but it's something I'd like to drive eventually. Today, it's time to get to the main reason of why I crafted like 20 spears, drove all the way out here, wrecked my car, raided the hospital. Speaking of raid, did you know that this video is sponsored by raid? Anyway, all the heart and soul bullshit, yada yada yada, we're going to the baseball bat factory that I didn't know was a baseball bat factory like 400 days ago when I burnt half of it down. By the time I'd cleaned out the main room, I already had 48 bats to use. Now, I feel like there's an expectation when I come to LV that I do some crazy shit, so I decided to spend the next few days just burning through all the spears that I'd brought. Let's cue the montage. Spent most of day 790 driving back to my base in Baldra. After getting back later in the afternoon, I spent the rest of the day just moving all the shit from my car into piles in their representative houses. I realized around this time that the base design I had initially was pretty crappy. It was something that sounded super cool in my head, but it looks terrible, and it would have just been much easier to make one large base. Oh, also, I completely forgot to turn on the generator in my kitchen, so literally all of my food was rotted. And in addition to that, I didn't harvest any of my cabbages, so that massive garden I had, gone. 791 was spent replanting my cabbage garden, which actually took most of the day. After that wrapped up, I spent the remainder of my time emptying all of the food that had spoiled during my vacation to Louisville. At 792, I cleaned up the piles of loot that I'd left around the various houses. In the evening, I finally tried to make some chained baseball bats, but, but realized that I needed ripped sheets, which I didn't have. That'd be a goal for tomorrow then, I guess. 
So I set off the next morning to grab some ripped sheets, and by the early afternoon I was ready to get to work. I was really excited to get to try this new variant out, since I'd only ever used spike bats with nails, and it just didn't work? Or did it? The name of the bat is still the same, but the icon is different now, and if you hover over it, the bat says baseball bat with chain. And when you compare the chain bat with a normal baseball bat, there's a considerable damage buff, so we're sticking with it. 794 was kind of a throwaway day. Really wasn't sure what I wanted to do and ended up just working on mechanics for the entire day. On day 795, I went out and spent the entire day building more rabbit traps. I know this probably seems a little monotonous at this point, but trapping was a skill that I really just wanted to be done with. By 11pm that night, I had around 80 traps made, but no bait to put in them. Truth be told, I barely had enough tomatoes to bait all the traps, which surprisingly takes almost an entire day to do. I figured today would be as good as any to try out the chain bat, so I geared up and wandered out into the city. Gotta say, chain baseball bat is a little underwhelming. I guess hoping to become Negan was too high of an expectation to set, but it didn't feel all that different from the regular baseball bats, aside from the little chain sound effect that was added. On 798 I planted some potatoes and used the rest of my tomatoes rearming the traps. When all was said and done, I walked away with 54 rabbits. The only issue now is that I'm completely out of bait. 799 was spent just running through Maldra searching for groups of zombies to fight. I even started up the ambulance siren to try to pull some, but only ended up with a couple stragglers wandering over. On day 800, I drove down the highway a ways until I found a couple hordes to take on. After cleaning out the first group, I went exploring and found a small campsite, as well as the farmhouse that I somehow didn't end up at this episode. After that, I drove back out to the highway, where I found another horde roaming around and took them out as well. Kicking things off on 801, I rounded up some important gear that I'd be needing over the next 50 days or so. Yep, you heard that right. You see, this episode is going to be entirely unique compared to the rest of the series. If you watch the ending of Part 8, you'll know that I found a small campsite on Day 800. Now I don't know if you know this, but living in large cities is incredibly stressful, and something that I feel like I just need a break from. Clearly I was in over my head trying to combine four houses into a super base, and so I think I'd like to try something new for once. With that being said, I gathered some items such as ripped sheets, nails, a hammer, a saw, a packet of seeds, a water bottle, and a can of potatoes before hopping into my car and driving down the highway. I wanted to get to a spot that was generally out of the way and secluded, but that still had some semblance of water. I chose to spend the night in my car and then head out the following morning. On the morning of 802, I hopped out of my car and ran into the void. Over the next 49 days, I'm not only going to live in the forest, I'm going to build a sustainable base using nothing but the materials that nature provides for me. I figured this would be a new challenge that I haven't attempted yet, and a nice change of pace from what I was used to. Now I don't have outdoorsmen, so rain is going to be my biggest enemy, and I'll need a shelter relatively quickly if I'm going to survive long. Oh, and as an added bonus to all of this, I'm going to try and not use my map or the Project Zomboid browser map to really challenge myself. I know the general direction of a pond, so that's where I'll start. To be honest, today was kind of a bust. I found the abandoned campsite, but my biggest issue is those question marks you see on the foraging tab. If you don't know, that's the nothing is here icon, meaning regardless of if I enable search mode, I'm not going to find anything, because the area currently doesn't support the quote unquote new foraging system that was implemented like 8 months ago. I'll let that sink in. Don't get me wrong, I like the new foraging system as it currently sits, but come on, this has been in place since October of 2021 and over half the map doesn't have it coded in yet. Around 11pm I finally found water and foraging that worked in this area. The perfect setup for me. I decided to take a risk and sleep on the ground. Luckily it had stopped raining and no zombies followed me this deep. I spent the next morning foraging for supplies. 
Started off hot, finding strawberries and a chip stone, and by early afternoon, I had found five chip stones, four tree branches, some mushrooms, an onion, and some herbs. Not a bad start. I used the chip stones and sticks to make axes, and spent the rest of the day chopping down trees near me, making a fire pit, and crafting a notched wooden plank in place of a lighter. Now for some reason, I completely forgot that you can make a stone hammer, so apologies for bringing one. I wouldn't have brought one with me if I knew you could craft them, but that's on me for not looking into this more before jumping off the deep end. Regardless, here's what we're looking like after a day of progress. I woke up around 3am the next morning to more rain. Decided my only goal for today would be to build a small hut for me to stay in when weather got rough. To appease all the people that I know have already flocked to the comments, I dropped my regular hammer and will only be using stone tools to keep it true to the survival experience. So I do have an issue. It turns out I'm not as deep in as I thought I was. I'm actually just right off a road and there's a bridge pretty close to me. It doesn't seem far enough into me, so I packed up my gear and moved further downstream. Of course, this happens after I finish building my little hut, but fuck it, I'm committed at this point. Luckily, I was able to find a patch a few hours away where foraging worked and decided to settle down there. It's time to get to work. I should mention now, you're going to see me get queasy a lot. That's because I'm relying on tainted river water as my source of hydration. If you're panicking about that, you shouldn't be, because in PZ, pond water won't kill you the way that rainwater will. You'll get queasy, but as long as you monitor it, you'll ward it off before you can actually do any real damage to yourself. 8.05 was spent wrapping up my small shelter. I decided to celebrate by drinking the rest of my clean water and tried to light a campfire, but didn't have any success. I woke up around 2am the next morning and successfully lit my first campfire. Once it was burning, I cooked some eggs that I had found while foraging and just enjoyed the moment. By mid-morning, I was exhausted again. I needed some type of solution for my own sanity and decided that I'd try to find a cabin in the woods. Now, I figured we're by the river outside of West Point, considering I was headed north and there was a bridge, then this is the only big body of water that you cross on this side of the map. If I'm correct, I should be able to just follow the water as it wraps around to the other side, and there should be a cabin right off the bank of it. I was able to find the cabin about seven hours later and found it infested with zombies. Kind of reminded me of one of those doomsday cults that all drink the Kool-Aid and just decided to vibe out in a cabin until the cops showed up and joined them. After clearing them out, I took a moment to check out the cabin. It had a bunch of fishing gear in it, some magazines, but I really wasn't interested in that. I took the bed and the cool deer mount and headed back to my camp. I got back around 9 o'clock and after putting together my new Ikea bed, collapsed onto it and knocked out until late next morning. Most of 807 was spent foraging for chip stones, which was my main priority at this point. I had a little campsite, but if I wanted to thrive here, I'd need some walls, and to get walls you need axes. And to make axes, you need chip stones, you see where I'm going here. Oh, I also learned that I suck with notched planks to make fires and that lighters are 10 out of 10 always the play because this fucking sucks. 808 was another day mostly spent foraging. This time, however, I found like six chip stones and some extra food. Nothing too exciting happened today other than the fact that I used all those chip stones to make some axes. On day 809, I broke all my axes cutting down trees in the surrounding area. After that, I sawed all the logs and started placing framework to wall in my campsite. Spent the morning of 810 fishing before cooking all of the fillets in the afternoon. That should keep me good on food for a couple days, which is pretty nice. Now all I need to do is find like 50 chip stones so I can wrap up the perimeter. 811 was spent foraging. Like I said, I really just need chip stones at this point, so that became the sole focus. I woke up the next morning to more rain and decided to take advantage of my situation to plant my crops. That was really all that happened today, I just spent time hiding in my little hut from the rain. Later in the evening, I just said fuck it and decided to put in some more time fishing to gather more food. After spending like 4 hours trying to light a goddamn fire, I finally got one going and was able to start cooking my fish again. With what time I had left, I once again turned to foraging. Actually, you know what, I'll save you some time here. I spent the next 2 days foraging as well. After all of that, I was able to come away with around 30 stone axes. Any guesses on how many trees I cut down with those? Don't worry, I'll tell you. 34. 34 trees for 30 axes, which is actually a lot more than I thought, but now you know, and that makes me happy inside. Not really, fuck you, but still, 30 stone axes at maintenance level 5 gets you about 34 trees, so now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Days 818 and 819 were spent literally just sawing planks, and if you're sitting there like, bullshit dude, it doesn't take two full days to saw like 90 logs, uh, yeah it fucking does, and I'll show you. Day 
After that, I spent days 820 through 822 fencing in the perimeter of my little base. During this time, I built out a small storage shed with four crates that I could throw my shit into. On 8.23, I started building out my living quarters, but ran out of planks, so you know what that means. Spent 8.24 chopping down a few more trees before finishing up my cabin. Well, it only had half a roof, but it was mine. On the morning of 8.25, my cabbages were ready for harvest. I actually used my brain for once on this and started planting crops a few days apart so that I wouldn't have a surplus of cabbages just sitting around to spoil, which should basically give me enough food to survive out here indefinitely. After that, it was back to foraging. I still needed to finish my roof and I needed more chip stones to pull that off. Along the way, I did manage to stumble into three zombies on a hiking trip together, so I took care of that. Can't have zombies out here just enjoying life like that, I've gotta keep them on their toes. On day 826, I wrapped up my little cabin, at least the exterior of it. I still had a few nails left to build out some sections of the interior that I'd spend some time on whenever I got bored of the general survival aspects. On 827, I added some furniture to my little camp, putting in a shelf, a table, and a chair by the river so that I could relax by the water, which I took full advantage of. So at this point, my campsite is basically built out. I had brought Fishing Volume 4 out here, but figured now would be a good time to knock that out. So I spent the next few days just spear fishing, which was pretty boring. So fishing is super boring, and you don't really get a ton of XP, at least from spear fishing. So this is kind of a lost cause. I ended up building a bookshelf to store my one book, and a composter to toss all of my cabbages into, and then planted another set of cabbages. It was really all that happened today that was worth noting. On day 832, I spent literally the entire day trying to light a fire, before finally getting lucky at around 9pm. The next few days went something like this. I'd wake up, fish a little bit whenever I ran low on food, and then would spend the majority of the day cutting the grass around my new property. Basically every middle-aged white dad's dream. Except instead of a John Deere, I was using my bare hands. Really, all I was missing was a pair of new balances and I'd be set. Spent a lot of 837 foraging for more chip stones so that I could get rid of all the trees and bushes inside my compound. It wasn't until the afternoon that I realized I could actually forage inside my walls and still find a ton of resources. On 838, I finished cleaning up the compound and started branching out to cut down the overhanging trees outside so that I didn't have to look at a bunch of extra junk around my vicinity. The next day, I used all the leftover lumber to stockpile the campfire with enough fuel to last me more than the rest of my time here. It wasn't until that evening that I realized that I didn't have any food. Whoops. I made the decision to go to bed hungry that night since I had a plot of cabbages that would be ready for harvest the next morning. After shoving my face full of cabbages, I noticed I was overweight for like the 10th time this series. Because of this, and the fact that there isn't really anything else to do here, I decided I'd start working my own fitness boot camp to burn off the extra weight before heading back into the real world. Much like anyone starting to work out for the first time, I completely overexerted myself, spending the entire next day in pure agony from the soreness. A big issue I was running into was that I could work out for the entire day, but I didn't have painkillers to keep myself from the joys of experiencing too much pain to sleep. This ended up forcing me to spend several sleepless nights out by the fire, wishing for the sweet release of death, or muscle relaxers. Day A43 was spent mostly foraging for whatever plan it is that reduces pain, rather unsuccessfully I might add. A44 was much the same. I did about two hours of burpees and then set off on my quest for the mysterious plant. I didn't find it, but I did find a comic book, so that's a fair trade, I think. Early in the afternoon, I got so bored of doing this that I decided to see how many times I could jump off my roof without dying. I decided to stop when I hit terminal damage and take a break. Luckily, through the power of campfires and cabbages, I was able to heal back to full health before heading off to bed that night.
All right. I think 846 is a good last day out here. This was a lot of fun to set up initially, but there's not really much else to do here aside from continuing to forge and do burpees. As a nice last day, I wanted to show off the progress, so here's all 8 hammers and 62 stone axes that I used during my stay here. On 847, I began my journey back to my car. This actually took almost the entire day since I ended up traveling so far away on foot. Got back to my car that evening, only to find it completely out of fuel. I must have forgotten to turn the car off before leaving, so I guess I'm heading back on foot. Ironically enough, I found myself at the farmhouse that I just talked about last episode. Believe it or not, but this was entirely coincidental. I was actually planning on just walking all the way back to my base, but couldn't pass an opportunity to spend a night at Shroot Farms. After waking up the next morning, I looted the house pretty quickly before continuing my journey back home for a scum style. Made a home late that afternoon and noticed immediately that all my crops were dead. Not really sure what I was expecting, considering I was just gone for almost two months, but I'd deal with that tomorrow. It just felt nice to be back in the city again. Day 849 was more of a maintenance day. Started off by removing all the dead plants and then replanting cabbages. Once that was taken care of, I went out to check on what was left of my traps. Surprisingly, a decent amount of them were still active, and I actually walked away with close to 40 rabbits. On 8.50, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. The only goals I have for the episode are to round off skills like mechanics, electrical, and trapping. Other than that, it was all kind of just up in the air. Started off the day going to a couple houses and disassembling TVs and radios before spending the remainder of the day working on mechanics. I basically did the exact same thing on day 8.51. 852 was a heavy combat day, and by heavy, I mean about as heavy as I could make it on short notice. There's just not that many zombies left in Muldra anymore. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton around the area and the surrounding forests and back roads, but just walking through the neighborhoods, many are empty, which is a good and a bad thing. On one hand, I think it's really cool to see the progress made here, just like in every city we've hit up, but on the other hand, there's just not much action to find anymore. Of course I say that and the very next day I end up finding a decent sized horde that takes me most of the day to work through. The joys of writing a script while playing. It truly doesn't get any better than that. I feel like melee has been a big focus for the last five episodes or so now, so let's change that. After grabbing one of my new guns that I found last episode, I threw on an EOTech sight and a laser and set off down the road.
55, I finally came to my senses. Let's face it, this space kinda sucks, and I'd very much like to move on from here now. Spent the day just locating another vehicle and gearing up to move on to another destination. On the morning of 856, I hopped in my truck and headed out for a new home at Tegrity Farms. Spent all of 857 re tegrifying the farmhouse, cutting down most of the trees and bushes around the property and stacking them in the corner of the garage. Not too much happened today, really just a lot of cleanup. On 858, I went to the neighboring house down the road and grabbed some decorations and food for my new farm. Once I was back, I decided to plant some crops by where the well was supposed to be. Only one problem there's no well here. So. There's supposed to be one according to the PZ map, but there's nothing here. The next day I decided to hit up some of the houses to the northwest. I hopped on the road that should connect and it's not there. The map is literally just wrong. Like it even shows the road on the main map, but it just ends beforehand. Eventually, I found myself on a familiar road. I know it's very hard to tell because of the fog, but bear with me here. Eight sixty was spent unpacking again before starting a massive garden in the fenced-in area that I used to run sprints in. Day eight sixty one was entirely spent gardening. I had a pretty full circle moment though when I went out to the well and saw some old tomato plants that had been dead for like two years. It's so crazy to think that it's been over eight hundred days since I first sought shelter here. On day 862, I went on to my historic quest for a radio that had the emergency broadcast frequency so that I could listen to that weatherman from a previous episode tell me when I can be lazy and skip watering my crops. This ended up turning into a fairly combat-oriented day, which was refreshing to say the least. I woke up on day 863 to hear that a thunderstorm was imminent, starting within the next two days. I decided to take advantage of the chance and cleared out the trees blocking the path for my truck. Eight sixty-three was more busy work. It's about clearing out a ton of trees and bushes in the area to try to open the space up a little bit better. I didn't want to head out in the rain and risk catching a cold that had handicapped me for the future, so I decided to just hang out around the base doing various tasks and cleanups until the storm had passed. Alright, I think we've gone more than enough time without any real action, so on the morning of 865, I hopped in my truck and drove out onto the main road where I came into contact with a horde.
After that, I slowly made my way into the town, where I spent most of the morning and early afternoon fighting everything I could until my bat broke and I was forced to retreat back to the farm. Over the next few days, I decided to take on an incredibly stupid and pointless task. Equipped with two wood axes, I slowly began clearing out the massive plot of land in my west. After two days of cutting down trees and getting absolutely nowhere, I decided to burn the whole fucking forest down. So the fire didn't work out as I was expecting. There's still a ton of trees here, but now I can't cut down the burnt trees. Time to find another plot of land to reform, I guess? Luckily, we're on a farm and there's a ton of spots that I can make work. I landed on a pretty decent sized field behind the barn to the south and spent the next few days prepping to turn it into the largest farm I've ever constructed. I don't know if anyone's noticed this yet, but I did catch on to a habit I have where when I don't know what I want to do that day, I just end up working on mechanics, and that's what I did today. In the evening, I went back to start watering crops again. Most of 874 revolved around me running back to the initial farm, grabbing some metal sheets, and running all the way back to repair the hood of my truck. Nothing too exciting happened. 875 was spent harvesting over 300 cabbages and almost an additional 1,000 cabbage seeds. Not a very exciting day, but then again, I doubt watching me garden at all is super exciting, so let's go do something fun. In the morning of 876, I hopped in the truck and drove out on a mission to violate the Geneva Convention. Eight seventy seven was basically just round two.
At this point, I have several thousand seeds, and it's starting to get cold, so we're running out of time to get this massive garden started. Spent the next two days just sowing seeds and building out the farm. 880 was kind of a throwaway day. I really just spent the day cleaning up around the farm and doing general maintenance. So at this point, the crops are planted, I've restored integrity to the area, and there's not really much else to do here. I so taking a look at the map and realized I haven't really hit any of the western areas, so I thought now would be a good time to take a road trip and see all the little buildings that no one ever really, really goes to. I threw some food and weapons in the truck and began making my way out west. My first stop was a farm with a double warehouse section near it. Nothing cool here, just two warehouses full of bags of rotten vegetables. Next stop was more warehouses, but these were special. Not because of what was in them so much as what was next to them. There's a tiny little military camp down the road from them and I wanted to take a shot and see what I could find but had some friends to take care of first. Made some decent progress through the area, but decided to rest up and wrap up at the spot tomorrow. After finishing up next morning, I decided to hit up the military surplus store to the southwest, which started off with a bang when I tripped the alarm as soon as I walked through the door. I tried to take on as much of the horde as I could before becoming exerted and retreating inside the surplus store where I rested in the bathroom for a few hours before heading back out to finish the job. took way longer than I thought it was going to and ended up taking the entire afternoon and even continuing into the evening. Finally caught a break at around 8 o'clock and decided to put a chair in the bathroom where I'd spend the night before looting the place the next morning. When it came to looting the surplus store in 883, I put my focus into attachments and shotgun shells. I know there's a ton of cool guns here and a bunch of different ammo types, but I have something planned that requires a lot of shotgun ammo. And this place is stocked full of it. I also found a box mag for 5.56 guns that didn't fit with my current AR. The issue that I'm running into is that I simply don't have enough space to bring all this stuff back. The simplest solution to this is to just start burning through all of the 5.56 ammo I brought with me. So let's get to work.
Unfortunately, by early afternoon, I'd only burned through about 100 rounds or 5 boxes of ammo. So I decided to just start dumping items that I could replace. Things like spears, hammers, screwdrivers, and eating something like 15 cabbages. At this point, it's been a couple days since we've been back to the farm, so I decided to head back and see how things were going. Made it back to the farmhouse at around 8.30 and just went to bed. The next morning, I checked on the crops to see how progress had been over the last four days. There wasn't really anything going on in the main section, but my first set of potatoes was ready for harvest, which gave me an extra 250 seeds to plant in the main farm. The tomatoes would be ready in the next day or two, so I decided to just wait around for those to be ready. All of 885 was spent deciding what I'd be taking with me to my next location. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the farm, but I have other plans for part 10 that I don't want to spoil yet that does not involve me becoming Randy Marsh 2.0. Alright folks, time for some more disappointing news. I fucked up the days again. I'm not really sure how. Like I showed you back in part 3, I keep a live journal of each day that has basically evolved into me writing each episode's script at the end of each day. Somehow, I lost track of about 8 days, at least according to the survived 4 days, as 2 years, 5 months, and 11 days would put me at around 893 days. Like I said, I have no idea where the hell these 8 days disappeared to, but this is where we're at, I guess? Moving on from all of that, I spent 894 harvesting tomatoes and replanting those seeds into the farm. At this point, we have a few days left, and I'm close to leveling up strength, so please enjoy my push-ups montage while I grind out the next strength level. On day 899, I did some more packing before spending the majority of the day just admiring the farm. I was a little bummed that I couldn't have time to hang out here and harvest all these crops, but I think the amount of plants here is still worth admiring. This gave me a ton of ideas for my next base on my multiplayer server. Anyway, this was my first base of the series, and there was an overwhelming sense of nostalgia being back here again. This is one of my favorite base locations in all of Project Zomboid, and one that I highly recommend to all new players since it's secluded and has a well which is super helpful when you're first getting started. After waking up, I ate some cereal while listening to the radio. When that was done, I stuffed the oven full of a bunch of things that probably belonged in a washing machine, cranked the temp to the max, and walked out to my truck where I grabbed two Molotovs and proceeded to give the farmhouse the full send-off that it deserved. Now, not sure how I did this to myself because I thought I was out of range, but apparently Ben Dover's got an absolute cannon for an arm and hit the building so hard that the building fired back, catching me in the neck, shin, hand, and arm. Luckily for me, I always carry sterilized bandages on me and happen to have suture needles and medical gear on me since I cleaned out the bathroom the previous day. I stitched myself up as I watched my first ever base go up in flames, which has got to be poetic in some way, but I really don't care enough to go Google poems for you. Anyway, I think it's time to move on from this place. We only have one episode left, and there's a lot of catching up to do. My first day back in Rosewood was quiet. I spent a lot of the day just familiarizing myself with the compound again. I forgot how much food I had left here, like 700 days or so ago, but was grateful that I left as much as I did. I had all my crates of guns and melee weapons and various ammos in the lounge, but was hurting on crafting and building materials. Guess I didn't think they'd be a necessity, considering I was never planning on coming back here. In the afternoon, I moved all of my junk from the truck into the base and organized it. After that, I fixed up my generator from 0%, which, no idea how the West Point generators burn down, but the Rosewood ones don't. Anyway, we have power now, so I cleaned out the freezers by taking all the 300 rod of potatoes and throwing them into the composters. I'm still dealing with some injuries from some event last episode that no one could have prevented, so I decided to take it easy until I was all healed up. 
902 was spent entirely cleaning up the base. There was dirt and grime all over the walls, and I felt like becoming Billy me for the day. All in all, I was basically just spent the next few days hanging out around the base and trying to heal up the best I could. I had burns on my neck and right hand and stitches in my forearm and chin. On day 903, I was able to remove the stitches and was able to finally remove the bandages on them on day 904. Now all I had left was to burn on my right hand, which I was hoping to clear by the end of the next day. Aside from that, I spent 904 out grabbing some upgrades for the compound, things like a washing machine and a dryer. Now I could focus on making some modifications to the area. 905 was spent cutting down trees for more planks. The plan was going to be to use that little hut I made in the locker room and build out from there and create a third floor to build out some more sections. After building out stairs on 906, I realized that the roof is invisible and I fell through it. So scratch that idea. Instead of building out a third floor, I decided the next best course of action would be to clear out these lockers and then turn the locker room into an armory, so I spent the rest of the day just disassembling the lockers. I wanted to spend 907 gathering supplies to build weapons lockers, but ended up just organizing my gear around the base more. 908 ended up being my big disassembling day. And by that, I mean I literally just went door to door disassembling all of the doors, kitchen and bathroom appliances, etc. Pretty quiet day overall, but I ended up with a lot of supplies. 909 was spent setting up the armory. I was able to make three lockers before running out of welding rods, so I'd have to add that to the list. 910 was my first real taste of combat in Rosewood since coming back here. Found myself over by the mechanic shop and gas station, beating the living shit out of zombies with a military baton. Day 911. Don't. Don't do it. Don't. Oh, Jesus. Was entirely spent moving all of my weapons from the lounge into the new armory. I know, super exciting. But look how clean it looks in here. And it's totally like 5% cleaner than yesterday. 912 saw me heading back out to the gas station to stock up on fuel. Naturally, this ended the only way that anything seems to end nowadays. I woke up on 9.13 to see it snowing pretty heavily outside, so I decided that I'd be a homebody today and spend the morning setting up the laundry room. At this point, I need to face reality. I'm slowly running out of food, and we're about to hit the most difficult survival aspect of the game, being winter. I don't have an antique oven to keep the interior warm, and most of the houses and buildings have been looted here, meaning I can't just keep farming cans of tomatoes and corn to sustain myself. The solution I came up with was to use the garage as a makeshift farm. I had thousands of seeds saved for my first 200 days here, and a sack to carry the dirt inside. I ended up going completely overboard on this, and spent the entire day planting and watering a ton of potatoes. Like I said, I got very carried away with this, and ended up working until about 5am the next morning, before crashing in my bed and sleeping till 4pm. With not much time to do anything, I decided to just grind out some kernels and push on to the next day. I'm not gonna lie, I came back to the game on day 916 after taking a weekend away from gaming and completely forgot what I was doing, so I spent the majority of the day testing out my highway again and practicing my levitating. Alright, I have a lot of weapons. It's been a trend for the last six or seven hundred days or so, so this episode I'm going to try something different. 
My goal is going to be to burn through all of my melee weapons that are currently in the compound. But don't freak out, there's still gunplay. Trust me. But short-term goal, burn through the weapons. Which means it's combat time. I kicked this little project off by visiting an old POI from part 2. Walking into the prison again was a surreal experience. I found myself thinking back to how anxious I was to walk in a hallway and how panicked I used to get when I'd have to take on more than like four zombies at a time. And now it feels like nothing. There's a moment in this clip where I get tripped up and grabbed from behind and didn't even flinch over it. If this was the same me who was playing back in February, I would have had to physically remove myself from the game. But now it's just another day at the office. There is something to be said for the thrill of indoor combat though. The tight corridors, the jump scares, it forces you to be precise with your positioning and choosing when and where to take on larger groups. You can still find open spaces to kite zombies in, like the cafeteria and the laundry room, but again, it all comes down to positioning and knowing the layout of the buildings. I spent the next few days coming back here to what I dubbed my makeshift gladiator arena and continued to chase that adrenaline rush of never knowing what might be waiting on the other side of the door. At 9.20, I woke up and checked on my crops. After spending the morning watering them, I decided to head out for some exploration. On the southeastern end of Rosewood, I followed a dirt road to a farmhouse before taking on a couple batches of zombies hanging out around the farm. At 9.21 saw me at a place that I've never really spent a lot of time at for some reason. The gated community, which, as you can tell by the amount of zombies roaming around in the area, has remained relatively untouched for the last two years. Any house in this area is a great base location for new players, and it's actually a popular spot on my PZ server. 
So if you're looking for a safe location for you and your friends to base up in, I'd recommend this or the gated community in Riverside as the zombies can't break the fence so you can just box off the neighborhood and you're safe. I spent 922 continuing my push through the gated community when I found another toilet paper house. After that, I hit up the bar to grab any bourbon that was still unlooted. Leaving the bar, I took on a small group of zombies and ended up finding another katana lodged into one. I'll save that for later. Ending the eventful day, I found a taxi in pretty good condition, attaching a truck and hauling it back to base. All in all, an absolutely fantastic day. On day 923, I worked on the taxi. Basically just swapped out all the best parts I could for the police cruiser sitting next to me. Nothing too fancy. Started off 924 by walking down the road, picking off stragglers as I came across them. In the afternoon, I remembered that I had found a Corvette earlier, so I stole that and brought it back to the compound as well. The Corvettes are actually my favorite car in real life, so I kind of made my primary car decision before really thinking on it. But I think you all deserve to see me inevitably obliterate myself when I max out the speed and phase through a preschool. 925 was spent putting in work on the Corvette. Went out and found another sports car where I grabbed a new set of tires and other parts as well. Overall, another pretty quiet day. 926 was yet another quiet day, which consisted of building a table to decorate the armory and then watering potatoes again. On day 927, I decided to hit up a place that I haven't been to yet on this playthrough, which is crazy to me that we're like two and a half years into this series and still hitting POIs. Anyway, I reached the train station around mid-morning and immediately triggered an alarm by driving my car into a building. I didn't know these buildings had house alarms in them to begin with, so that threw me off. Being the dumbass that I am, I figured I could take on the 5 to 10 zombies that had come staggering over, which went about as well as you'd expect, resulting in me fleeing for my life and finding shelter a couple buildings away. Around noon, I was recovered enough for round 2 and ended up spending the rest of the day focusing on thinning out the area. Unfortunately, the alarm attracted way more zombies than I thought would show up, so I didn't take nearly as much progress as I was hoping to.
I ended up fleeing again to the office building and crashing in a second floor office. The next day was entirely spent clearing out more zombies in that area and exploring some of the buildings at the train station. At this point, without spoiling too much, I am looking for potential base locations for two other series that are currently in the works, and this was one of them. Specifically, the abandoned warehouse down on the eastern side of the rail yard. By the time I reached the abandoned warehouse, it was pretty late and super fucking dark. I didn't have a flashlight, so I sat in the doorway and whispered to make sure it was truly abandoned before spending the night in one of the bathrooms. The following morning, I got a good look at the warehouse. Empty. The second warehouse was much better. I knew there wasn't going to be much here, but really I'm just trying to gauge how many zombies could be in the area and what types of loot spawn here. After confirming that hammers, axes, and other pipes could spawn, I was content and made my way back to the rail yard for round 3, which consisted of me fighting through larger groups of zombies to get back to my car, only to find the building completely overrun. This resulted in me retreating, regrouping, and fighting in cycles based on how exerted I was. As afternoon turned into evening, it became apparent that I wasn't going home tonight. Headed out to the large office in the northwestern side of the rail yard and fell asleep in a supply closet. After waking up from a nightmare on day 9.30, I disassembled a walkie-talkie and the watches I collected and crafted a noisemaker. I'm planning on using this to move the remaining zombies if I'm unable to fight my way through them. By this point, I've been at the rail yard for four days now and need to get back to the compound to check on my potatoes. Also, pause in the script for a second reading this back while I'm recording the voiceover, and for some reason it was hilarious to me looking back and being like, yeah this place is cool and full of zombies and new experiences, but I really need to get back to my ghetto ass garden in the garage to check out my crops. Okay, back, back to the script now. Luckily for me, I decided to go back to sleep and woke up late in the afternoon, which gave me more time for the zombies to roam out of the warehouse. I was able to reach my car that evening and begin driving back to base. I know at least a few of you are wondering, when will there be a car crash? Believe it or not, this wasn't intentional. I was trying to dodge zombies to keep the engine in working condition and ended up spinning out when I hit the e-brake. Whoops. I arrived back at the compound around 6pm that night. So if I couldn't telegraph it anymore, I spent 931 watering my potatoes. If you know me, you know I love theatrical dramatic events. Without spoiling too much before the end of the video, I have some pretty massive plans. Plans that I wanted to be sure I was prepared for. Because of this, I decided to spend some time grinding out my agility and passive skills. Things like strength, which I was so close to leveling. 
sprinting, and light-footed if I could. Spent the next few days pounding out hundreds of curls before finally leveling up my strength on day 934. After leveling that up, I turned my focus to sprinting and spent the next few days working on leveling it before realizing that I was only gaining like 100 XP a day, so it took another 20 days or so to level up, and that's just not worth it on the last episode. On day 939, I decided to test out the mall. I found two by this point and hadn't gotten a chance to try them out yet. They look OP as fuck and they one-shot zombies unless you're exerted, which happens to be the only real downside of it. I ended up tiring myself out every 10 swings or so, but I mean, it's a heavy weapon, so it's kind of what you'd expect. You know, naturally you're not going to be able to swing as fast as you would with something like a hammer. That being said, it is a one-shot kill and it looks dope as shit, so highly recommend if you ever come across one in a playthrough. 940 saw me heading back out to the area around the gas station to get back on my grind of burning through all my melee weapons. I have a ton of short blunt weapons at my disposal, so that became my go-to for a lot of the next few days. Nine forty one was much the same. The only difference between today and yesterday is that I remembered from a premiere that I owed someone a spoon kill. So two bit, here you go. Day 942 was Christmas. I decided to spend the day making a shit ton of food and getting absolutely blasted on bourbon before passing out. 943 was back to the action, or so I was hoping it'd be. Turns out when you spend 200 days in a city and then come back 700 days later and spend a ton of time clearing out more zombies, there aren't many left to fight. After walking through the town in Silent Hill, I sat at the highway intersection and spammed Q until a couple zombies came over, but that was really all that was left in Rosewood. On 944, I noticed I was underweight because, like most Americans, I can't manage my body weight correctly. So I spent the next day just slamming potatoes and orange soda, like Francine in that one American Dad episode. Day 945 was back on the road. I hopped in the taxi and drove it out east down the highway to start grouping up pockets of zombies. The goal here is to get on another level of maintenance and short blunt since I'm so close for both of them. Unfortunately for that plan, there ended up being way more zombies around than I had expected there to be. Thank you. 
I use the tried and true method of hopping in my car and retreat, tactically changing positions until eventually zombies began to pile up next to it. This is why I brought the G33. Dropped a couple mags worth of bullets to clear out the horde and was able to drive back like nothing happened. On 946, I headed out to the south of Rosewood onto that highway to look for more zombies, but there were nowhere near as many zombies as the northern highway, so this ended up being kind of a waste of a day. The following day, I headed back out to the northern end of Rosewood and was able to level up my short blunt skill. I was hoping to round out my maintenance skill as well, but ended up breaking both tools and heading back to base. The next morning, I woke up early from a nightmare, like a fucking toddler, and ended up leveling my electronic skill up when I disassembled all the watches and walkie-talkies that I collected. Around mid-morning, I grabbed a couple knives and headed back out for another round of zombie clearing. Later that evening, I decided to celebrate New Year's by slamming beers in my kitchen like a real American. January 1st put me right back into combat. I'm so close to rounding out that next maintenance level, and I just want to get it squared away. I ended up doing a full loop through the Rosewood neighborhood and ended up out by the gated community. Taking a much needed break from combat, I planted another set of potatoes since I was running low. This ended up taking pretty much the entire day since I had to keep making trips to the rain collectors for more water. All of 951 was spent taking the best parts from the taxi and slapping it onto the police cruiser outside the compound. Planning on using that to help pull zombies to level up my maintenance skill, but that could wait for tomorrow. Building off of that, 952 went exactly as planned. Drove out to the highway and blared the horn, pulling groups of zombies in, wiping them, rinsing and repeating for the entire day. Progress for maintenance was very slow, and I ended the day still needing around 70 XP for it. 953 was much the same, more rounding up hordes and wiping them out for the minimal gain. 
I'll show you some highlights of today for the fuck of it, but yeah. I'm only showing one thing today. Oh, and one more thing. I sneezed while driving home and completely Paul Walkered the shit out of the police cruiser. First aid level 10 is truly a blessing. Literally one nice rest and the stitch is ready to be removed. You'll love to see it. The rest of the day was spent watering the potatoes again. Big, big issue I ran into is that my rain collectors weren't filling fast enough. So I was forced to use my highway system to fill up my buckets and watering cans and then walk all the way back. It's never too early to start packing, right? I don't want to show too much and spoil the surprise, but I spent most of the day deciding which items to pack into the Corvette for the grand finale. You're just gonna have to take my word on this one. On day 957, I walked through the east side of Rosewood and shot every zombie I saw, basically just clearing out any stragglers in the area. I ended up going through the woods and onto the highway before coming full circle and, and getting back to the compound that night. On 9.58, I grabbed some gear, hopped in the Corvette, and sped off to a couple spots I wanted to hit up while I had the time trying to be careful with this car for once in my life. I did have a couple stops along the way to my POIs, shredding through zombies as they piled up. I made it to one of my stops late that evening and took a brief tour to remember everything I'd been through here. Checked out the closet and equipped the armor that I left here before going to bed. This is probably the safest base that I've ever made, if no other reason than having a bed on the second floor that's basically untouchable. I know the base in Maldra is pretty safe as well, but it's overly convoluted and over the top for the sake of being wacky rather than being practical. The rest of the day was spent clearing out the area. I had a ton of 5.56 ammo and a drum mag here, so we threw that on the G33 and- I started blasting. Bah, bah. On the morning of 9.60, I grabbed some extra gear for the road and gave one final goodbye to the Riverside base. Next stop was the gas station in Ekron. You know the drill. I arrived in Muldra later that evening. Space was one of those that sounded really cool on paper, but when I started building it out, it just didn't live up to the hype. I always imagined having fully built out interiors specific to each category with a highway system connecting all four buildings. What ended up happening was a second story 3x3 platform that made this base really safe but was super ugly to look at and work through. I built this out better, but a fair attempt nonetheless. I decided to head back to base to fix up the vet since, you know, I'm the driver. Do I really need to go into detail or are we all on the same page here? After waking up the next morning, I treated 962 like a recovery day and spent most of the time heading back out to the pod to fill up watering cans before watering the potatoes. 963 and 964 were spent fixing up the Corvette. 
I spent the first day repairing the hood and finding another sports car that I could take a windshield from before spending the next day just gathering engine parts. On day 965, I noticed that I was getting close to maxing out my aiming skill, and decided that that'd be my next mini project. Unfortunately for me, there's not many zombies left outside of Louisville. While driving around looking for a horde, I ended up crashing my car into a wreck, totaling the police cruiser. So I started making my way back on foot. That evening, I found myself next to the set of warehouses that I farmed while at March Ridge, and after clearing out the area, moved a chair into a storage closet and slept there for the night. I spent the next day walking back down the highway, clearing out any zombie that walked within shooting distance. I actually ended up burning through all of my 357 ammo that I'd brought with me, and decided to just run the rest of the way back. 967 was more grinding. I hit up the drive-in theater and found some obscure buildings that had zombies hanging around, but other than that, I ended the day needing around 75 XP to max my aiming out. 968 was much the same, except in the middle of a blizzard. There's not many zombies left in Rosewood, and that's really hurting my chances of wrapping up this skill. Day 969 was spent gardening again. Hopefully for the last time. Day 971 was spent harvesting my crops. After all that was wrapped up, I spent some time working on mechanics. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do at this point. If I'm being honest, my mind is just on the finale I'm planning, and the closer we get to it, the more I want to pound out these final days. That being said, today and 973 were both spent working on mechanics to hit level 8. Spent all of 974 just sprinting. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but I'm still committed to leveling this at some point. The next several days or so were spent leveling sprinting. It's not super exciting to show anything, but basically I ran all the way up and down the main street and then would do the entire neighborhood loop and then back to the prison. I could do a full loop and a half before getting exerted, in which case I'd rest and repeat. Day 987 was spent choosing which items I wanted to grab for the big finale. Now that my skills are at a point where they're as good as they're going to get, I wanted to change focus to make sure I was fully prepared. In 988, I did something that we've all wanted to do at some point or another, and burned down the fucking prison. This was actually a little more involved than just throwing Molotovs. Don't get me wrong, I still did that, but the prison is so big that two Molotovs just aren't enough. I decided to use zombies to help spread it by having them walk through it and then killing them next to various flammable items. This went on for pretty much the entire day, so I'll show you some of those highlights. On 989, I went out to assess the damage and found the prison entrance completely infested with zombies. Naturally, I thought it'd be cool to repeat yesterday's fiasco and baited them inside to further spread the fire throughout the prison.
This went on for most of the day and into the late afternoon before I figured I'd done enough damage and headed back to the compound. 990 was spent entirely focusing on adding weight onto Bend Over. Early on, I just spammed potatoes. Seriously, I ate like 50 in 4 hours. I feel like Joey Chestnut when he's just hosing hot dogs down his gullet every 4th of July, but anyway. It wasn't until around noon that I remembered I had a ton of bags of rice left, and started eating entire bags of rice in one sitting. Really just the ultimate carbo-loading session. Like, like any high school female, I became incredibly self-conscious about my weight gain, leading to me developing severe depression. Luckily, I'm able to heavily self-medicate using stolen prescription drugs. I was pretty distracted on day 991. While I was recording, I got the news from my Discord that Technoblade had passed away, which was just one of those things that kinda caught me off guard. I ended up watching the video of his dad and just processing everything. Sorry to break the immersion here, but I just wanted to be honest with what was going on with me just sitting still for like 30 minutes. I finished packing up all the shit I'd be taking with me. It wasn't an easy decision since I'd be traveling relatively light, but I managed to grab some key pieces like the katana, some molotovs, a few noisemakers, and a ton of water bottles. 993 was a day of celebration and reflection, if that makes sense. I spent a lot of time just looking at the compound and reflecting on all the memories that I'd made over the course of this series. All the car crashes, skill grinding, base building. This wasn't the prettiest base by any means, but the Rosewood Fire Station meant a lot to me. Hell, it has to at this point. I spent 300 days here. 994 was the biggest fluke of this entire series. Early that morning, I said my goodbyes to the place, put some food in the oven, cranked it to 500 degrees, sat in the chair, and waited. Literally all day. No fire. What a bust. Let's try this again. With the Rosewood compound having been given its proper send-off, I began the journey to my final destination. By early evening, it became apparent that this fog wasn't going away, and it was horrendous to drive through, so I decided to stop at a house for the night and hope tomorrow's weather would be better. I hit the road early again the next morning and spent most of the day traveling again. I know it's hard to believe, but I actually didn't crash my car today. I did hit a few zombies though, which is what I was most concerned about, being that this isn't some souped up Mustang designed to take hits. If I hit something at 100 miles an hour, I'm beyond fucked. For the sake of being overly dramatic, I'm really going to make you wait to see the final destination, although I'm sure that 99% of you have a pretty good idea by now. The next few days were spent traveling. There was a blizzard on the 18th, so I took it slow and ended up spending most of the day in a random house that I cleared out. And on day 999, I made it to my final destination. I wanted to do something special for this finale, something I've never really done before. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you would be so kind as to stick around, you're about to be redirected to a live stream of Day 1000 so that we can experience this achievement together. I'll see you in Louisville.